A Family of Foxes and Snakes by Dragon Six Prelude Naruto walked the streets of Kanahagakura no Sado in a dejected mood. His shoulders were slumped and his face had a frown on it. Why was he so down? He had just failed the genin exams again. It was because of that stupid bunch and again that made him fail. Why did that jutsu always make him fail? He watched as families congratulated their children and it made him sad. It also did not help that everyone was making comments, glad that he failed again. It was just the usual things that he went through. He never understood why everyone hated him. He admitted that his pranks were outrageous, but they were just because people could not ignore him. It was fun that he got such attention, despite that he was getting negative feedback. He didn't get it, but he always kept that happy disposition of his. He knew that one day, he would get their acknowledgement without having to resort to his pranks. He was going to be Hokage, after all. As he walked, feeling a bit better, he came across a small crowd of women. He was curious and decided to see what was going on. He watched as they glared at another woman. Naruto looked at the person that they were glaring at and was amazed at what she was doing. She currently had a kunoichi in a painful wrist lock while munching on some dango. He listened into the conversation. You bitch. The kunoichi growled, wincing in pain. I don't understand why you're so angry. I didn't tell your boyfriend to cheat on you. If it is anything, he was really bad at it. The woman said. The kunoichi growled some more but was forced to give up. She released her and sat back eating her dango. The kunoichi just glared at her before leaving. I can't believe that, bitch. One of the women said. How can the sandame allow her to be a ninja? She's the student of a traitor. Another woman said. She's just as dangerous as the demon brat. Another woman said. Shoo, she'll kill us if we talk about that. The woman left the area and Naruto was left to his thoughts. He wondered who this woman was. It looked like she was just as hated as he was. He decided to go and see the old man about it. Chapter 1 Naruto was making his way toward the Hokage Tower to see the old man. Last night, he could not forget about that woman he saw yesterday. She seems to be hated just like him, but she didn't let it bother her. He would smile through the pain, but that didn't really stop the glares and the words. That woman just took it all and even fought back at her tormentors. He had to know how she did it. He hoped that the old man would know who that woman was. He entered the tower without any problems as it was the only place besides Ikaraku's that didn't hate him. He spoke to the receptionist who smiled and allowed him into the office of the Hokage. As he entered, he watched the old man work for a while. The old man was the leader of Kanoha and the man that he would take the hat from soon. He was the Sandame Hokage, Sarutobi Hiruzen. The aged leader looked up and smiled at him. Naruto, it is a pleasure to see you again. I'm sorry that I was not able to see you yesterday. I am also sorry that you did not pass this time. Hiruzen said. Don't sweat, old man. I'll pass next year and then nothing will stop me in my quest for your hat. Naruto boasted. Hiruzen just smiled and was pleased that Naruto could look at things with such optimism. Anyway, I was wondering if you can help me find a kunoichi. Naruto, I can't make Sakura like you. That is beyond my power. Hiruzen said with a sigh. Not Sakura-chan, I'm looked for an older woman. I want to ask her a question. Naruto said. Hiruzen was interested in who this woman was. Can you describe this woman? He asked. Well, she has violet hair in a short ponytail and light brown eyes. She was wearing a pair of shin guards, a mesh suit, a miniskirt and a tan trench coat. There was something else. Naruto said while trying to remember what it was. He missed the surprised look on Hiruzen's face when he described the woman. He couldn't be talking about Anko, could he? Hiruzen thought. That's when Naruto snapped his fingers as he remembered. 
Oh yeah, she likes attention because she does not wear a bra. Naruto said. Definitely talking about Anko. This can be troublesome. I do know who you're talking about. Her name is Midarashi Anko and is a Tokubetsu Jonin, special high Jonin. May I ask why you wish to speak with her? Hiruzen asked. Naruto then explained what he saw and understood why he was searching for her. While Naruto was the number one pariah in Kanahagakur, Anko was number two. It was not her fault, however. It was because of his wayward student, Orochimaru. She used to be his pupil until he betrayed her and left her for dead. She was an outcast because of her association with him. It took her a while to get the respect that she deserved. Hiruzen rubbed his chin, wondering what he should do. In the end, he would help him and pray to whatever deity, she does kill him. I will tell you where you can find her. I do ask that you be careful. Hiruzen said. Don't worry about it, I'm lovably cute. Why would she hurt me? Naruto asked. Hiruzen just sighed and wondered how many deities would help him. Midarashi Anko was Kanoha's resident wild child and second in command at the torture and interrogation department. She loved her job, her lifestyle, and some dango. She was currently hanging out at her favorite place, Training Ground 44, a.k.a. the Shirt no Mori, Forest of Death. As she ate her dango, she felt someone enter her space. She looked down to see a blonde-haired nine-year-old. She instantly recognized him as the Jinchuriki of the Kyubi no Yoko. She was a little curious as to why he was here. She watched as the young blonde looked at her. Hey, are you Midarashi Anko? Naruto asked. Who wants to know? Anko asked. My name is Naruto. I was wondering if you can answer a question of mine. He said. Anko tapped her chin for a moment before facing him. Sorry kid, but I don't think so. Anko said. But it's one simple question. It won't take you that long to answer it. Naruto said. Maybe, maybe not, but I have better things to do than to answer the question of a snot-nosed little kid. Anko said with a grin. Hey, you don't even know me, lady. Who the hell do you think you are? He got his answer when something cut his cheek. Anko vanished and reappeared behind Naruto. The blonde was scared stiff as she licked his blood. He couldn't see her, but he could feel the grin on her face. Not so tough now, are you? Just run along, kid. Maybe you can look me up when you get a little older. Anko mocked and vanished. After she was gone, Naruto let out a sigh of relief. He couldn't believe how crazy that lady was. Still, she was the only one who could answer his question, and if there was one thing about Uzumaki Naruto, he was a very persistent person. This would be something that Anko would learn greatly. Anko yawned and stretched her muscles. She smacked her lips and sat in her bed for a while. Dressed in a large shirt that belonged to someone, she made her way toward her bathroom. Along the way, she discarded the shirt and grabbed a towel that was hanging off the bathroom door. She walked into the bathroom and toward her medicine cabinet. She opened the door to get her toothbrush and paste. She closed the door and was about to brush her teeth when she noticed something in the mirror. She narrowed her eyes to see a grinning blonde, waving at her. She was instantly awake and snapped her head around to see Naruto outside her bathroom window. What the hell? How do you know where I live? Anko asked him. I asked around and some guys told me where I can find you. They seem to know you well. Naruto said with a grin. Anko glared at him. If you haven't noticed, I am not dressed to receive visitors. Anko growled. Please lady, you walk around the village in nothing but mesh and you don't even wear a bra. Don't act like you're not trying to get attention. Naruto scoffed. The statement got him a one-way trip to the ground via Anko's fist. Anko was angrily eating her dango. Everyone at the place was giving her a wide berth, considering the angry vibe she was giving off. She couldn't believe the nerve of that kid, calling her easy. 
Unlike the rumors that were spread around, she was not easy. Yes, she did have partners, but they were guys who understood that this was a one-and-done deal. It wasn't her fault that some of these men were horny scum that were cheating on their women. Her choice of clothes was also something that helped her in her interrogations. They liked what they saw before she showed them the truth. It irked her that some random brat could insult her like that. She swore to Cammy that she would sink that kid if she saw him again. Her danger sense was tingling and she could feel him behind her. She whipped around to shout at him when she found no one there. She blinked a few times before sighing. Maybe I'm being paranoid. Anko thought as she turned back toward her dango. Boo! Naruto shouted, making Anko cry out and fall down from her seat. Naruto was laughing his ass off as Anko laid on the ground. Oh man, you should have seen your face. He was busy laughing that he didn't see Anko stand. Anko grabbed his head and slammed it onto the counter. Baka! Anko shouted and stormed off. Naruto just rubbed his face and watched the retreating woman. He started after her, determined to get his question answered. Anko was at her wit's end. She was now jumping at shadows and looking behind her. That kid was just relentless in his pursuit. He hounded her for a week and it didn't look like he was going to stop. She had lost him a couple of times only for him to find her later on. What was his deal? She could end it all with metal across his throat, but she didn't feel like becoming a missing knee and killing the Sandame's surrogate grandson. She just needed to find a way to end this. Yuhi Kurinai looked at her friend with concern. She was wondering why she was looking over her shoulder and why she was so jumpy. Are you okay, Anko? Kurinai asked. Yeah, just dandy, I'm just dealing with a rat problem. Anko said. Do you need a place to stay while you deal with it? She asked. No, it's okay Karinai. I will find a solution and everything will be back to normal. I just need to enjoy my, Anko paused when she noticed that her plate was empty. She stood up quickly. Who the hell took my dango? She roared. Everyone looked at her before hearing the sound of someone eating. They looked to see Naruto, eating a stick of dango. Not only was he doing that, he was drinking her red bean soup. Hey, this isn't bad. It isn't as good a ramen, but it isn't bad. Naruto said. Everyone was shocked at the balls of this kid. Some prayed that he would still have them intact as an evil killer intent fell over the area. Naruto looked at the woman and gulped. He realized that he may have gone a little too far. Anko glared at him with pure rage and malice. You're dead. I'm going to kill you. Anko roared. Naruto dropped everything and ran for his life. Anko was on him, a kunai in her hand. After a few seconds, Karinai ran after Anko, praying that she would make it in time to stop her friend from committing murder. Let me go! Naruto exclaimed. He was currently hanging upside down on the monument. Below him, a giant snake was coiled and waiting for him. He looked up to see a grinning Anko who was holding the rope. You're crazy lady. You're crazy. I've had enough of you brat. I don't care if I get killed for this, but you will no longer bother me and ruin my life. This is the end for you. Anko said with an evil laugh. Hey, if you would have just answered my question, you would have been able to continue on with your life. Naruto shouted. Are you telling me that you have tormented me for a week because of a stupid question? Anko roared. Naruto gulped and Anko released the rope. Naruto plummeted to his death as Anko laughed loudly. Anko was grinning with her eyes closed when she felt someone shake her. She awoke and looked around the room she was in. She recognized it as a hospital room. She saw her friend Karinai, the Sandim Hokage, and... You! Anko roared and prepared to lunge at Naruto. She was held back by Karinai and Naruto ducked behind the Hokage. Karinai was able to restrain her friend and Naruto poked his head from behind the Hokage. That will be enough of that Anko. 
I'm sorry that Naruto has caused you such trouble and he will apologize for it. Hiruzen said. Hey, why do I have to apologize? exclaimed Naruto. She flipped out and started to chase me with Kanai. You ate my lunch. Anko shouted. Well, if you would just answer my question, I wouldn't have done that. You're just being stubborn. Naruto stated with an angry frown. Anko took a few calming breaths before she did something that she would regret. She looked at the boy with a glare. Fine. What's your damn question? Anko asked. How do you deal with it? Naruto asked. Excuse me? How do you deal with all the whispers and glares you get from the villagers? Anko looked at him with surprise. I would usually smile through everything and proclaim that I'm going to take his hat but sometimes it gets to be too much. You seem to deal with it much better than I do. So, what's your secret? He asked. Wow, I wasn't expecting that. I don't know what to tell you kid. The way I am is just so that they don't mess with me. I don't take stuff from anyone and I let them know that I their words don't bother me. It helps that I have some really close friends to talk to. Anko explained. Oh, I think I would just make things worse if I started acting like that and I don't really have any friends. Naruto said with a somber tone. Kurinai and Hiruzen looked at him with sadness. He quickly put up his grin on and looked at Anko. Well, thanks for answering my question and I'm sorry if I messed with you too much. It was kind of fun. He said. With a mock salute, he was gone. Anko just watched the door with a somber face. She turned to Kurinai. How did I end up here anyway? Anko asked. You slipped while you were chasing him. He attempted to grab a hold of your coat but you were a little too heavy for him. Don't worry you only landed on your head. That part is hard as a rock. Kurinai joked. Anko grinned a little but looked back at the door. She was thinking about what the kid asked and it bothered her greatly. Anko didn't why she was doing this. She was finally free of the blonde rat. He wasn't popping up everywhere, she could eat in peace and she could finally relax. So why was she about to do this? It was because of surveillance that she did on Naruto. She watched as he trained and walked around the village. She was very tempted to kill a few villagers over what they did to him. She dealt with one of the grocers who overcharged him. She admitted that he had some potential to be a shinobi but that he was badly undertaught. She also saw that he was very lonely. It was something that she greatly remembered. After a week of watching him, she felt that she needed to do something. It was because of this that she was visiting the Hokage. She entered the office and faced the Hokage. Hiruzen looked up at her. He could see the nervousness in her and wondered what was wrong. Is there something I can help you with Anko? Hiruzen asked. Yeah, I was hoping that you could give me three months to deal with some personal business. Anko said. Three months is quite a time Anko. What is so important that you would need such time? He asked. Let's just say that I feel obligated to fix this personal issue. Please, I just need those three months. She begged. Hiruzen looked at Anko and could see that she needed it. Very well, you have your time off to settle this personal issue that you have. Hiruzen said. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. You would regret it sir. Anko said and left. Something told the old Kage that he would. Chapter 2 Anko slept with drool coming down his face. The covers were thrown off him and his sleep jersey was curled up and little. He mumbled the words ramen a couple of times. It was kind of cute to Anko who was standing in his room. After observing him for a while, she decided to get to the reason of her visit. She reared her foot bad and kicked over the bed. G-O-O-D-D-D-D-D-D-D morning, future student. Anko cheered. Naruto got from under his bed and looked at Anko like she was crazy. 
What, Naruto said a little sleepy. Anko thrust his alarm clock in his face. It's time to get to work kid. We have a lot of ground to cover before your return to the academy. Anko explained. What the hell are you talking about? It's five in the damn morning. Naruto shouted. He was now fully awake. I know. The early bird gets the worm. Now, take a shower and get dressed. If you're not outside in fifteen minutes, I'll come back inside and drag you out naked and wet. Anko said. She left his room and a very confused Naruto in her wake. Naruto stood in front of Anko with an annoyed look on his face. She just smiled at him. Well, let's get to the reason that I'm here. I was pretty impressed with you the last time we met. You avoided me for a while and that's not an easy feat so, as a reward, I will be helping you improve so that no one can catch you. You may begin to thank me. Anko said smugly. Why the hell would I, thank you? You're just using that as an excuse to hurt me. Naruto stated. I am hurt that you would think that. Yes, we did not have the best of meetings, but I honestly wish to help you. Just think about it. For the whole summer, you get one-on-one -on -one training for a very skilled ninja. You can rub it in your classmates' faces when you show them all up. Anko told him. Naruto actually concerned what she said and was nodding in agreement. He missed the smile on Anko's face. Payback time, you little rat. I'm going to make sure that this will be hell on earth for you and I will enjoy it. Oh yes, I will enjoy it. Anko let loose an evil chuckle. She quickly composed herself and faced him. Okay then, why don't you tell me your skill set? Well, I'm awesome in everything. I know two of the academy jutsu and my most powerful technique, Oiroke no jutsu, sexy technique. I am the man who is going to be Hokage, Databeo, believe it. Naruto cheered. So, you suck basically. Anko stated. Hey! Naruto exclaimed. Did you think I wouldn't check up on you? That cute chinin with the scar told me some things about you. What was it that he said? Oh yeah, you're loud, brash and unfocused. You can't do a clone to save your life and you fight like a drunken brawler. As for your powerful technique, that only works on perverts. Anko explained. Naruto knew who she was talking about and made a mental note to deal with Irika-sensei. Ah, don't pout about it. By the end of the summer, you'll be as good as new. Now, let the torture, I mean, training begin. Naruto watched as she pulled out several shuriken from her coat. Time to run and dodge. Anko exclaimed. Naruto screamed before bolting. Anko was right on his heels, throwing metal at him. Come on kid, three more pull-ups. Come on, feel the burn. Anko said. Damn it, you psycho. Why do you have a bonfire under me? Naruto asked loudly. It's good motivation. She then pulled out a bottle of lighter fluid. Three more pull-ups kid. She said before spraying some more fluid on the fire. Naruto hit the ground with a thud. He struggled to get to his feet and glared at the tree. It was mocking and laughing at him. Well, it wasn't the tree but the person sitting in it. She was happily munching on Dango while he was tired and dirty. Anko looked down from her perch and had to admit that he did a lot better than before. Not bad brat, you got like an inch higher. Let's see how much higher you can get before lunch. Anko commented. I hate you. He spat out. I love you too. Anko said with a grin. Anko kicked the door open to Naruto's apartment. She had the blonde over his shoulder. He was out like a light. It was because of all the training that they had been doing. After teaching him the Kinobori no Shugyo, tree climbing exercise, and lunch, she got into his taijutsu for the rest of the day. She was teaching stance, tactics, and various other things. It ended with a spar that she found very satisfying. 
She had to give it to him though. There were many in the village that could take such a beating and stand right back up. She entered his room and flipped his bed back on its legs. She dumped the kid on the bed and watched sleep for a while. She had a small smile on her face. While she did torture him a little, he didn't complain much. He just kept going forward and didn't give up. It was a great trait of his. She was positive that he would go far in his career. She closed the door and left the apartment. Naruto hit the ground again and took a deep breath. Naruto looked at the tree and had a cocky grin. He was getting there. He was halfway up the tree now and it wouldn't be long before he conquered this stupid exercise. It had been a week since he became Anko's victim. She was a brutal and crazy woman but she knew what she was doing. He felt stronger and quicker. He could throw straight and he could somewhat properly fight. She still mocked him about his jutsu but he didn't let it get to him. Speaking of his teacher, she was once again sitting on the branch of the tree. She was watching him make his progress with the exercise. So, how am I doing? Naruto asked. What, do you want a cookie every time you improve? If you want to impress me, then get higher. Anko said. Geez, can't you just throw me a bone here? Naruto grumbled. Anko just grinned at him. In truth, she was very impressed with his improvement. It had only been a week, but she was sure that his control had improved greatly. She wondered what he had in store for the rest of her time off. Hey kid, what do you think about a little test? Anko asked. Naruto looked up to her with a confused look on his face. Anko's grin did not help ease him. Hiruzen was busy dealing with some paperwork when someone interrupted him. He allowed them entry, and what he saw was just shocking. Two of his ANBU commanders had their mask redone. They were colored with very bright colors and funny faces. They did not say anything as they knew who the culprit was. Hiruzen never understood why Naruto would antagonize the ANBU as they were the elite of the elite. He ordered that Naruto is to be brought to him. As soon as they left, he pulled out his crystal ball. Using his Tomgain no Jutsu telescope technique, he searched for Naruto. He was able to find him with Anko. This confused him greatly and listened into the conversation. So, I did good right? Naruto asked. It wasn't bad, but I could have done better. Still, for your first infiltration, you did well. Anko said. Just remember what you promised lady. You will show me a jutsu for this. Naruto stated. Oh, stop being a little baby. I said that I would teach you a jutsu, right? I'll teach you at a later date. However, it is time that you learn another lesson. Anko said. Oh, what's that? He asked. Today's lesson is to never trust anyone. Anko said with a grin. Naruto was confused when Anko grabbed him by the scuff of his jacket. Hey guys, I found the little prankster. She shouted. Naruto looked betrayed and began shouting curses at her. Hiruzen stopped his technique and sat back with an amused look. So that's why she need the time off. This could prove to be a little problematic as they are both so alike. If he should pick up some of her bad habits, who knows what will happen. I guess I'll play the wait and see card and watch them from afar. Who knows, this might work out for the both of them. Were the Hokage's thoughts. He went back to his work while awaiting the arrival of Naruto. Naruto had to dodge another lunge from one of Anko's snakes. He growled in frustration as he could not get the stupid Jinjutsu that Anko was teaching him. She called it the Hibi Surudoi Shursen, snake penetrating stare. It was a technique that she told him that she learned from her master. It was a pretty stupid technique in his opinion as when would he ever run into a snake. After another failure, Naruto stood and glared at Anko. This technique is bogus. He exclaimed. I thought that you were going to tech me something good. Naruto said with a tone. 
It is a good technique, especially for assassinations. I told you that I would show you a technique so stop complaining. Anko said. Yeah, but you said that this technique was from the person who taught you. The guy must have been some kind of weakling if this is the best that he could come with. Naruto complained. Anko chuckled a little as her teacher would have probably killed him for his words. Still, he was disrespecting the technique that she learned from him and in a way he was insulting her. You know, my master was a jonin and part of a famous team. He was definitely not a weakling and I am insulting that you would say that because you're calling me weak as well. Anko said calmly. Well, how come I haven't heard of him? Maybe he wasn't as good as you say. I bet he was that great of a ninja. Naruto mocked. Anko gave him a hard glare. That will be enough of that kid. Anko warned. Besides, aren't you just a tokabetsu jonin? Like teacher, like student I guess. Naruto found himself lifted off the ground and slammed into a tree. He looked right at Anko and saw the anger in her eyes. He realized that he may have gone a bit too far. I am nothing like him. Don't you dare compare me to the likes of Orochi. Anko caught herself and realized that she lost her cool over that bastard. She dropped Naruto and vanished. Naruto wondered what the hell that was about. Anko just sat at a table in deep thought. She didn't know why she went off like that. She didn't respect that man anymore so what Naruto was saying shouldn't have hurt her so much. Maybe it was because of the last statement she heard him say. It was a comment that many have said about her. She was nothing like him and she busted her ass to show that she wasn't. She figured that she would apologize to him later. Suddenly a plate of dango was placed in front of her. She looked at it and then to the waitress. I didn't order this. Anko said. No, it was that little boy there. The waitress said and pointed. She looked to see Naruto looking at her. Anko just sighed and motioned him to come over. He did and sat across from her. They were silent for a while before Naruto took a deep breath. I'm sorry that I insulted you and your master. I didn't know that it was a sensitive topic. Naruto apologized. It wasn't the fact that you insulted my master Naruto. He was a bastard anyway. I lost my cool and reacted badly. If anyone should be sorry, it should be me. Anko said. If you don't mind, what did he do to you that would make you dislike him so much? Naruto asked. What made you come to that conclusion? Anko asked. You only came at me because I said you were like him or her. He said. You're getting too damn observant. Anko said. She sighed and looked at him. My master isn't seen in such a great light in the village. He abandoned the village and abandoned me. Let's just say I don't like it when people compare me to him. I don't want anything to do with him. She explained. Oh, there was a pause in the conversation until Naruto slapped his fist into his hand. Okay then, you got to teach me this technique and when I meet your former sensei, I'll show him that you're much better than him. Naruto declared. Anko looked at Naruto with surprise. She then smirked at the boy's declaration. Don't say things that you can't back up. Come on let's get back to your training. Anko said and grabbed her dango. Naruto followed her and attempted to get her to believe him. She just kept walking but was a little happier for some unknown reason. Chapter 3 the sounds of battle could be heard throughout the Chernomori, Forest of Death. It sounded like two people throwing fists and kicks at one another. The two people were Anko and Naruto. Anko was not wearing her trench coat as it got lost during their battle. Anko prepared herself as Naruto was flying at her. He used the Bunshin, clone, technique and created a mass number of them. Anko cursed and kept herself alert. Naruto could attack her from anywhere now. She didn't have to wait long as a streak of fire came at her from behind. She jumped out of the way, but it was just as Naruto wanted her to do. 
he caught her with a flying tackle in midair. He quickly twisted her around and used a shoulder throw to toss her into a tree. Anko hit the tree hard and gasped. Naruto smirked at his victory until he watched Anko turn into a log. He cursed as he was exposed, which Anko capitalized on. Naruto was suddenly wrapped up by four snakes and dragged toward the ground. He hit the ground with a thud. Anko pulled him toward her and when he was close enough, she held a kunai to his throat. That's my win. Anko said, but with a very tired voice. Fine, you win. Now get these snakes off me. Why do you keep using poisonous snakes when you use the Sanaijushu, hidden shadow snake hands? Naruto exclaimed. Oh, stop being a baby. They're not going to bite you. Anko said. You said that the last time when Ichan. Anko just smirked and released him. The two sat and rested for a while. She looked at Naruto and couldn't help but feel proud of the progress that Naruto had made within these three months. His chakra control was at a level that put him ahead of his classmates. His taijutsu had greatly improved as well. She taught him the basics of the hibi, snake, style, but told him not to use it around Kanoha. What was really good was his ninjutsu. He was able to do the three academy jutsu and a couple that she showed him. One was the Katan Ryuka no Jutsu, Fire Release Dragon Fire Technique, and he also knew the Dotan Dochu Ijo no Jutsu, Earth Release Underground Projection Fish Technique. The last thing was that he was able to detect a Jin Jutsu and dispel it. In addition, she improved his sneakiness, infiltration techniques and awareness. She could say that Naruto was going to pass this time in the academy. There was no doubt in her mind. Well Gaki, brat, this is the last day of your training with me. Anko said. What? But, I still have a lot to learn from you. Naruto exclaimed. Sorry, but my three-month leave is up. Besides, it isn't like I'm going to stop showing you stuff. It's just that our time will be limited because I'll be doing some kick-ass missions. She said. She chuckled when Naruto pouted. Don't pout, we'll still see each other. However, there is one more thing that we got to do before this all ends. Naruto looked at her and was wondering what she was planning. Irika stood at the entrance of the academy and greeted returning students. He was waiting for one student in particular mostly because he had not seen the boy during the summer. He did try searching for him, but it seems that he had vanished for the village. He went to the Hokage about it but the old leader assured him that Naruto was in good hands. Still, he was worried about the blonde and wondered what he was up to. Hey Irika sensei how was your summer? A voice called out. Irika turned to the person who was standing in front of him. He was a blonde-haired kid dressed in a pair of black pants that was tight at the shins, an orange and black jersey that covered a mesh shirt and an orange coat with short sleeves. Irika looked at the kid with narrowed eyes. Can I help you? Irika asked. Come one sensei, don't you recognize me? It's me, Naruto. Naruto greeted. Irika dropped the clipboard he was holding. He looked closely at the boy and saw the whisker marks. He could help but be surprised. And Naruto? Irika asked in shock. The blonde only smiled. Anko entered the Hokage's office and stood in front of the aged leader. He looked at her with a smile. I would assume that you have resolved your issues? Hiruzen asked. Yes sir. Everything has been dealt with and I can continue on without issue. I came to get a mission should there be one for me. Anko said. Yes, I do have a mission for you but before you get it, I need to ask you about Naruto. Hiruzen asked. Anko looked a little shocked at the request. What would you like to know sir? I don't know what I can tell you though. Anko said, playing dumb. Now Anko, I am the Hokage and Naruto is very important to me. Did you really believe that I wouldn't have noticed that you've been teaching him? Hiruzen asked with a raised eyebrow. Anko blushed in embarrassment. 
So, do you think that he will pass this time around? Without question, Naruto will become a genin. Anko said with confidence. I'm glad to hear that. Now, let's discuss your mission. Naruto was getting a lot of looks from everyone in the class. It was kind of annoying but not surprising. He knew that his change of clothes would attract attention as he was not wearing as much orange as he liked. He loved the orange jumpsuit but Anko had told him that he was to get rid of it. He was stubborn about it but he forgot who he was dealing with. Anko just raided his apartment and burnt all his clothes. That when she took him shopping for some new clothes. She allowed him to have clothing with orange, but it couldn't be too bright. He did like the clothes and the coat that she had specially made for him. It wasn't so bad after all. He looked to his left to see his crush, Haruno Sakura. Normally, he would do anything to sit next to her, but he was ordered by Anko not to sit next to her. He remembered the argument that he had with her about it. Flashback Anko was enjoying the bowl of ramen that she had swiped from Naruto. The blonde was currently tied to a tree, struggling to get free. You know, this isn't half bad. Still, it doesn't compare to dango and red bean soup. Anko said. Blasphemy. Ramen is the chosen food of the gods. Naruto exclaimed. Anko ignored him and drank the broth. She let out a satisfied sigh while Naruto cried at the loss of his ramen. Quit being so melodramatic, you'll just be eating several bowls once I let you go. Now, will you do as I asked? Anko asked. I don't get what you have against Sakura, but I'm not going to not sit by her just because you said so. Naruto said with an edge. Anko sighed at him. Well, I didn't want it to come to this, but you leave me no choice. Kuchio snow jutsu, summoning jutsu. Anko called out. When the smoke cleared, Naruto's face was white with fear. In front of him was Anko's pet summon, Kaijin. Kaijin was the bane of his existence as the serpent did everything Anko told him to do. He also had the annoying habit of conducting electricity like an eel. Anko just smirked at him. So, what do you say now? I hate you so much. Naruto grumbled. I love you too. Anko said with a grin. Present. Naruto just sighed and sat back. He was awaiting the boring lessons that he would have to go through for another year. It would a week since the academy year had started and Naruto was enjoying it some. It didn't take him long to cut class and make some people lives miserable. He loved that one prank he did on one of the teachers. What was so great about it was that they could never prove it. He was able to get out, do the prank and get back, before anyone was wiser. The Bunshin had so much potential when it came to pranking. He was currently lying on the grass as he was tired from his private training of doing chakra control. Anko had drilled into him the art of deception and he followed that advice to the letter. As popped up to his feet and was about to go at it again. He felt that he was being watched. He zeroed in on where he was getting the feeling and threw a kunai at the spot. He heard a small squeak and rushed over to the area. He saw someone and immediately tackled the person. He spun the intruder on their back and faced them. He was surprised to see the girl from his class. Hey, your name is Hinata, right? Naruto asked. Hinata could not answer him as she was currently out cold. Naruto was very confused as to why her face was as red as a tomato. A gentle groan and the fluttering of eyes signaled the awakening of one Hyuga Hinata. She sat up and realized that she was on a couch. She recognized the couch as it belonged to her former caretaker, Yuhi Kurinai. She was wondering how she got here when Kurinai came out of her kitchen. Following her was her crush, Naruto. She eep and was a little red in her cheeks. Karina just smiled at her while Naruto looked confused. Hey, is her fever coming back? Naruto asked. I don't believe so. How are you Hinata? Karina asked. I I am f fine. H how did I g get here? 
Hinata asked. You have to thank young Naruto here. He was carrying you toward the hospital when we ran into each other. Karina explained. Yeah, you were all red in the face, and I guess I startled you into your fainting spell when I threw that kunai. Sorry about that though, I was trained to be very aware. Naruto said. I it's all right. Hinata said. Wow, you sure do stutter a lot. Naruto said. Hinata hid her face a little. Now, that's a rude thing to say. Hinata is just very shy. Karina said. Really? But isn't she a Hyuga? Naruto asked. Hinata looked dejected after that. She was sure that he would not hang with her because of that. His next words surprised her though. I guess that's okay. Most of the Hyugas I've met look really constipated, especially the clan head. Kurina nearly choked on her tea as Naruto said that about Hinata's father. Hinata looked at Naruto in surprise. He doesn't see me like the rest of my clan. Hinata thought. So, you use that style of yours right? What is it called? Oh yeah, it's called the Jukin right? Naruto asked. Yes B but I'm not that G good A at it. Hinata said. Well, you won't get good unless you practice. Say, how about, as an apology, we train together after school? Naruto suggested. Are really? Hinata asked with surprise. Sure, you don't act like the typical Hyuga. You seem nice. Why don't we train together? Naruto said. Hinata couldn't be happier. Naruto didn't think of her like the rest of her clan, and he was willing to hang with her. It was a start that she could work on. Karina was happy for her. She knew how much Hinata admired the blonde Jinchuriki and would help her any way she can. I think that is a great idea. You can both grow from training from each other. Who knows, you two might become friends. Karina added. This made both of them smile. Hinata smiled because it would mean that she would be spending time with her crush. Naruto smiled because he might be gaining a friend. Things were changing in the life of Uzumaki Naruto and it looked like that it was getting better. Chapter 4 Naruto was lying a few feet away from Shikamaru and Choji. They had decided to cut class today and made their escape thanks to Naruto. You know Shikamaru, I can see why you like doing this. It is kind of relaxing. Naruto said. See, I know what I'm talking about. Shikamaru said. You're still a lazy ass though. Naruto added. This only got him a mendo kusiai, how troublesome, from the lazy Nara. Naruto just smirked and kept looking at the sky. How did he ever become friends with the laziest person ever was a surprise to him, Shikamaru and the whole academy. It began over a game of shogi, general's board game. Flashback. Naruto was eating lunch with Hinata. He enjoyed it much more when she would cook and share with him. It was amazingly good and he enjoyed it a lot. It had been a month since the two met and they had become very fast friends. They learned things about each other and helped each other. Hinata helped Naruto become more attentive and helped him eat a little healthier. Naruto helped Hinata become a little confident and showed her how to have some fun. Both enjoyed the friendship and were becoming best friends. They suddenly turned to a commotion. They watched as two guys were dragging someone else away from two other guys. Naruto instantly knew the two as Choji and Shikamaru. He wondered why the guy was so angry about. What do you think is going on Hinata-chan? Naruto asked. H he must be angry with S Shikamaru. H he must have won again in S Shogi. Hinata said. Shogi? He asked. I it's a game but you would find it quite boring. She answered. It can't be that boring. Can you teach me how to play? Naruto asked. W what are you planning and Naruto Kuen? Hinata asked. She was wary of the grin on his face. 
A week later, Naruto walked up to the two friends with Hinata in tow. The Hyuga heiress had tried hard to deter Naruto's idea but she knew how stubborn he can be. Naruto stood in front of Shikamaru. The lazy Nara gave him a bored but curious glance. Hey Shikamaru, how about a game of shogi? Naruto asked. Choji almost dropped his chips after he said that. Shikamaru was now aware of things. He sighed and pulled out his shogi board. Naruto grinned and sat down in front of him. Shikamaru didn't understand what he was so happy about. This would not take long. When everything was set up, Shikamaru made the first move. Naruto quickly made his move and waited. Shikamaru made another move and Naruto made another quick move. This continued for five minutes and a small crowd appeared. It would be another five minutes and the two were still playing. The crowd had gotten a little bigger and it included Irika. Everyone was amazed that the dead last had lasted this long against Shikamaru. The young Nara had a very annoyed look on his face and was glaring at the board. He couldn't understand how it got this way. This was supposed to be quick victory. Naruto didn't have any plan. He would just move a piece as quick as possible. He barely gave the move any thought. Still, he was gaining some sort of ground and it frustrated him to no end. Naruto was half the time of his life. When Hinata had first showed him how to play, he was bored. He decided to put his own spin on the game to suit him. It wasn't actually a strategy. He would just move his pieces quickly and without thought. It was how he did his pranks after all. He kind of enjoyed the frustrated look on Shikamaru's face. It only made his grin wider. After a while longer, Irika told them that the lunch period was over. He looked over the game and saw that the two were in a stalemate and there would be no clear winner. Naruto stood up and held his hand out. Shikamaru looked at the hand. That was a good game. We should do this again. Naruto said happily. Shikamaru looked at the hand before shaking it. He gave a small grin. Sure, we should do this again. Shikamaru said. It was from there that Naruto and Shikamaru became friends. Present. With Shikamaru's friendship, came Choji's friendship. It was an added bonus that he loved ramen as well. Naruto had also made two acquaintances. One was Inazuka Kiba. Their partnership started after Naruto took him with him to escape one of Irika's lectures. He sweetened the deal by pranking his elder sister, Hannah. Kiba still didn't know how he was able to do it and Hannah could never catch him. The other acquaintance was Aburame Shino. Naruto just told him that his bugs were cool and Shino acknowledged him. The two were not really friends, but they had his back should things go south for him. With the good, came the bad. His crush on Sakura was over. He had observed her, and he didn't like what he saw. She was totally devoted to Uchiha Sasuke and barely did any physical work. Then one day, she came up to his face and demanded that he stopped hanging with Hinata. When he heard the reason, he was disgusted with how shallow she really was. He responded in kind by painting her whole room in neon orange. Ino was another person who he could not stand. She always thought that she knew everything and liked to brag way too much. She was also a fangirl of Sasuke's. He would just ignore her which turned out to be the best way to deal with her. Uchiha Sasuke was a pain in the ass and the most arrogant bastard in the class. He thought that everyone was beneath him and mostly kept to himself. Despite the waves of girls that kissed his feet, he was still cold to everyone. Naruto thought that he had the ego the size of the monument. They never got along and never would. He would call him his rival, but Naruto began to see him as an annoying person who didn't like being overshadowed by those he deemed weaker than him. Naruto didn't really care if he hurt his feeling and made it his goal to overshadow the jerk sometimes. In all, he was have a much better year at the academy than he ever did. The teachers no longer tried to sabotage him, but he had a feeling that was Anko's doing. He improved in his schoolwork and in his training. 
he was staying out of trouble, or rather he wasn't getting caught as much. He had friends and acquaintances. He couldn't wait for graduation as he was sure that he was going to pass for sure. Anko looked at the Hokage with surprised eyes. That quickly changed into worry, which was caught by the Hokage and his advisors. Is something wrong, Anko? Hiruzen asked. I don't have an issue with the mission, but I was hoping for something that could be done within a day or two. The mission that you're sending me on will take at least a week. Anko said. You never complained before about time. Is there something more important than this? Asked Koharu. Anko bit back a remark to the elder woman. She was pretty sure that she knew about how close she was to Naruto. It wasn't that much of a secret anymore that the two were seen having lunch sometimes. Many, who have crossed the blonde, had to deal with her. It was something that both of the elders did not like. They especially knew that graduation was in one week. She always kept tabs on Naruto progress while he was in the academy. Iriko was very forthcoming in answering her questions, despite the fact that he seemed nervous around her. She was happy to know that he was no longer the dead last. In fact, she learned that there would probably be no dead last this year. She was happy and glad that Naruto had a strong chance of passing this year. She wanted to be there to congratulate him and probably scare a couple of people in the area. Hiruzen caught Anko's attention. I know that you will want to be there for Naruto's graduation, but this takes priority. He told her. Anko sighed and realized that he was right. Very well sirs, I accept this mission. Anko said with a sad tone. You have an hour to meet your team at the gates. Hiruzen told her. That perked her up. She bowed and quickly left the office to find Naruto. Anko found Naruto easily as he was at his favorite place, Ikaraku's ramen. She entered the stand and greeted the two chefs. Naruto was happy to see her and offered her some ramen. Sorry kiddo, I have a mission in the next twenty minutes. Anko said. Man, I can't wait to do some cool missions. There's no way that I'll fail this time. You'll be watching right? Naruto asked. Thanks what I came here for. Anko said with a sigh. The mission I'm going on will take me a week to complete. I won't be here for your graduation. What? But you have to be there. You're the reason that I'm so good. Naruto exclaimed. Naruto, what is it that I told you during our three months? It was something very important that I told you to remember. Anko said. Aiming below the belt isn't really cheating. No. Old enough to kill, old enough to drink. No. Naruto was furiously thinking about what she was talking about when it hit him. A ninja must put the village's safety before our personal issues and wants. Naruto said. Bingo. This mission is very important to the village and I must do it. I would like nothing more than to be there so we can rub it in the populace faces, but this must be done. Anko explained. Well that sucks. Naruto said with a pout. I know, but I have something for you. She pulled out a necklace. Naruto looked at it and saw that it looked just like her own pendant. Anko placed it over Naruto's head and it hung around his neck. I was going to give this to you when you graduated but why wait when I know that you'll pass with flying colors. You were taught by me. Anko boasted. She noticed that Naruto was quiet and looking at the pendant she gave him. Suddenly, Naruto was out of his stool and hugging her. She was so surprised by the action. Thank you one san Naruto said with happiness. The two who ran the stand smiled at the display. Hey, I told you not to call me that. Now get off me. People are staring. Anko exclaimed. When Naruto refused to let go, she struck him. After dusting herself off, she took off to reach the gate. As she made her way there, a smile appeared on her face. She enjoyed the hug and the joy in Naruto's face. A week had passed and Naruto woke up early. 
He was pretty nervous about today as it was the day of the Genin exam. Despite his nervousness, he was confident that he would pass easily. Anko had prepared him and he was not about to disappoint her. Thinking of the woman he dubbed his sister, he was a little sad that she wasn't going to be there in person to see him come out with his Hittite, forehead protector, but he knew that she was going to be with him in spirit. He took a quick bath, got dressed and had a quick breakfast. As he was leaving, he almost forgot something. He re-entered his apartment and placed Anko's gift around his neck. He looked at himself and was happy. He left his apartment and made his way to the academy. Along the way, he saw Hinata and Karinai. Karinai was dressed differently, but that would be because she was no longer a chunin. Oheo, Hinata-chan, Karinai-sensei. Naruto called out. The two women turned to see the blonde run up to them. Karinai smiled at the blonde who was a very positive influence on her young charge. She saw that she would still blush around the boy but she wouldn't stutter as much. He greeted his best friend and then faced Karinai. Hey, congratulations on becoming a jonin. Thank you Naruto, would you like to walk with us to the academy? She asked. Naruto nodded and the three were continuing on their way. Naruto was excited and was trying to get Hinata excited as well. Karinai just smiled at the two and hoped that Naruto passed. If anyone deserved it after the work they put in, it was Naruto. Chapter 5 Naruto was eager to get the test started. There was no way he would fail this time. He had done everything in order to pass. Irika entered the room and was talking about the test. The test was always in three parts, a written exam, a physical exam and the jutsu exam. Naruto felt that he could do well on each part, especially the written part since he was tutored by Hinata. Irika and Mizuki began to hand the papers out. The exam had just begun. Naruto stood in front of Irika and Mizuki. He was a little nervous, but he knew that he did well. The written exam was a little hard but he knew that he got a passable grade on the test. He excelled in the physical exam, beating out Sasuke in endurance, accuracy and stealth. Now, it was the jutsu portion of the test. Knowing the two in front of him, they would ask him to do the bunshin, clone, jutsu. It was his worst jutsu after all. Okay Naruto, this is the final part. All we need for you to do at least three perfect bunshin and you have passed. Irika said. Naruto cracked his knuckles and grinned. Boy, were they in for a surprise. Bunshin, no jutsu. Clone technique, Naruto called out. There was a cloud of smoke. When it disappeared, standing in front of the two was ten perfect bunshin. Irika was surprised and happy for Naruto. That was great Naruto, but you didn't have to go so far. Irika said. Sorry about that but because of my high and dense chakra, this is the amount I got it down to. I could make over a thousand with half my chakra. Naruto said. That surprised both instructors. Either way, you have passed the exam. Come and get your Hittite, forehead protector. Irika said. Naruto cheered and took his Hittite. He gave a hug to Irika and ran out the room cheering loudly. Neither one of them saw the narrowed eyes of Mizuki. Naruto walked out of the academy in triumph. He proudly wore his Hittite for all to see. Some looked at the blonde with annoyance, others with malice. Naruto could hear the whispers of some. They were negative and hateful. Still, it did not ruin his mood. He passed with help from his Wanisan, his best friends, and his favorite teacher. They believed in him and he did not let them down. He only wished that Anko was here to celebrate with him. He decided to get some Ikiraku's ramen to celebrate. As he left the yard, he held his Hitai up for his doubters. It may have been a mocking gesture to everyone, but he didn't care. His time with Anko showed him that all he needed were those few precious people to keep him going. He jogged out of the yard and dashed toward Ikaraku's. Stomach full and happy, Naruto made his way home. 
The owners, Tucci and his daughter, Ayam, celebrated his graduation with ten bowls of free ramen. Naruto enjoyed them with gusto and thanked the two for their support. He looked up at the sun and saw that it was beginning to set. He wondered what he could do now. Hey Naruto, a voice called out to him. Naruto looked to see Mizuki-sensei running up to him. Mizuki wasn't someone he trusted completely. He always felt that he was out to get him. He had no proof of that but his gut always told him that he was bad news. Naruto always trusted his gut. Mizuki stood in front of Naruto. It's a good thing I caught you. I have something to tell you. What's up? Naruto asked. Well, I just found out that you're going to be placed on a team with Sakura and Sasuke. Mizuki said. What? That can't be right. There's no dead last this year. Naruto exclaimed. I know, but this was the team that the Hokage assigned. However, I have a way that you can get on another team, probably with Hinata and Shikamaru. Mizuki said. Really? Naruto asked with excitement. What would I have to do? Mizuki gave him a friendly smile while on the inside his smile was much more sinister. Enko was walking toward the Hokage Tower. While the mission was annoying, she was able to finish ahead of time. She didn't really rest as she wanted to surprise Naruto by her arrival. While she could not be there to see him graduate, she would be there to celebrate his success. Heck, she might even let him have a cup or two of sake. As she walked, she saw a weapon shop. She began to think and decided to get Naruto a graduation gift. As she was about to enter the shop, she noticed that some shinobi were going nuts. She saw two that she knew and stopped them. Izumo, Kotetsu, what's going on? Are we under attack or something? Anko asked. No, but we do have an emergency. Look Anko, do you know where Naruto is? Kotetsu asked. Naruto, what does he have to do with this? Anko asked. Anko, Naruto has stolen the Fuin no show, Scroll of Seals. Izumo said. Anko looked at him like he was crazy. There's no way. Naruto may have a tendency to do something stupid, but he's not that stupid. Anko exclaimed. We agree with you, but he was seen with the scroll. It could be someone trying to frame him, but we can't be sure until we find him. Kotetsa said. Oh, I'll find him and I'll get to the bottom of this. Anko said and took off to find Naruto. Naruto was hidden behind a tree. He was trying to calm his breathing so that he would not be found by Mizuki or Irika. Naruto knew that he had messed up big time. He couldn't believe how stupid he was for stealing such an important scroll. Sure, he got a very powerful jutsu out of the scroll, but now he realized that this assignment was nothing more than a trick to place blame on him. He should have thought things through, but he so did not wish to be on Sasuke's and Sakura's team. That wasn't even the biggest thing that he learned tonight. When Irika and Mizuki arrived and were fighting each other, Mizuki decided to tell Naruto and secret about himself. That secret was that he was the container of the Kyubi no Yoko, nine-tailed demon fox. He told him that he was murderer and a cause of suffering for Konoha, including Irika. Naruto couldn't take it and ran. As he sat there, he was suddenly alert when he heard a body hit the ground. He looked out from his hiding spot to see a wounded Irika. Landing across from him was a wounded Mizuki. The traitorous shinobi glared at Irika. I can't believe that you've lasted this long against me. Mizuki growled. It goes to show you that strength isn't everything. I would give up if I was you. Irika said. Why should I? I'm going to kill you and then I'm going to kill the demon. Mizuki stated. I will never allow you to harm Naruto. Irika shouted. How can you protect that thing? The Kyubi killed your parents. Mizuki spat. Yes, the Kyubi killed my parents, Irika said. Naruto felt his heart shatter after he said that. However, Naruto is not the Kyubi. 
He is a proud member of Kanahaga Corps and he will grow to be one of the strongest shinobi there is. He is my precious student and I will protect him with my life. That statement made a few tears fall from Naruto's eyes. He was just so happy to hear that Iruka thought of him as one of his precious people. Mizuki looked at Iruka with disgust. You're pathetic. I'm just going to finish this now. Mizuki said. He charged at Iruka, spinning his shuriken like a buzz saw. Iruka readied himself when his leg gave out on him. Mizuki laughed when he saw this and was on him. That's when a blur appeared and launched Mizuki back a few feet, his shuriken sent flying across the forest. Iruka looked up and saw that the person who saved him was Naruto. Naruto, what are you doing? You need to get out of here. Iruka shouted. Mizuki groaned and rubbed his nose. He looked forward and glared hard at Naruto. You damn brat, I'll get you open. Mizuki said. The only one who is going to be gutting things open is me. You're going to pay for hurting my sensei and for trying to get me in trouble Mizuki team, bastard. Naruto stated. Just try it QB. You don't have anything that can hurt me. Mizuki shouted. Take this, Kage Bunshin no Jetsu. Shadow clone technique, Naruto shouted. There was a large blast of smoke that appeared. When it cleared, Iruka and Mizuki were in awe. Surrounding the area were over a hundred copies of Naruto. Each of them had a menacing grin on their face and cracking their knuckles. I can't believe what I'm seeing. He learned how to do solid clones in the span of two hours. What's even more amazing is that he doesn't look winded. Iruka thought with amazement. Mizuki was just too shocked to say anything. So, you've got nothing to say? All right then, I'll do all the talking with my fists. The clone said and descended of Mizuki. Mizuki could do nothing but scream into the night. After a few minutes, Mizuki laid on the ground in a heap with welts and bruises on his face. The clones were gone and Naruto was rubbed the back of his head. Iruka just looked at his one-time student with amazement. That's when three people appeared. Naruto froze in fright at the glare he was getting from one of the people. H. Hey Enko Onizen, W. When did you get back? You. Are the stupidest person I have ever, Enko stopped her rant long enough to see Iruka on the ground, bleeding. Oh my god, Iruka. She sped by Naruto, smacking him to the ground and was at Iruka's side in an instant. Everyone, including Iruka, was shocked as Enko held him and checked him over. Everyone just wondered what the heck was going on. Naruto and Enko stood before the Hokage. He had a stern look on his face as he stared at Naruto. The blonde avoided looking at the man he thought of as a grandfather. He was just so ashamed of his actions and decisions. Normally, I would have dismissed you from the ninja ranks Naruto. However, you were set up by an authority figure. If you can't trust your authority figures, then who do you trust? Still, you should have read the situation a little better than you did. You could have caused untold problems should the scroll have fell into enemy hands. Hiruzen said. I'm sorry Hokage-sama. It will not happen again. Naruto said humbly. We will see. Now, about the QB, Hiruzen said, getting Anko's and Naruto's attention. They looked to see that his expression had softened. I am sorry that you found out this way. I was meaning to tell you about your burden at a later time. Do you know why I was used for the ceiling? Naruto asked. Yes I do but for now, you will have to wait. You have to realize Naruto, that there are a lot of things that are tied into you being the container of the Kyubi no Yoko. Right now, you are still too young to learn about it. Hiruzen explained. Okay, I guess I will wait a bit longer. Naruto said with a pout. Hiruzen smiled at him. Now that we have cleared that up, let's decide it how you should be punished. I believe that Anko should decide your punishment since she is partly responsible for your increased stealth. He said with a smile. Naruto looked like he was about to die. 
He was about to protest when he was hoisted in the air by Anko. She held him in a headlock and had a wicked grin on her face. You don't have to worry about that sir. I plan on making sure that this never happens again. Anko said. She bid the Hokage a good night before disappearing with Naruto. Hiruzen just chuckled and hoped that Naruto survived his punishment. Mizuki was tied down to a chair. He growled and tried to free himself, but he couldn't. He cursed Irika and the Kyubi brat for his failure. If it took the rest of his life, he would make them both pay. The door suddenly opened and entered the room was Marino Abiki, head of the Kanoha Gaman slash Jean Monbutai, Kanoha's torture and interrogation force. Mizuki cursed and shook with fear as he looked upon this man. No one ever wanted to be caught and sent to him. Ibiki looked at Mizuki and gave him a smile. Don't worry Mizuki, I'm not the one who will be doing the interrogation. I'm not really into small fry like you. I'm just here to give you a chance to come clean about who you work for. Ibiki said and looked at Mizuki. The Chunin looked at him with defiance. Ibiki just smiled at him. Have it your way. He's all yours. Ibiki said before turning to leave. As he left, another person entered. Mizuki saw who it was and grinned. Well, if it isn't the demon's keeper? Are you sure that you should? Arg! Mizuki shouted as a kunai was stabbed into his kneecap. Anko grabbed him by the hair and gave his a hard look. Mizuki was deathly afraid of that look. It promised death and untold types of pain. I personally don't care if you tell me anything. You're going to die anyway after breaking an S-rank law. You messed with my family today and I intend to make your journey into the afterlife as painful as possible. Get ready traitor, the night is just getting started. She said and pulled out several sunbon. Mizuki's screams could be heard throughout the building and they would not stop for the entire night. Chapter 6 Naruto sighed as he entered the academy for the last time. It had been a long three days for the blonde. Since the Mizuki incident, Naruto was kept awake, thinking about what he learned. He would look down at his stomach at times and wonder how the Yandame put something so big in his gut. After a while, he went back to Anko's way of thinking. Who cared if he had the beast of destruction sealed within him? The old man didn't care, Anko didn't care and the two people at the ramen stand didn't care so why should he? With that thinking, Naruto was able to sleep without any problems. The next day was the day of his punishment by Enko. Like always, she broke into his apartment and dragged him out of bed. She expressed her disappointment to him and told him to think before he acted. After an hour-long lecture, Enko took him into an area within Training Ground 44, also called the Forest of Death. She told him that he objective today was to survive. For the whole day, Anko hunted and brutalized him. He managed to survive by escaping the forest and running for safety. This didn't deter Anko who began to play her favorite game of tag, with sharp objects. It was a day of pain for the blonde hero. The next day, Naruto took his picture for his file. Luckily for him, the cuts healed overnight. He took a normal picture, surprising the old Hokage. Naruto simply told him that he was too hurt to make it awesome. That's when an eight-year-old boy busted in the hall. He quickly tripped on his long scarf and fell on his face. The boy stood and then accused him of tripping him. Naruto was about to teach the boy a lesson when he was stopped by his instructor. The little brat boasted about his name, which irritated Naruto. He then proceeded to pin him to the wall with several kunai and told him off before leaving. Later in the day, Naruto caught the kid following him. He introduced himself as Kano Amaru and asked to teach his Oiro Kano Jutsu, sexy technique. Naruto agreed but for much different reasons. As the training continued, Naruto asked Kano Amaru why he attacked his grandfather. He told him why and Naruto felt for the kid. Still, he felt that he need to set him straight and told Kano Amaru that there were no shortcuts to Hokage. Only through hard work could he reach that level. He also said that he would have to beat him to the seat and informed him that wouldn't happen. 
They were interrupted by Kanoamaru's instructor, Ebisu. Naruto saw the look that he gave him and was not happy by it. After Kanoamaru's attempt of the Oirok no Jutsu failed and Ebisu's insulting words, Naruto stepped in. He combined the Kage Bunshin no Jutsu, Shadow Clone Technique, and his Oirok no Jutsu. It was way too much for the instructor who Naruto saw was a closet pervert. He called this move the Harima no Jutsu, Harem Technique. After seeing this, Kanoamaru said that they were now rivals. Naruto just smirked at him. He then got Kanoamaru to help him teach Ebisu a lesson. They took him somewhere unknown. The next day, he was found naked, tied to a post and was marked with words of pervert all over his body. It was a great few days, but Naruto was ready for his days as a ninja. He sat next to Hinata who greeted him. The two talked for a while when they heard a commotion coming from the entrance. It was Sakura and Ino arguing about who entered the class first. After a while, Sakura made her way over to Sasuke. This did not sit well with Ino who attempted to stop her. That's when everyone in the fan club attempted to get the seat. Naruto saw this was the time to cause some mischief. He got on the desk and faced the class. People, we have ourselves a Sasuke cat fight about to happen. Place your bets on who gets the seat next to Lord Emo. Do I have any takers? Naruto asked. I've got five Ryo on Sakura. One guy shouted. I've have ten on Eno. Another shouted. Fifteen on the red head. Kiba shouted. Naruto just kept taking bets, not knowing that he was now the attention of the Sasuke fan club. They did not enjoy how Naruto made jokes about the object of their affections. Hinata saw this and attempted to warn him, but Naruto wasn't listening. After a while, Naruto stopped taking bets. Okay, we've got two to one odds on Ino, four to one odds on Sakura, and the underdog is the red head with the ridiculous hairdo. Naruto said out loud. That's when he felt the spike of killer intent and turned to see the group of girls. The redhead looked especially angry at his comment. Everyone held their breath as they wondered what Naruto would do next. Naruto faced the girls. He looked directly at them without fear. Okay, I know that you're upset but I have a good reason for what I did. It's because you are all pathetic and easy marks. He said with a grin. Also, your hairdo is ridiculous. That was all that took before he was attacked by the girls, the redhead reaching him first. Shikamaru raised his head slightly to watch as his friend got pummeled by the enraged girls. He sighed and placed his head down again. He was pretty sure that Naruto would be all right. He'd survived worst. Iriko walked into the classroom five minutes later. He saw that Naruto was handing out money and that he looked bruised. He just sighed and didn't even ask as it was probably the Sasuke fan club that did it. Naruto never really got along with any of them. He called for attention and everyone faced him. I would like to congratulate you on passing. You have done well and I am proud to call you my comrades. From now on, you are Shinobi of Kanoha. Uphold the name and protect the village with everything that you got. Irika said with a smile. Now, we will be assigning you to teams and a Jonan instructor. So listen up for your names. Team 1. Irika called out the name of teams 1 through 6. He got to team 7 and gave out a sigh. He knew that a headache was about to come. Team 7 will consist of Haruno Sakura, Uzumaki Naruto, and Uchiha Sasuke. Your instructor is Hitaki Kakashi. Irika said. Yes. True love conquers all. Suck on that Inobuta, pig. Sakura cheered. What the hell man? You're putting me on a team with the Banshee and Lord Emo? I thought you liked me. What did I ever do to you to deserve such a cruel twist of fate? Naruto asked. That'll be enough Naruto. While there is no dead last this year, you were placed on this team because of your skills. Irika said. What's that skill? Personality? 
Naruto asked, making some people snicker. Moving on, Team 8 will consist of Hyuga Hinata, Aburame Shino, and Inazuka Kiba. Your instructor is Yuhi Kurinai. Irika said. Hinata was happy and sad. Happy that she would be with people she knew, but sad that she wasn't with Naruto. Naruto grumbled about how lucky they were and that he could have used Kurinai's help. Irika ignored the comments and continued on. Team 10 will consist of Yamanaka Ino, Akimichi Choji, and Nara Shikamaru. Your instructor is Sarutobi Asuma. Irika said. What? Why am I put on a team with a sloth and fatty? Ino shouted. She got a glare from Choji. Hey, never call Choji that word. Besides, he isn't fat. He's big boned with amazing ninja skills. That's why the ladies love him. Naruto said in Choji's defense. I wasn't talking to you, Uzumaki. Ino exclaimed. When are you not talking? Everyone has been trying to find an off switch to your mouth since the beginning of the academy. Naruto commented. Ino shrieked and lunged at Naruto. Naruto just smirked and replaced himself with the nearest person, which happened to be Kiba. Ino straddled the dog using ninja. While Kiba was miffed at what Naruto did, he could forgive him this one time. Wow, Ino, I didn't know that you liked Kiba like that. Aren't you a little too young for such displays of affection? I don't mind. Kiba said with a smirk. Ino glared at the both of them and was about to unleash her fury when Irika spoke up. Okay, that's enough. Get back to your seats and Naruto stop causing trouble. He shouted. Ino got off Kiba and stomped back to her seat. Kiba gave Naruto a high five. Irika just sighed and continued to list the teens. Shikamaru sat with Choji as they listened to Ino rant about how they would be the best team among the others. He just sighed and tuned her out. He turned to see Sasuke eating by himself. He then caught sight of Naruto. He was carrying some buckets of paint with him. That didn't mean anything good when Naruto was involved. I hope that you're not about to paint the Hokage Monument again Naruto. Shikamaru called out to him. Naruto looked up to see him. Oh, hey Shikamaru, how's life with she who never stops speaking? Naruto asked. Don't change the subject Naruto. What are you plotting? Shikamaru asked. Just leaving my mark on the academy, giving the new students something to see when they enter. Naruto said. He then saw Sasuke and smirked. You should check it out too Lord Emo. I bet you'll be impressed. I doubt it Dobe. Sasuke said and went back to his lunch. Hey Uzumaki, leave Sasuke Kuen alone. Ino exclaimed. I'm sorry. Did you say something? Naruto asked. Don't you ignore me. Ino said. I'm sorry Ino, but I have to go. Maybe next time we'll talk. Naruto said. Choji, we'll be having that ramen eating contest after you're dismissed. Choji gave him a thumbs up before going back to his chips. Naruto left with the buckets of paint, ignoring Ino's screech of frustration. Sakura sat alone, holding her lunch. She had a sad expression on his face. She had attempted to eat lunch with Sasuke, but it didn't go as planned. As she spoke, they saw Naruto running away from some of the academy instructors. Sakura dissed Naruto and couldn't believe that he was on their team. Sasuke commented that at least he would be useful. He then called her annoying and left. That hurt her when he said that. Suddenly, she heard something and turned her head to see Naruto. He had his jacket tied around his waist and was looking around the area. She noticed some paint on his hands and wondered what he did now. You didn't paint the Hokage monument again, did you Baka, idiot? Sakura asked. Naruto turned to face her. Well if it isn't the shallow harpy. I figured that you would be stalking the team, begging him to have lunch with you. Naruto said. Don't call me that or Sasuke that. 
God, you're such a brat. Sakura shouted. Why am I a brat? Is it because I don't respect you or the team? You know what I don't care what you think. I'll be going now. Naruto said. Kami, why does Hinata hang with someone with you? Sakura asked hotly. Maybe it's because she's not as shallow as you are. Naruto answered. I'm not shallow. Sakura shouted. So you say, but I know how the real you act, and if that isn't being shallow, then I don't know what is. Naruto said. Uzumaki. A voice shouted. Naruto turned to see two instructors charging at him. Time to go. Naruto said and took off with the ninja trailing behind him. Sakura was now feeling worse than before. She did not enjoy what Naruto said to her. It was just as worst as what Sasuke said. She was not a shallow person. She huffed and began to eat her lunch. She hoped that the instructors gave Naruto a few licks. Kakashi entered the academy to go get his team. He stayed a little longer to look at the painting that was on the front of the academy. It was a really nice painting of one of his students with his foot on his other student's back. Some people did not appreciate it, but it was a work of art. He continued on to the classroom where they would be. As he entered, he was rewarded with an interesting sight. Sasuke was staring into nothing while Sakura just swooned over him. Naruto was tied to a chair that was held off the ground with ninja wire. He was tied with chains rather than rope. Kakashi thought that the instructors went a little too far with the mask. He got their attention, and they turned to him. My first impression of you guys is, you're all idiots. Chapter 7 Kakashi was reading his little orange book, awaiting his students. He had cut Naruto down and told them to meet him on the roof. He didn't have to wait too long as the door opened to reveal them. They all took a seat in front of him and waited for whatever to begin. He closed his book and faced his team. Well then, how about we get to know each other? Kakashi said. What do you mean sensei? Sakura asked. This got her a look from Naruto. Why don't you tell me your likes, dislikes, goals for the future, stuff like that? Kakashi said. How about you introduce yourself first? Naruto said rudely. You're the unknown here. How do we know that you're who you say you are? That is a very good point. Let's see, my name is Hitaki Kakashi. My likes are none of your business. I have a lot of hobbies and dislike. My goals, I don't think that I'll tell you. Kakashi said. Sakura and Sasuke looked at him for the weird introduction. Naruto was the only vocal one. What kind of half-assed introduction was that? Naruto exclaimed. Stop shouting Baka! Idiot, Sakura shouted. She turned to Kakashi. I'm sorry sensei. He doesn't have any manners. Naruto scoffed and returned his attention to Kakashi. Kakashi gave them an I smile. That's quite all right. Since you like to talk blondie, why don't you go first? Kakashi asked. The name is Uzumaki Naruto. My likes include ramen, my friends, and my onizen. My dislikes are shallow fangirls, emo pricks, and people who can't tell the difference between a scroll and what's in it. My hobbies are pranks and a bit of gardening. My dream is to be Hokage. Naruto introduced. Nice intro. Kakashi said. That was pretty vague. I know that he's pretty close to Enko, so that must be his onizen. He's much different than before. Okay, let's hear what you have to say Pinky. My name is Haruno Sakura. My likes include. Sakura giggled while looking at Sasuke. My hobbies are. She giggled some more. My dream is. She squealed in delight. Naruto was gagging and holding his throat. Sakura glared at him. My dislikes are Naruto Baka and Inobuta. Pig. The feeling is mutual. Naruto said. 
Sakura looked ready to pound him. That's great. A fangirl. Kakashi thought sarcastically. Anyway, let's hear from our resident brooder. Naruto snorted at that. My name is Uchiha Sasuke. I have few likes, and I have many dislikes. My dream, no, my ambition is to revive my clan and to kill a certain man. Sasuke said coldly. That's so cool. Sakura gushed mentally. He seriously needs a hobby. Naruto thought. As I thought. Kakashi thought. Well, you are an interesting group. I only hope that you pass my exam tomorrow. Kakashi said. What are you talking about? Asked Sakura. Well, the truth is that you aren't genin yet. Kakashi said. The three sat up in surprise. What do you mean we aren't genin? We passed the genin exam. Naruto exclaimed. Actually, the test you took is to just to see if you have what it takes to be genin. The real test is given by the jonin who are your teachers. Trust me this test will be much harder than what the academy gives you. Just come with your equipment at training ground 11 at 5 o'clock in the morning. Oh, I suggest you don't eat unless you want to throw up. Kakashi said before he vanished. After a few moments, Sasuke stood and left the roof. Sakura followed him as usual. Naruto just sighed and left after a while by walking down the side of the building. Naruto arrived at the training ground and saw his two teammates. Sasuke was brooding like always while Sakura was just looking at him with stars in her eyes. Naruto just ignored them and made his way over to the post. Naruto pulled out a sandwich and began to eat. After a while, Naruto noticed that he was being stared at by Sakura. She had a sour look on her face. What? Naruto asked. Kakashi-sensei said not to eat anything. Sakura said. So? He isn't our sensei yet and I don't really like his attitude. Besides, what good shinobi goes into something on an empty stomach? Naruto asked. It doesn't matter. Sensei said not to eat and you should just listen to what he says. Sakura argued. Well, go on and be a little good student. I'll just sit here and eat. Naruto said. Sakura huffed and made her way back over to Sasuke. After another two hours, all three kids were now getting annoyed. This was starting to become an annoying habit of their future sensei. At around eight, Kakashi made his appearance. Hello, my cute Jenin. How are? He was cut off when he dodged and caught a kunai. He looked to see and angry Naruto glaring at him. Now, that wasn't nice. He said. Naruto just glared at him. Kakashi smiled it off and made his way over to his team. He noticed that Sakura and Sasuke looked hungry, but Naruto looked like he was just pissed. Well, shall we get started? He pulled out an alarm clock and two bells. Funny how you have an alarm clock and you can't be on time. Naruto muttered. Only the weak bark the loudest and aren't really ready for this life. Kakashi countered. I might be loud but I don't need a book to get myself off just because no real woman would go out with me. Naruto returned. Ouch. Kakashi said. That comment was uncalled for. Anyway, the clock is set for noon. In that time, you must get one of these bells from me. The two who get the bells will become genin while the third is sent back to the academy. Kakashi explained. I must get one of those bells. Sasuke thought with determination. This is a proof of love. I cannot fail here. Sakura said. Something doesn't sound right here. I might be getting as paranoid as Enko and Izan, but something doesn't feel right. Naruto said. Now, if you want one of the bells you're going to come at me with the intent to kill. Kakashi said. But sensei, won't we hurt you? Sakura said. Really, that's your question? Naruto asked mockingly. He's a jonin. 
he said while pointing at Kakashi. We are Genin. If you're going to ask any intelligent questions, think about it first. Naruto shook his head and muttered Topkunoichi, my ass. Sakura looked ready to blow a gasket so Kakashi decided to cut in. I wouldn't worry if I was you Sakura. You all won't even touch me. Kakashi said. After that, he saw that everyone was ready to continue. Okay then, let us begin. With that, the three kids went to hide. Kakashi gave them a while to hide. He looked into the forest and attempted to find them. Sakura needs to work on her hiding spot a little better. Sasuke found a good spot, giving him a chance to attack. Now, where is Naruto? I know that he is pretty stealthy. Hey, Cyclops. A voice called out. I could be wrong. Kakashi faced his blonde student. Compared to the others, you're a little weird. You're one to talk. Anyway, let's get this started. Naruto said with confidence. Kakashi nodded and reached into his pouch. Naruto quickly launched several shuriken at the man who was forced to dodge. Naruto rocketed toward Kakashi and threw another barrage of shuriken. Kakashi threw a few shuriken of his own to deflect Naruto's shuriken. Naruto then engaged Kakashi in a taijutsu battle. Kakashi dodged and blocked Naruto's attacks but was impressed with him. He got behind Naruto who was pushed off balance. First Lesson Taijutsu You shouldn't allow anyone to get behind you Naruto. Kakashi said. Naruto turned to see that Kakashi had his hands in the Torah seal. Naruto get out of there. He's going to destroy you. Shouted Sakura's voice. Kanahagakur Hidden Taijutsu Oji Sen and Garoshi. Kanahagakur Hidden Secret Taijutsu Technique 1000 Years of Death, Kakashi shouted and poked both fingers into Naruto's butt. The attack sent the Naruto flying in the air, holding his butt. Halfway up in the air, Naruto disappeared in a puff of smoke. That surprised Kakashi a little. A kage bunshin? He turned when he heard the sound of flying metal. Kakashi moved out of the way as a rain of shuriken came at him. Suddenly an army of Naruto came out of the forest, armed with kunai. He heard the battle cries and saw the anger in their eyes. Kakashi readied himself but had to dodge as another Naruto popped out of the ground, swiping at his feet. He caught the wrist of another Naruto and threw him away. The clones converged on him. Sasuke watched with shock and confusion. What the hell was that technique that Naruto had just used? That wasn't a normal bunshin, clone, as they were real. He narrowed his eyes and wondered how the dobe knew such a technique. It was giving Kakashi some trouble as it looked like the clones were just as trained as Naruto was. Sasuke was not the only one who was impressed as Sakura couldn't believe what the blonde Baka had done. Just by looking at the technique, she could tell that it took a lot of chakra to pull off. Both suddenly caught movement and saw that Naruto was moving at a high rate of speed to outflank Kakashi. He skid to a stop and threw two kunai at Kakashi. Kakashi saw the two kunai and used a clone as a shield. The other kunai he did not pay attention to because it was off the mark. That was until it cut the string to one of the bells. A hand popped out of the ground and grasped the bell. The hand quickly sank back into the ground. Kakashi couldn't believe that he had just gotten played. He quickly dispelled the remaining clones and slammed his hand on the ground. A small rumble later and Naruto came flying out of the ground. Kakashi threw two shuriken that pinned the blonde to a tree. Kakashi watched as Naruto struggled to free himself and released a sigh of relief. He did not expect this from Naruto, yes, he read the file. Yes, he read the reports. Still, this was not what he expected from the little guy. Maybe he should speak with Anko just to get a look into his true abilities. He walked up to him and took the bell from Naruto. Hey, I won that fair and square. Naruto said. True, but I never said that I wouldn't try to get the bells back. I'm impressed with what you did. 
you're probably the first to ever hold a bell, at least in this generation. Kakashi said. Okay, what's the deal with this test? Naruto asked. What are you talking about? Kakashi asked back. All this doesn't make any sense. You say that only two people get to be genin, so why did they split us into groups of three? You're also a jonin. Getting those bells would be impossible. So what the deal behind this exam? Naruto said. Kakashi was very impressed with Naruto. Those are some good points Naruto. How about I give a little question? You're cool with Anko right? Naruto nodded. Tell me this, she pretty good but has she ever done a mission by herself? He asked. Naruto was confused by this question. He knew that Anko was apprenticed to some guy named Orochimaru. Still, he had met a couple of people that Anko worked with and went on missions with. He needed to think hard about this question, so he needed to get out of this. I don't know what your game is, but I'm going to figure it out. Until next time. Naruto said and dispelled himself. Kakashi was surprised but not so surprised that he couldn't use the Kawarimi no Jutsu body replacement technique when Sasuke attacked. He sat on a branch and searched for Naruto. He couldn't find him, which wasn't too much of an issue as Naruto had been hiding from Jonin and ANBU for years. He still couldn't believe that Naruto was this good. He knew the technique that Naruto used and used it perfectly. He wondered what else the boy had in store for this test. Kakashi decided to test the other two and see what they could do. Chapter 8 Naruto sat on a branch and thought. He was surrounded by clones as he did not want Kakashi to get the jump on him. He was thinking about the question that Kakashi told him about. What did he mean by what he said? Anko Onizan doesn't go on missions alone, yeah, but what does that have to do with this test? Naruto asked himself. Kakashi wanted him to concentrate on his Onizan for a reason. She doesn't go alone. She's always with a team. Team? Could that be what he wants me to realize? He was cut off when he heard Sakura scream. While he didn't like the girl anymore, he wasn't about to leave her hanging. He shot off with his clones to check on her. Sasuke was glaring at Kakashi from his position. After he heard Sakura scream, he confronted Kakashi. He told the jonin that he was not like his two teammates, but Kakashi made it a point to tell him that Naruto was the only one to get a bell. This pissed Sasuke off and he attacked Kakashi. During the small fight, he was able to touch one of the bells. Seeing that his traps and taijutsu wasn't working, he decided to use ninjutsu. He did the hand seals for his clan's most used jutsu, Katongo Kaku no Jutsu, Fire Release Great Fireball Technique. He saw that this surprised the jonin, and he was not able to dodge the flames. When the technique died down, Sasuke only saw scorched earth. He quickly looked around, wondering where Kakashi was going to attack from. He got his answer when he was dragged underground. His whole body was underground with the exception of his head. He was still able to glare at Kakashi who was kneeling and smiling at him. Dotan Shinju Zanshu no Jutsu, Earth Release Double Suicide Decapitation Technique, a perfect counter to your own Jutsu. I have to say that you are right about something. You are much different than you teammates. Kakashi said with amusement. He suddenly moved away from Sasuke and dodged several shuriken. Three Naruto appeared and faced him. Well, ready for another go Naruto? Something like that. Naruto said. He patted the back of his two clones and sent them off. They charged at Kakashi who readied himself. He watched as Naruto did some hand seals and took a deep breath. Katan Kasumi and Bu no Jutsu, Fire Release Mist Blaze Dance Technique. Naruto shouted and blew out a faint white mist. Kakashi thought that it was a great strategy until he smelt the mist. When he noticed that the regular Naruto hightailed it out of the area with Sasuke, he knew that something was wrong. That's when it happened. Anko was eating some dango, wondering how Naruto was doing with his test. 
She was a little concerned since she knew that Kakashi never passed a single team. She knew that he would be bummed if he had to go back to the academy. That's when she heard an explosion. She stood and looked to see some black smoke coming from one of the training grounds. She realized that was where Kakashi usually held his meetings. Thinking a bit more, she let out a small chuckle. That brat, I only suggested that he use his clones like that. Well, I can't really be blamed for it. It is a good idea after all. Anko said to herself and made her way back to her dango. Kakashi popped out of the ground and looked around at the damage that was caused by Naruto's little stunt. He knew that the Kage Bunshin, Shadow Clone, was mostly used for spying because of its special condition. However, this was one extreme way to use them. He knew that he said to come at him with the intent to kill, but using clones for a suicide bombing was going a bit far. Something told him that this was Anko's fault. Kakashi sighed and decided to put out any flames before going after the genin again. Naruto was with Sasuke and Sakura, surrounded by traps. He pinched the bridge of his nose as the two was working his last nerve. Look, I don't know how many times I have to say this. This isn't about the bells. There is a whole other meaning behind this test. Naruto said. I don't have time to waste with your theories Dobe. It's almost noon and I have to get a bell. Sasuke spat. Oh my god, can you for once just listen to someone besides your own ego? I'm telling you that there is something wrong with this test. Naruto exclaimed. Hey, don't speak to Sasuke that way. Sakura said defending her crush. Look, just think for a minute. Alone, we can't beat him. He's a jonin, for a reason. To get the bells, we might have to work together. Naruto said calmly. I don't need either of your help. I touched the bells, and next time I'll get them. Sasuke said. Yeah, besides, why would we team up with you? Once Sasuke and I get the bells, you'll go back to the academy, and they'll put you with another bunch of losers for a team. Sakura crowed. Naruto was about to explode when something stopped him. The word team just kept going through his head. That's when he remembered something. Kanoha based its strength by working with each other. That meant that this test wasn't about the bells, it was about teamwork. That's it. Hey, I know what the real purpose of this test is. Naruto exclaimed. However, the alarm went off, signaling the end of the test. Kakashi appeared before the genin. Is that so Naruto? Maybe you can explain it over there. Kakashi said. Kakashi was standing in front of everyone. He saw as Sakura struggled to free herself from the post, Sasuke was glaring at Naruto and Naruto just ignore everyone. He then faced Naruto. So Naruto, care to tell me what the true purpose of this test was? Kakashi asked. The word team just kept running around in my head. That's when I realized that Kanoha's strength is based on our shinobi working together with each other. The bells were a mislead. You wanted to see how we did as a team. So, the way to pass the true exam is to show our teamwork. Naruto answered. After a few seconds, Kakashi clapped his hands. Very good, very good, I'm glad that you caught that Naruto. It proves that you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. Seeing that you got the point of the test, I will see what I can do to get you on a current team. To send you back to the academy would be a waste of talent. Kakashi said. What about us sensei? Sakura asked. Oh, you two need not worry. I'm going to the Hokage and get you two removed from the shinobi forces. Kakashi stated in a matter-of-fact way. Sakura was shocked at that and Sasuke was angry. He charged at Kakashi but quickly found himself on the ground with Kakashi's foot on his head, his arm twisted in a painful lock. Sasuke Kuen. Sakura screamed. That's exactly why you and Sasuke do not deserve to be shinobi. Sakura, you were so concerned with Sasuke that you totally ignored Naruto. 
Even after he saved you and was attempting to get your help in figuring out the purpose of the test, you scorn him. Weren't you the top kunoichi and smartest girl in the academy? Kakashi asked harshly. Sakura bowed her head in shame. He then faced Sasuke. You thought that they couldn't help you, that they would just get in your way. Still, you were saved by Naruto and taken to safety. He offered you help, but you also scorned, arrogantly thinking that you were a match for me. Sasuke let out a breath of annoyance. Kakashi got off him and let him go. Sasuke made his way back to lick his wounds. You see this stone here? Kakashi said and pointed to a stone. They could see that there were some names on the stone. Those names are the names of Kanoha's heroes. They get on this stone for their service to the village, may their souls rest in peace. That surprised all of them. Remember this, those who disobeys the rules are trash, but those who abandon their teammates are worse than trash. He said to them. He waited a while to allow it to sink in. Okay, because of Naruto, I'm going to give you another chance. You two can eat the lunch I brought but Sakura get none of it. I'll be back in a moment. He said and left. The two boys dug into the lunches and began to eat. Naruto stopped eating and looked around to see if Kakashi was around. Seeing no trace of him, he walked up to Sakura and freed her. Sakura looked at him like he was crazy. What are you doing? Sakura exclaimed. Would you keep your damn voice down? Naruto hissed. He then shoved his lunch forward. Here, eat this and get your strength back. But Kakashi-sensei said not to eat. Sakura said. But Kakashi-sensei said not to eat. For once, will you just listen? We need you to help us get the bells, and you can't help us if you're hungry. So eat. Naruto said. Sasuke followed Naruto's lead and shoved his half-eaten lunch in front of Sakura. The dobe is right. You can't help us if you're so weak. Sasuke said. Hearing it from him, Sakura nodded and began to eat. That's when the skies darkened and lightning streaked from the sky. Kakashi appeared and he was not happy with what he saw. What did I say? How dare you disobey my orders? Kakashi demanded loudly. They were all scared, but Naruto manned up and stepped forward. Screw you, Kakashi. I wasn't about to allow my teammate to starve. You don't like it, then you know where you can put it. Naruto said bravely. I, I stand by Naruto. We won't follow your ridiculous rules anymore. Sakura stated. We are a team and we will stand as a team. Sasuke said. Is that so? Well then you all. Pass. Kakashi said with an eye smile. His genin looked at him before falling down on their faces. Kakashi just kept smiling. The jonin were waiting for Kakashi to arrive like always. When he finally arrived everyone gave him a stern glare. He just rubbed the back of his head. Sorry I'm late but... Kakashi began. Spare us your lies, Kakashi. Hiruzen said. Kakashi pouted but he shook it off quickly. So, have you finally passed a team? I'm happy to say that Team 7 has passed. Kakashi said. This surprised everyone in the room. It's about time Kakashi. I thought you would never pass a team. Said Asuma. Well, they surprised a lot, especially Naruto. Kakashi said. Is that so? Would you care to explain? Hiruzen asked. Well, Sakura is a typical fangirl. She doesn't care much about training and being on the same team as the object of her affection might be a problem. However, she's shown great resolve and will improve over time. Sasuke is indeed skilled and put me on the ropes for a while, but he is arrogant and thinks that his teammates are beneath him. His superiority complex might be a problem, but I'm not too worried about it. Naruto is not what I expected. He's skilled and smart. 
It was he who figured out the test I gave them. Even though he does not respect his teammates or me, he is willing to put it aside to work with the team. I do worry that Anko may have put some destructive ideas in his head, but he is a team player. Kakashi reported. So that explosion was him wasn't it? Karina asked. Kakashi nodded at her and she just chuckled. I told Anko not to put the idea in his head. Anyway, I wish you all luck with your teams. You are all dismissed. Hiruzen said. Naruto entered his apartment after having a celebratory ramen feast at Ikaraku's. He was just happy that he was finally a genin. As he made his way to his room for some sleep, he stopped and looked around his place. Something was off, he could feel it. He was suddenly tackled from behind by someone. They tumbled around for a while before Naruto managed to pin his assailant. He pulled out a kunai and put it in front of their face. He had a small smirk. Ha, huh, that's my win. Naruto cheered. That was before the assailant turned into a cushion. Son of a bitch. He exclaimed and was suddenly put in a sleeper hold. He felt the light dim before tapping out. The person released him and Naruto turned to glance at the person, who turned out to be Anko. Whose win was it? Anko said. Shouldn't you be stalking Irika sensei around this time? Naruto asked irritably. I'm not stalking him. I am merrily taking an interest. Anko said. How is breaking into his apartment while he slept to get a piece of his hair an interest? Naruto asked. Anyway, I heard you passed your exam. Congratulations are in order. Anko said. Thanks, but I just wish that it wasn't with the team and his fangirl. Naruto said. Stop your bitchin' and just deal with it. You'll need them later on. I guess. I can't wait to do missions though. Naruto said with excitement. Just don't be too disappointed in the missions. They might be boring, but they serve a purpose. Anko said. What are you talking about? How can taking out bandits, saving daimyo's daughters and protecting the ninja way, be in any way boring? Naruto asked with confusion. Anko looked at Naruto before laughing loudly. She was on the ground holding her sides. Naruto didn't have a good feeling about this. Chapter 9 Someone was going to pay for this. Oh yes, Naruto was going to make someone pay for this. Whether it was Anko, Kakashi, the old man, Kanoha itself, Naruto was going to rain unholy hell upon them. It had been a month since becoming a genin and he was at his wit's end with these so-called missions. They weren't missions, they were freaking chores. Why the hell was he doing the chores for people who were too lazy to do it themselves? He would have said so to the last client if it wasn't for Kakashi. Kakashi explained to him that these missions were to promote team unity. Naruto scoffed at that as that was a joke to him. Naruto did not consider either Sasuke or Sakura his teammates. They didn't treat him like a teammate so why should he? It wasn't that he didn't try to be a better teammate to the two but they wouldn't allow him in. He just gave up after Sasuke ordered him on one mission to use his Kage Bunshin, Shadow Clone, to do his work. Sakura, like a loyal fangirl, agreed with him. He told them both off and did his work. He told himself that he would work with the two but that was about it. Position C, are you there? Kakashi's voice came through the radio. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I've got my eye on the target. Naruto said. Okay then, move in and capture. Remember, we are to capture it, not kill it. Kakashi ordered. I got you. It isn't like we haven't caught the damn cat ten times already. Every time we do, it attempts to rip our faces off. Naruto exclaimed. That's enough. Just do the mission and capture the target. Naruto didn't say anything and charged at the target. The target saw him coming and attempted to run. As the target tried to run, his avenue of escape was cut off by Sakura. 
They tried another escape only to find it cut off by Sasuke. That's when the target was strung up with ninja wire. Naruto looked up at the target and made sure that it wasn't going anywhere. Sakura walked up to Naruto and had a frown on her face. Hey Naruto, didn't you hear Sensei? He said not to kill the target. Sakura said with a tone. The target isn't dead. I, for one, do not wish to be clawed every damn time we catch her. This way, we can safely take her back without being scratched. Naruto said. Either way, make sure that it's her. Sasuke said. Are you kidding me? Naruto asked sarcastically. Sasuke ignored him and checked for the red ribbon. He touched his neck. Target is confirmed. We have Tora. Sasuke reported. Good work, come back and we'll return to the Hokage Tower. Naruto, you and I need to have a discussion about your attitude toward the chain of command. Kakashi said. And that discussion will end the same way as always does. I'll listen, I'll pretend to care and I'll move on. Naruto said and took the radio out of his ear. He tossed it and made his way to the tower, leaving Sasuke and Sakura to deal with the cat. Naruto watched as the daimyo's wife crush her cat. Naruto thought that was divine justice that it was happening. As she left with her cat, Naruto stood in front of the Hokage. He gave him a look, almost daring him to give him another lame mission. Hiruzen looked at him and smirked a little. He was proud of him for keeping his anger in check, but he could see that it was about to end. He knew that there was a poll going about how long it would take the blonde to explode. Very good Team 7. Now, what is there left for you? We have several D-rank missions available. Hiruzen said. That's it. I've had enough. I will not do another one of these chores. Naruto shouted. Some of the ANBU hidden cursed as they had lost the pole. Iruka looked really upset by how Naruto was acting. That's enough Naruto. You have been a genin for only a month. These missions are all you can do for now. Iruka explained. Oh come on, you can't call them missions. They're chores, plain and simple. You can justify it any way you want but the fact is that we're doing the chores of people who are too lazy to do it themselves. Naruto said. Why you? Irika said. That's enough you too. Naruto, do you even know why you do D-rank missions? Hiruzen asked. It's to promote unity and all that. A more difficult mission would do the same thing. Were we trained to do such missions? I just want a mission that shows that we're prepared for the real world. I'm just asking for a chance to show that I have matured enough to be trusted with a more difficult mission. Naruto said. The small speech made the Hokage smile. It did seem that Naruto was growing up some. I guess I can agree to that, considering the alternative should I disagree. Do you believe that they are ready Kakashi? Hiruzen asked. I don't see why not. It would be a very good experience for them. Kakashi said. Very well. I do have a C-rank here. Please bring in the client. The Hokage ordered. The doors opened to reveal a drunken man dressed in some pretty old clothes. His cheeks and nose was red, probably from the liquor. He looked at the team and frowned. What is this? I asked for ninja, not some snot-nosed little brats. The short blonde one looks like the most stupid of the three. He commented. As he was about to take a swig of his sake, a kunai flew well below the waistline and embedded into the wall. The man gulped and looked at the boy he had just insulted. You want to say that again, old man? Naruto snarled. That'll be enough Naruto. This man is your client. His name is Tazuna. Team 7 is tasked with his protection to Nami no Kuni, Land of Waves. You will continue to protect him until the bridge he is building is finished. Do you understand? Hiruzen asked. Yes Hokage-sama. They said. 
They left to get packed for the mission. Naruto was waiting along with Sasuke and Sakura for Kakashi and Tazuna. He was flipping a kunai in his hand and was debating on what to do with it. He wondered how much longer it would take Kakashi when he appeared with Tazuna in tow. He saw that Tazuna took a few steps behind Kakashi as he saw the kunai. He just smirked and grinned at him. That's when he got a familiar feeling and whipped out another kunai. He spun to block the first attack and lashed out with the kunai in a reverse grip. The attacker blocked his attack with their own kunai and then engaged Naruto in a duel of blades. After a few seconds, Naruto held the attacker at bay as they attempted to overpower him. Seeing that Naruto was holding them back, they let out a happy grunt. You're getting better at this brat. Looks like we're at a stalemate. She said. That's what you think. Naruto said through a muffled mouth. The reason for that was that Naruto had a kunai in his mouth and the tip of his blade right at the spot where her kidneys were. She saw the grin on his face and growled. All right, you smug little bastard, you win this round. The two stopped their attacks, but Naruto was still on guard. It was Anko after all. Don't worry brat, I won't hurt on your first mission outside. Anko said. Swear on it. Naruto demanded. I swear on Irika's cute butt, that I won't attack you. Anko said with annoyance. Naruto relaxed after that. Anko looked at him before smiling. That was a good counter. I didn't even see you put the kunai in your mouth. I don't have to worry about you now. Careful, you don't want people to get the wrong idea. Naruto said with a smirk. Like they would say anything knowing that it's me. Anko replied. Excuse me? A loud voice called out. They too turned toward the voice and saw that it was Sakura. What was that about? Wow, she really is loud. Anko said. Told you. Naruto said. Kakashi stepped forward and faced Anko. If you're done Anko, my team and I need to move out. Kakashi said. Oh, before you go, I need to talk to you privately for a second. Anko said and lead Kakashi away from his team. Alone, Naruto's two teammates and client looked at him. Who was that Naruto? Asked Sakura. That's Anko, my Onizen. Naruto answered. That was amazing kid. I'm sorry that I insulted you earlier. Tazuna apologized. It's okay. I wouldn't be as good as I am if it wasn't because of her. Naruto said. A short while later, the two returned. Naruto couldn't tell because of the mask, but Kakashi looked a little pale. Anko just had a big grin on her face. Well brat, you take care and do your job well. We'll talk when you get back. Anko said. Okay, Anko Onizen. Naruto said. He and his team left through the gates and into the world. The team was walking for a few hours and could no longer see the gates. They moved in diamond formation. Sasuke was up front, Sakura and Naruto were at the flanks and Kakashi was taking up the rear. As they walked, Sakura noticed a book in Naruto's hands. She was curious and decided to ask him about it. Hey Naruto, what's that? She asked. It's a geography book that I brought. I figure I should read up on the area that we're going to. Naruto explained. Why would you do that? Sakura asked. So I can be prepared. Anko Onizen taught me to always know where you're going as it can be an advantage to you and your team. It makes the mission that much easier. Naruto answered. Okay. Say, why do you call her your own Izen? I thought that you were an orphan. She said. Thanks for saying that so casually Sakura. Naruto said with annoyance. Sakura realized what she said and wanted to apologize for it. Naruto cut her off before she could do so. She's one of the few that gave a damn about me. She taught me how to be a shinobi and treated me with respect. 
She's like a sister to me. That was an unusual person to choose Naruto. Kakashi said. Well, no one else made any type of move except the few I respect. Besides, she's not unusual. She's batshit crazy is what she is. Naruto explained. Back in Kanoha, Enko stabbed the stand at the dango shop with a kunai. As people backed away from her, she could help but feel like killing something small. Sakura turned her attention to Tazuna after her questions were answered and asked about his home. As they continued to talk and walk, a puddle was in the middle of the road. Kakashi saw it and ignored it. They walked past it and continued on. That's when two men appeared out of the puddle. Naruto's danger sense kicked in and a kunai appeared in his hand. He spun to see his sensei wrapped in a shuriken chain, which was held by two men. They pulled the chain and the genin watched as Kakashi was torn in pieces. The two then made their move toward the team. Sasuke was the first to move, throwing a shuriken and pinning the chain to a tree. He threw a kunai to make the chain stick. Naruto made his move and appeared in front of one of the two attackers. He used his kunai, slashing at the left ninja's legs. He cried out as he dropped to the ground after his legs gave out on him from the wounds. Sasuke appeared and kicked the other guy who was cried out at seeing his partner hit the ground. He disengaged himself from the chain and moved to take out Naruto. Naruto meet the charge and slipped another kunai out. That's when the man's momentum was stopped by a clothesline from Kakashi. He let out a gasp before going limp in the crock of his arm. He looked at the other man and saw that he was still alive. He looked at Naruto who was putting his weapons away. That was kind of vicious Naruto. Kakashi said. What are you talking about? I only took his legs out from under him. He won't die from those cuts. He'll just be in a lot of pain. Naruto said. How are you still alive sensei? We watched you get killed. Sakura exclaimed. Naruto pointed to the pieces of wood that lay on the ground. A kawarimi no jutsu? Body replacement technique, Sakura said with confusion. Naruto ignored her and checked the headband of the two shinobi. These guys are Kiri shinobi. I didn't know Kiri operated out here. I thought they were still in the grips of a civil war. Naruto said. They are and these two are no longer Kiri shinobi. They must be Nuke Nin, Missing Nin. Kakashi said. Why would Kiri Nuke Nin what with us? Asked Sasuke. That's a good question. Perhaps you can tell us Tazuna. Kakashi said. Everyone turned to the old man who suddenly looked very nervous. Chapter 10 Team Kakashi sat in a rowboat on their way to Nami no Kuni, Land of Waves. After tying up the Oni Kyodai, Demon Brothers, Kakashi demanded that Tazuna told them what was going on. Tazuna relented and told them about Gato. Gato held Nami on Kuni in an iron grip with tyranny and violence. He told them about how he had cornered the shipping rights to the village. He would choke the business along the wharf and the prices were tripled for what they usually were. Anyone who spoke out against him was killed. Tazuna said that if his bridge connected with the mainland, then it would put a dent in Gato's hold over the country. Kakashi understood Tazuna's plight, but he knew that this mission was no longer a Sirank mission. Because of the involvement of Shinobi, the mission had a good chance of being an A-rank mission. He left the decision up to his students, hoping that they would select to turn back. He should have known better as Naruto and Sasuke wanted to continue. Sakura just agreed with Sasuke. Outvoted, he continued on with Tazuna to Nami no Kuni. The boat landed on the shore and the team was once walking toward their destination. They were walking for about 30 minutes when Naruto suddenly stopped. He looked toward the trees and narrowed his eyes. He slipped a kunai out and stared at the trees. His training with Anko had made him a bit paranoid at times. Anko believed in the art of the ambush and would constantly attack from out of nowhere. Because of that, Naruto developed his sense of awareness and danger. Right now, it was going haywire. Someone was ghosting them. 
Naruto, what are you standing there for? exclaimed Sakura. Naruto ignored her and kept on looking into the forest. Sakura walked up to him and slapped him upside the head. Naruto turned and glared at Sakura who glared right back. What the hell was that for? Naruto growled. You're holding us up. Come on, we have to get to Zuna home. Sakura said and walked away. Naruto took one last glance into the forest before following Sakura. He caught with her and tripped her up, making her stumble. Sakura glared at the blonde who just smirked at her. When they were gone, two figures jumped out of the forest and onto the path they were on. Well, that kid nearly caught us. Said the shorter of the two. The guy wore a mask like the ANBU. He wore a moss green, striped turtleneck sweater and a split skirt in matching color that reached down to their knees. On the outside of that, they wore a green-blue short kimono with white edges, and around their waist a green-brown obi, in the same fabric as the sweater, with a fringe trail. They also wore light brown platoon sandals with straps in the same color as the kimono and nail polish on his fingernails and toenails in matching blue-green color. His long hair was gathered in a white bun holder tied with a green-blue, while two locks of their hair fell loose framing their face, bound with metal hair cuffs at the ends. Yes, he's either a senor or he is very well in tune with his surrounds. Said the taller man. He was wearing bandages like a mask over the bottom half of his face. He was shirtless, with his chest only covered by a belt to which was attached to a huge blade, wearing baggy pants with the striped pattern typical of kirigakure and mimetic wrist warmers extending up to his elbows, with matching leg warmers. His hitaite was worn sideways on his head. Perhaps we should call off the ambush you have planned? The shorter one said. It won't matter if he sees us coming. He's just a genin by the looks of it. The one that I'm worried about is the sensei. Who would have thought that the famed Sharingan no Kakashi, Kakashi of the Sharingan, would be the jonin in charge? You will keep an eye on the battle and let me know of any weaknesses. He ordered. Understood Zabuza-sama. The young teen said. The two vanished back into the forest. Naruto was still on edge and kept his senses sharp just in case. He didn't know who was ghosting them but whoever they were, were keeping their distance. He could still feel them, though not as much as before. He stayed close to Tazuna and readied himself for anything. Kakashi saw this and readied himself as well. Sasuke ignored Naruto's caution as did Sakura. They just thought he was being paranoid and stupid. Suddenly, Naruto's kunai was in his hand and flying. It hit something with a thunk, letting him know that his kunai hit a tree. He pulled out two more kunai and took a defensive stance by Tazuna. Kakashi followed him and pulled out a kunai of his own. What is it Naruto? Kakashi asked. We're being watched. Someone has been ghosting us since we landed. I can feel them all around us. Naruto said seriously. W what are you talking about? There's no one out there. Stop trying to act cool. Sakura said. Shut your mouth and keep quiet. Naruto hissed. This is not the damn time to act like an ignorant, spoiled child. I know the feeling of dread when I feel it and it is intensified now. Whoever is out here is incredibly strong. Naruto's serious words snapped Sasuke into battle mood. Sakura followed soon after and looked around the forest. That's when they heard chuckling. Well now, unlike your two teammates, you're taking this very seriously. I thought that Kanoha's methods were very soft when it came to training their genin. The voice said. They all searched the area as the voice sounded like it came from everywhere. Naruto looked around and wondered where the attack was coming from. That's when he heard the sound of something flying through the air. Get down! Kakashi shouted. Naruto pulled Tazuna to the ground and covered him as a large projectile flew past them. Naruto looked up to see a large sword embedded into a tree. Seconds later, a ninja appeared on the handle. He looked down at the team. Kakashi stepped forward and faced this new threat. 
Momochi Zabuza, the Kirigakure no Kijin. Demon of the Mist, Kakashi said. And I know of you, Hataki Kakashi. Or do you prefer Sharingan no Kakashi? Zabuza asked. Whatever suits you, Zabuza. Kakashi said. He spared his team a glance. Protect Tazuna, this fight is way beyond you. Use the Manji no Jin, Manji formation, and do not interfere. The team nodded and protected Tazuna. Kakashi raised his Hitaiate to reveal the Sharingan. This made Zabuza smile. Well, I should feel honored that you would reveal the Sharingan so early. Zabuza said. This surprised Sakura and Sasuke, Sasuke mostly. How does he have the Sharingan? Sasuke asked with shock. Is that really a question you should be asking? Just focus on the task at hand. Naruto said and watched Zabuza for any movement. I like him. I would say he is a product of you, but seeing that your other two genin aren't like him, he has been taught by another. Either way, I will spare you and your students if you just hand me the old man. Zabuza said. Sorry to say that I will not be able to agree to your request. We are tasked with his protection and that's what we are going to do. Kakashi said. Very well then. Zabuza disappeared with his blade. He appeared on the surface of the water and did a seal. Kirigakure no Jutsu. Hiding in the mist technique, a dense mist appeared and surrounded the area. Kakashi narrowed his eyes at the mist. So, this is the specialty of Zabuza. He is the master of the Sorento Karingu, silent killing, method. He can move silently around the mist and strike from anywhere. I have to be alert as he will come for me first. Kakashi thought. He released his chakra to disperse some of the mist. He noticed that Sasuke was not holding up well due to Zabuza's taunts and the killing intent. He looked at the boy with an eye smile. Don't worry Sasuke, I won't allow my team to die. Bold words Kakashi, considering that it's already over. Zabuza said. He appeared right in the middle of the group, his sword ready to cleave everyone in half. Naruto reacted by kicking both of his teammates away. He pushed Tazuna to the ground and used his back as a surface, lashing out with a kick to Zabuza's ribs. Zabuza saw a glint of light and back away a short step. He watched the hidden blade pass by him and swung his blade in a downward arc Naruto used his momentum to move himself and Tazuna out of the way from the deadly strike. Kakashi appeared quickly and stabbed Zabuza in the gut. This happened in a matter of seconds. Naruto looked at the two and noticed that water was leaking instead of blood. He yelled out to Kakashi but it was too late as Zabuza appeared behind him. Zabuza's Mizu Bunshin, water clone, dissolved and Zabuza cut Kakashi in two. Zabuza smirk, but it soon fell when Kakashi dissolved into water as well. Zabuza was so stunned by the fact Kakashi copied his technique in the mist. Kakashi appeared behind him and held a kunai to his neck. He told him that the fight was over, but Zabuza had other plans. It was Kakashi's turn to be surprised when Zabuza dissolved into water as well. He then ducks when he heard Zabuza's huge blade in the air. Zabuza used the handle of his sword to give him leverage as he kicked Kakashi clear across the area. Kakashi landed in the water and went under. Kakashi was surprised by the power of the kick but had to get to the surface quickly before Zabuza killed his students. He broke the water's surface and searched for Zabuza. He suddenly felt that the water got heavy. He attempted to get out of the water but Zabuza appeared above him. That was a huge mistake, Kakashi. Swiro, no jutsu. Water prison technique, Zabuza called out. Kakashi cursed as he was captured. On the land, the team watched as Zabuza held Kakashi hostage. Naruto sucked his teeth and readied himself for a fight. He summoned some clones, which caught everyone's attention. You two stay with Sakura and protect Tazuna. Team, you're with me. Naruto spoke. What are you thinking? We have to get Tazuna out of here. Sakura exclaimed. That isn't an option here. 
Zabuza has Kakashi right where he wants him. If we run, he'll just kill him and chase us down within moments. Our best bet is to free Kakashi. Naruto said. Now, listen Naruto. Sakura said. No, you listen. I've had it up to here with your whining. You're a damn kunoichi, so start to act like one. Protect the client with my clones, and stay out of our way. Naruto roared. Naruto then faced Sasuke. Are you ready, because I have a plan to get Kakashi out of the mess he got himself in? You actually got a plan? Sasuke mocked. Naruto ignored him and threw something at him. Just be prepared to throw that when you got a clear shot at the original. Naruto said. He and his clones looked forward to see that Zabuza had created a clone to face them. That son of a bitch is mocking us. He thinks that his Mizu Bunshin will be enough to deal with us. Well, I'll show him. Naruto and his clones charged at the approaching clone. The clone waited for him and his clones to reach him. He was impressed with movement and the speed at which he came at him with. He readied himself as two copies of Naruto appeared. One was behind the other in an attempt to hide an attack. One launched himself in the air while the other charged at him. The Mizu Bunshin cut him down immediately and raised his sword to protect himself from the barrage of shuriken. He kicked away a clone that attempted to flank him and kicked the airborne Naruto out of the air. Both were dispelled by the attacks. The last three attempted to bull rush him, but Mizu Bunshin cut them down with no difficulty. The clone faced the two remaining clone who stood with the girl and boy. He smirked at them and made his way over to them. That's when Sasuke tried his luck against Zabuza, despite Naruto's clone protest. Zabuza easily catches the boy with one arm and slammed him down to the ground hard. You wanna be shinobi, make me sick. You think that you could take me? You're not even fit to lick my feet. The clone mocked. Suddenly, the clone felt something stab him in the neck. It gurgled before dissolving into water and right on Sasuke. He got the water out of his face and turned to see Naruto. He looked to see that the two clones were still there and was wondering where he came from. Naruto ignored him and grabbed the weapon he gave Sasuke earlier. He threw it at him with a glare. Next time, stick to the damn plan. I'm going to give you another shot so you better follow through with it. Naruto said with a hard tone. He stepped forward, did a familiar seal. Kage Bunshin no Jutsu. Naruto called out. The field was littered with clones, all ready for a fight. Chapter 11 Zabuza looked at the clones in front of him with some surprise. It wasn't every day that you witnessed a genin make so many Kage Bunshin, shadow clones, and not be winded. The way how the genin treated the situation was also something that surprised him. He didn't know who trained this boy, but he was not thinking like a genin. He created two Mizu Bunshin, water clones, to deal with the clones. He watched as they attacked his Mizu Bunshin and was impressed with the kid. That's when he witnessed the black-haired boy unfold whatever the blonde gave him. It turned out to be Infuma Shuriken, Wine Demon Shuriken. The boy jumped into the air and launched the projectile. He watched as it avoided his two Mizu Bunshin and came right at him. It was an interesting ploy, but it would do nothing against him. Zabuza easily caught the Fuma Shuriken when he noticed another Fuma Shuriken. So, that was their plan, hiding another Shuriken within the shadow of the first one. The Kage Shuriken no Jutsu, Shadow Shuriken Technique, a very good technique. However, Zabuza then jumped over the second Fuma Shuriken as it passed by him. A shuriken will not touch me. He shouted. How about a kunai? Zabuza turned to see the Fuma shuriken transform into that blonde. He threw a kunai and was on target with Zabuza's head. Zabuza cursed as he was forced to release the prison in order to avoid the kunai. He managed to avoid it and the kunai nicked him on the cheek. That's when he noticed the tag on the end of it. There was an explosion that consumed Zabuza. Naruto hit the water and sunk for a bit before swimming to the surface. 
He broke the surface only to see a very pissed off Zabuza, his blade raised. You're dead, kid! Zabuza exclaimed. Lucky for him, Kakashi saved him with the Fuma Shuriken. Naruto dove under the water and swam back to the shore. He reached just in time as Kakashi launched another massive sway ton, water release, Jutsu. He ignored it and focused on the remaining Mizu Bunshin. He threw two kunai one was off its mark. The clone batted one away while the other exploded in the clone's face, dispelling it. Naruto shook off the access water while Kakashi was about to finish the real Zabuza off. That was until someone interfered. Naruto sat on a stump near Tazuna's home. He had just finished securing the area with traps, just in case someone came for the bridge builder. Sakura called him a little paranoid because she believed that Gato's main attacker was dead. Naruto was not so sure about that. The end of that battle kept running through his mind. The person who killed Zabuza couldn't be much older than him. He did it without a hint of hesitation. What made Naruto curious was the hunter Nin's next action, which was when he took the body away from the area. There was something that nagged Naruto about that. He sighed and tried to relax. Maybe Sakura is right about me being paranoid. Naruto thought. Hey Naruto! Naruto turned to the sound of Sakura's voice. Kakashi-sensei is up and he wants to see us. Fine, I'm coming. Naruto said. He made his way back to the house and continued on upstairs. He entered the room to see his teammates, his sensei and Tazuna. He sat in the corner and looked at Kakashi. Glad you can join us Naruto. I must thank you for your help in getting me free from Zabuza's prison. Kakashi said. No problem, I'll just put that on your tab. Naruto said. Kakashi sighed and looked at his students. I have some bad news for you guys. We might be fighting Zabuza again. Kakashi said, shocking everyone. What are you talking about sensei? I thought you said that Zabuza was dead. You checked his pulse and everything. Sakura exclaimed. I know, but that Hunterneen didn't act like a Hunterneen is supposed to do. It shouldn't have mattered if we were there or not, he should have taken Zabuza's sword as a confirmation while destroying the body. Then there was the weapon they used. Senban are not the normal killing tool. They are too thin and there are only a few spots on the body that a Senban can kill. Kakashi explained. That makes sense. Anko and Izan use Senban, but she coats them with various types of poisons, some that kill, some that paralyze. It could be that this guy coated his senban with something that made us think that he's dead. Naruto added. Or he hit a certain point on his body that gives the illusion of death. All Hunter Nin are skilled with the human body. Either way, I assume that Zabuza will be out for a while unless this Hunter Nin is skilled with medicine. If it's the latter, we have about a week. Kakashi said. Aren't you guys overthinking this? Asked a worried Tazuna. In the shinobi world, we have to deal with the unexpected. Naruto said. Well said, that is why you guys will be ready for the next fight. It's time to train and prepare you for Zabuza's return. Kakashi stated. What can we do in a week? Sakura asked worried. Don't sell yourselves short. You guys acted very well in your first life and death battle. I have confidence that you'll do well. Kakashi said with an eye smile. Naruto sighed and shook his head. If Kakashi had such confidence, he should have been training them since they were a team. The next day, Kakashi, who was using crutches, stood in a forest with his team. They all faced him and waited for the training to begin. Okay, the first thing that we are going to do is get better control of your chakra. Kakashi said. What do you mean sensei? Sakura asked. Chakra is the energy we use to cast our jutsu. It is a mixture of physical and spiritual energies. What you have to understand is that this energy must be mastered and controlled if you want to better use your chakra in using jutsu. 
To do so, I going to show you the first of few chakra exercises. We call this the Kinobori no Shegyo, tree climbing practice. Kakashi said. Naruto just smirked and prepared himself. Sasuke and Sakura were confused by what Kakashi said. But we already know how to climb trees? Sakura said. Do you know how to climb without your hands? Kakashi asked. He then demonstrated the Kinobori no Shegyo and shocked two of his students. You must focus a fixed amount of your chakra to the bottom of your feet and using that to climb the tree. Kakashi threw three kunai at each of their feet. Use this to mark your progress. I suggest running first. Each genin grabbed a kunai and sprinted toward a tree. Sasuke ran up his tree before losing his hold on his chakra and breaking the bark. He marked his point before flipping down and landing on his feet. He looked at the mark with analyzing eyes. So, too much chakra and you get pushed off. That must mean that too little chakra and you fall right off. Sasuke thought. Hey this is pretty easy. Sakura said. Kakashi and Sasuke looked to see Sakura sitting on a branch. She was all smiles. Kakashi looked at her. That isn't surprising. She has the smallest reserves among her teammates. That's when he realized that Naruto was nowhere to be seen. Wait a minute, where's Naruto, he thought. You should see this view guys. Naruto shouted. They looked up, but they couldn't see Naruto. That would mean that Naruto was on the top of the tree. Said blonde was taking in the beauty of the forest. He was very happy that he got up the tree so fast. That meant that his speed and chakra control was getting better. This was an exercise that Anko convinced him to do every day, even after he mastered the exercise. She explained to him that his chakra was massive, bigger than ever the Sandanes. She also encouraged him to challenge himself with this exercise. Either way, this technique was a breeze for him. He decided to go down just to see everyone's surprised faces. He raced down the tree and came to a stop at the bottom. He walked the last three steps off the tree and gave everyone a smirk. He saw that they were surprised and he revealed in their surprise. All three had different thoughts about Naruto's success. Wow, he made it higher than me. I thought he had a lot chakra because he could use the Kage Bunshin and not suffer from chakra exhaustion. Wouldn't that make his control bad? Maybe, he's much stronger than we believe. Sakura thought as she looked at the blonde. What the hell is going on? How is the dobe, loser, so much better than me at this? He's been doing much better than me at everything, even against Tsubuza. Is it because of that woman he calls his Onizen? Sasuke thought viciously. So she showed him this too? I'm not complaining, but he's ahead of his teammates. I want them to be at the same level for now. If this continues, I can see some friction between him and Sasuke. Kakashi thought. Well, this was much unexpected. Let's see if you can keep it up Naruto. Continue with the exercise. Naruto snorted at him but did not disobey or challenge Kakashi this time. He ran up the tree and ran all the way to the top. Sasuke growled and continued his exercise, not wanted to fall behind him. Sakura followed his lead and tried to get a little higher. In a hideout in the trees, Zabuza laid in rest. His ally watched over him as he healed from his run-in with Hitaki Kakashi. He had done the best he could but he would need to go back outside to get more herbs to speed up the healing. As they spoke, three people entered the room. It was a short man in a business suit who was flanked by two would-be swordsmen. The short man looked at the two with a mocking smirk. So the fearful Kirigakure no Kijin, demon of the mist, comes back a failure? Perhaps your reputation is exaggerated. Gato mocked. Zabuza said nothing and ignored the man. He sneered and walked up to the bed. Hey Zabuza, I'm talking to you. He reached out to poke him when he was held by a strong grip. Gato turned to the teenager who had him in a vice grip. You will not touch Zabuza-sama with your filthy hands. 
the boy warned. Arg, my. Wrist. Gatto groaned. His two bodyguards reached for their swords, but were suddenly facing their weapons as Zabuz's partner had them at their necks. So fast, they both thought. You don't want to mess with me. I'm in a very bad mood. He growled. Haku, that's enough. Zabuza ordered. Haku calmed down and reappeared at his master. Gato growled at the boy but made no moves to do anything. Just get the job done Zabuza. He shouted before leaving to get his hand fixed. His guards followed him after getting their weapons. Alone, Zabuza turned toward Haku. You didn't need to do that Haku. Zabuza said as he motioned to the kunai he held under the covers. I know, but he is scum. I do not think we can trust him. Haku said. Right now, we don't have a choice. We will cross that bridge when we reach it. Now, continue telling me about what you learned about Kakashi and his brats. Zabuza ordered. Yes, Zabuza-sama. Haku said and continued his report. Sakura sat down at the bottom of her tree, tired from all the work she had been doing. She didn't have the stamina that Sasuke or Naruto had. She looked to see that Sasuke had gotten a little higher than before and he was increasing his height with every go. Naruto was doing something much different than what they were doing. He was doing pull-ups with just his fingertips. He also had a pretty big boulder attached to his feet. He was doing this with his chakra and he didn't look all that winded. It was at this point that Sakura came to a realization. She realized how strong Naruto really was. She still thought that he was rude, crass and idiotic, but if it wasn't of him, they wouldn't have done nearly as well as they did against Tsubuza. Sure, she didn't do anything but guard Tazuna, but he thought of the plan that saved Kakashi, and he took out that remaining clone that Tsubuza created. Maybe, he wasn't the idiot that she thought that he was and maybe, he could help her get stronger. They didn't really get along, but that didn't mean that Naruto wouldn't help her if she asked. Gathering her courage and swallowing her pride, she made her way over to Naruto. Hey Naruto, Sakura called out. Naruto stopped his exercise and looked down at Sakura. She took a deep breath and faced him. I was wondering if you can help me increase my chakra pool? The request shocked Naruto that he lost his control of the boulder and his grip. He fell to the ground in a heap and grunted as he hit the ground. Kakashi, who was watching the whole exchange, couldn't help but smile at his team. He could see that Sakura was taking the first step in becoming a true kunoichi. It must have been hard for her when she asked Naruto of all people to help her. Maybe they would become a perfect team after all. What the hell? I ask you for help and you think that I'm on some type of medication? Sakura roared. I'm just saying that because you never really were interested in becoming strong. To tell you the truth, I thought that you were taking something as you really weren't that strong to beginning with. Naruto answered honestly. Shinaro. Sakura exclaimed and bashed Naruto in the head. Then again, they could use a little bit more work. Chapter 12 Naruto was grumbling as he watched over the bridge from a high position. He was regulated to guard duty on Kakashi's orders. He would switch out with Sakura after lunch, but that wasn't what he was so irritated about. He couldn't stand how lazy Kakashi was. After showing his skill with the chakra exercise and even helping Sakura become a better ninja, the guy didn't even give him some other type of training. He had asked for a technique or a new exercise, but he would just wave him off and tell him that he was good right where he was. What kind of answer was that? It did not improve his impression of the jonin and made him even more disrespectful toward him. Naruto sighed and decided not to think about so much. He already had some techniques that he learned from Anko. He wished that she would teach him the Sanaijushu, hidden shadow snake hands, but she was very adamant about him not learning it. She did teach him that Jinjutsu that charmed snakes, which was pretty cool. She did teach him a katan, fire release, technique and he learned a doton, earth release, from a scroll that she gave him. He also learned a technique from Irika which could be useful. 
He had some stuff that he could work on, so he wasn't feeling too mad anymore. Hey kid, I'm breaking for lunch. Tazuna called out to him. All right, I'm on my way down. Naruto said and jumped off his perch. He landed next to the guy and the two left the bridge with others who were also breaking for lunch. Each of them had a clone follow them to protect and observe. After Sakura came to relieve him, Naruto decided to head into the village just to see how things were. He used a henge transformation to move as one of the villagers. What he saw tugged at his heart. He knew that things were bad, but he wasn't prepared to see how badly. He saw that the stories barely had food in them, children were living in the streets, and people's will had been broken. He had stopped a man from stealing, but stopped his justice when the man was in tears. He must have no choice in doing what he did because of what Gatto had done. The more he witnessed, the angrier he got. It took all his willpower not to find Gatto and beat his ass. He couldn't stand it and wanted to do something about. It was then he swore that he would help Tizuna complete his bridge so that it would break the hold that tyrant held on the people of Nami no Kuni, Land of Waves. He left and headed back to Tizuna's house to get some training done. The next day found Sakura in a lot of pain. She was on the ground and groaning in pain. She looked up at Naruto's clone and glared at him. The clone would just grin at her, which pissed her off more. After getting the exercise down and increasing her stamina a bit, Naruto began sparring with her. He said it was so that she could get used to the Kinobori no Shugyo tree climbing practice, without thinking about it, but she felt that this was just a way to torture her for all the things that happened back at the academy. She got up and glared at her sparring partner. He just grinned at her. You managed to stay on the tree's surface for 45 minutes. That's quite an improvement, but unless you can spar with me for an hour, you're not quite ready yet. The clone said. I am going to wipe that stupid smirk off your face. Sakura growled. That's the spirit pinky. Let's see what you got. Naruto said. Sakura prepared to run up to get him. Sakura, a voice stopped her. It belonged to Sasuke. He looked at her for a while and Sakura blushed under the gaze. Can you help me with this exercise? He asked. The clone and Sakura looked at him in surprise. Holy crap, did I just hear that? Did the great Sasuke ask for help? Is it the end of the world? I've got to let Kakashi know that demons are about to enter our dimension. The clone exclaimed frantically. Sasuke glared at Naruto with evil intentions. Shut up clone! Sakura shouted. She turned back to Sasuke. Of course I'll help you Sasuke-kun. Let me show you how it's done. She walked with him toward his tree and began tell him what he need to do. The clone just gagged and decided to practice his taijutsu. Three days would pass during the mission. Kakashi was getting stronger and he would be ready for Zabuza when the week would be up. Naruto was also getting stronger with his training as he had helped a woman out earlier in the day. She decided to give him a manual and a scroll. The manual was a basics in Fuenjutsu, sealing technique, and the scroll was a technique called Daibakufa no Jutsu, great waterfall technique. This excited Naruto as he would get to add something to his arsenal. Sasuke had finally made it up to the top of his tree and had demanded that Naruto spar with him. Naruto would have agreed if he didn't have guard duty in the morning. Sakura was also getting stronger and was so close in defeating Naruto's clone. Everything was going great for Team Kakashi. As they talked and had dinner with Tazuna's family, Inari decided that enough was enough. He slammed his hands on the table and glared at the first person he saw. That person was Naruto. Look at you, laughing and grinning like an idiot. How can you be so stupid? Why are you still here anyway? You're just wasting your time. No one can defeat Gato. Inari shouted. What the hell are you going on about? Is this about your dad, Kaiza? Naruto asked. Two days ago, Inari had left the table when Tazuna mentioned Kaiza. He then explained that Kaiza was the village hero. 
he was a fearless man who believed in the right thing. When Gatto came into town, he was one of few that stood up to him. He was overwhelmed by Gatto and was made an example of to the village when they executed him. The scene had destroyed Inari's belief in heroes. Man, all you've done is whine and bitch about how we're going to die. I'm glad that I'm nothing like you. What do you know? You're nothing but a fool. You don't know anything about pain and suffering. Inari spat loudly. That would be the wrong thing to say to Naruto. Inari found himself slammed against a wall and looking at the coldest blue eyes. When Sakura was going to stop Naruto, she was stopped by one of his kunai, which landed dangerously close to her leg. Naruto glared at the boy with absolute loathing. You're nothing but a coward. You speak of pain and suffering, but you have a mother and a grandfather who love you. There are many within the village who have less than you, and here you are, crying like you've lost more. You haven't lost Jack. What's even worse is that you spit on your grandfather's bravery and on your father's grave. He fought so that you would not have to live like you're living now. Yeah, he died, but he died for your sake. It's the same as you grandfather, but here you are whining and crying. Grow the hell up. Naruto roared. Naruto, that's enough. Release Inari. That's an order. Kakashi said. Naruto sucked his teeth and released Inari. Inari sank to the ground under the gaze of Naruto. The blonde stomped out of the house, slamming the door behind him. Everyone was silent and the tension in the room was thick. Sakura was the first to break that silence. I don't think that I've ever seen Naruto so angry. What do you think set him off? Sakura asked no one in particular. Naruto's has endured more pain and suffering that you can't even image. Kakashi said. Inari wiped his eyes and made his way out of the house. Tsunami made a move to go talk with him, but Kakashi held up his hand. He stood and made his way to speak with Inari. Naruto was breathing hard and glared at the forest that was in front of him. There was some destruction from the jutsu that Naruto had been launching into the forest. He was so damn angry at Inari right now. He could believe that he had the nerve to say that he didn't know about pain and suffering. He suffered since the day he could talk. No one wanted him, no one liked him, and no one cared for him. He was alone for most of his life all because some people couldn't tell the difference between him and the QB. Yeah, he cried about it, but he moved forward and worked to get people to acknowledge him. He didn't wallow in despair and spout nonsense. He clapped his hands hard and began running through those hand seals again. Tora, Tiger, Ashi, Ox, Saru, Monkey, You, Rabbit, Hitsuji, Ram, I, Boar, Ashi, Uma, Horse, Saru, Tora, Inu, Dog, Tora, Me, Snake, Tora, Ashi, Saru, You, Tori, Bird, Swayten Daibakufa no Jetsu. Naruto roared. The water swirled in front of him and shot forward into the forest. The force of the water tore up the ground and ripped off some branches. When the technique died down there was some more damage. Naruto was still pretty angry, so he summoned some clones and had a free-for-all. Kakashi sat next to Inari and waited for the boy to talk. Inari didn't say anything and would sometimes rub where he was grabbed. Does it hurt? Kakashi asked. A little. Inari answered. Sorry about Naruto, he tends to wear his feelings on his sleeves. He's had a hard life since he was born. Kakashi said. What do you mean? Inari asked. Naruto was the only child born on a tragic day in Kanoha. Because of this, he was ignored and bullied by many of the villagers. He was like you in a way, as he would cry and wonder why life was so unfair. Kakashi answered. He doesn't act like it. Inari said. I guess he got tired of crying. He decided to try and make everyone take notice of him. As he got older, he got a few people to notice him and he was happy. He wants you to see that you do have people who notice you and want you to be happy. Kakashi said with an eye smile. 
Inari looked at him and then at the moon. He just sat in silence with Kakashi, keeping him company. The next morning, the household was awake and waiting for breakfast. Everyone was seated at the table with the exception of Naruto. Sakura was a little worried but also pissed at him. I can't believe that idiot stayed out all night. I'm going to find him and give him a piece of my mind. Sakura stated. I'll go and find him. Knowing the idiot, he probably wore himself out training. Sasuke said. He stood and made his way out of the house. Naruto snored loudly as he lay out on the ground. His little battle royal was intense, and he barely got out of it. He blamed Anko as his clones had her sadistic attitude. After winning, he dragged himself to a tree and lay down on it. He had a little bit of chakra and was really tired. He was only going to rest for a few minutes, but ended up sleeping for the night. As he snored, he suddenly awake and had a kunai in his hand. He grabbed someone and slammed them down to the ground. His kunai touched the neck of someone. Naruto was ready to spill some blood when he saw who he had pinned. Naruto was quickly off the person and back leaning against a tree. The person in question sat up and had a blush on her face. Naruto had a blush as well and was now kneeling and bowing at the person, muttering apologies from grabbing her chest. The girl in question was finally able to calm him down so that she could talk. Please, calm down. I'm not angry at you. It was my fault seeing that I attempted to wake you up. By your skills, you are a shinobi, and I should have known better. I accept your apology. She said. Thank you. It's not really my fault because of the tendencies of my Onizen. She usually ambushes me constantly. I'm Naruto, Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto greeted. Nice to meet you Naruto, my name is Haku. Chapter 13 After get everything out of the way, Naruto asked if he could help Haku with what she was doing. She thanked him for the help and the two began to pick herbs. While they did, Haku recognized the little destruction that was created. She looked at Naruto and wondered if this was because of him. Was all that you doing Naruto? Haku asked. Yeah, I was letting out some steam and I was working on this new jutsu. Naruto answered. Wow, that must have been a strong technique. Haku said. Yeah, it's pretty strong. I would explain it but it would just bore you. Naruto said. Probably, I wanted to be a shinobi at one time but I don't really like to kill. I'm too soft to be a shinobi. Haku said. Naruto nodded and the two fell into some light conversation. Haku realized that the boy was not just blurting things out like she hoped. He was definitely more skilled as Zabuza thought. After a while, they had finished picking the herbs and Haku was getting ready to leave. She was walking anyway until she stopped and faced Naruto. May I ask you a question Naruto? Haku asked. Sure. Naruto said. Do you have anyone precious close to you? Haku asked. Say what? Naruto asked. I believe that a person becomes truly strong when they have something or someone precious to protect. I think that it gives us great strength when something or someone we love very much is threatened. Do you have someone that like? Haku asked. Naruto was surprised by the question and thought hard about it. He did have people like that. He thought of Anko, Irika, Kanoamaru, the old man Hokage, and Hinata. Kakashi, Sasuke and Sakura weren't really in his mind yet but he would protect them as he would the others. He smiled as he faced Haku. Yeah, I do have people like that and I would protect them with my life. Naruto said. Then I believe that you will truly become strong. Haku said with a smile. She began to walk away again before stopping again. By the way, I think we need to clear things up. I'm not a girl, I'm actually a boy. With that statement, he walked away. He smirked and could only image the expression on Naruto's face. As he walked, he saw one of the other genin. 
they passed each other without glancing at each other. He continued on his way without pause. Sasuke looked back for a second but didn't think much about it. He then found Naruto. He was confused by the stupid look on his face, but annoyed that he was just standing there like an idiot. He made his way to get his moronic teammate. The week was over. Kakashi was back at full strength, thanks to the medicine that Tsunami was providing. Sakura was battle-ready and could not wait to show her stuff. Sasuke was prepared at well and was excited to fight again. As for Naruto, he was still sleeping soundly. It wasn't a surprise as he was mastering that water jutsu that nearly took out the docks. Sakura looked at the snoring blonde with a sigh. I can't believe that the idiot overtrained. Still, that was a pretty wicked jutsu he learned. Sakura said. He shouldn't really be using such a jutsu. It's an A-rank jutsu that he isn't ready for yet. Kakashi said. I don't know sensei. He looked pretty comfortable with that jutsu. He didn't even look winded after he launched it three times. Sakura commented. Sasuke just frowned at that but didn't comment about the jutsu. It did annoy him though that Naruto had such a jutsu in his arsenal. At best, he could only do C-rank jutsu. Anyway, let's leave him to rest. I'm sure that he'll awake soon and he can watch over the tsunami and Inari. Kakashi said. The group left with Tazuna to go to the bridge. When they got there, Kakashi was suddenly on edge. There was a thin fog that did not look natural. They moved closer and saw some of Tazuna's men on the ground. Tazuna ran to one of them and asked what was wrong. He whispered a demon before passing out. That's when they were hit by an intense killer intent. So, you did survive. Kakashi said. That I did. I noticed that you're missing a brat. You won't be getting so far without him here. Zabuza said. So the mist cleared and showed the team was surrounded by eight Mizu Bunshin, water clone. Your other two don't look like they have changed much. The boy is still shaking like a leaf. I'm shaking. With excitement. Sasuke said with a grin. Sasuke. Sakura. Kakashi barked. Sasuke moved like a blur and cut down six Mizu Bunshin in an instant. Sakura launched two shuriken with amazing speed and deadly accuracy, destroying the last two. They were nothing but puddles now. Kakashi was proud of Sasuke and a little surprised at Sakura. He would have to thank Naruto if they survived this. He turned his attention back to Zabuza who appeared with his partner. Well, well, the brat's got some teeth. It looks like that you have a rival in Speed Haku. Zabuza said. That is does Zabuza-sama. Haku replied. Sasuke stepped forward and glared at the masked teen and looked ready to take him on. Sakura stuck to Tazuna and watched as her sensei and her crush prepare to fight the two nukneen missing neen. Naruto awoke to the sounds of screaming. He was a little groggy but alert. He moved to the window and saw Tsunami was being held by two men dressed as thugs. He saw Inari facing them down and then run at the two who were holding his mother. Naruto quickly moved into action. Just as the two men drew their swords, he grabbed Inari and replaced them with two logs. He then appeared next to Tsunami and put Inari down. The two swordsmen turned to face the three people. What the? I thought that those shinobi would be the bridge. The man with skull cap asked. I guess they left him behind to guard the family. The man with the eye patch and tattoo answered. Naruto glared at the two as he processed what they said. If they were here to kidnap the family, it meant that Zabuza was attacking the bridge right now. He would get to his team later as he had to deal with the problem in front of him. It doesn't matter if they left a ninja here. He's just a kid. He's probably the weakest of the group. The eye patch man said. Naruto faced him and grinned. Like a snake striking at something, Naruto threw a shuriken at him. 
It was lodged into his sword hand, forcing him to drop his blade. As he cried out in pain, Naruto was on him, slamming his knee into his neck. The man gasped as he dropped to his knees, grabbing the side of his neck. Waraji! His partner roared. He looked at Naruto and brought his blade across quickly. Naruto used the Kawarimi, body replacement, to escape. The man growled but that soon turned into pain as he was struck by five kunai, two in the back of his knees, one in his shoulder joint, one in the elbow and the last one in his kidney. They both were on the ground, gasping and bleeding. They heard the sounds of rushing water and turned to see a torrent of water coming at them. They were both swept up by the water and sent deep within the forest. Naruto looked at the two clones that he created to watch the family. They nodded and made their way into the forest. Naruto walked up to the mother and son. He looked at Inari for a while before smiling. Well, maybe you have a pair after all. Naruto said. Naruto put on his clothes and readied himself for battle. His clones returned, letting him know that the two were nowhere to be found. Naruto really couldn't concern himself with them as his team needed him at the bridge. Besides, the guy he need in the neck and the other he launched his kunai at would need immediate attention so they wouldn't be returning. He secured the house with traps, before getting ready to go. He looked at the family and gave them a serious glance. He pulled out a kunai and gave it to Tsunami. I hope that you don't need to use it but it's just a precaution. I'm heading to the bridge now. Naruto said. As he turned to leave, Inari called out to him. Naruto turned and faced him. I, I'm sorry, about what I said. Inari, said. Don't sweat it, I'm just glad that you realized that sometimes you got to put your life on the line if you want to survive. You've made your father proud today. Naruto said with a grin. He opened the door and took off to the bridge. He ran at top speed, hoping that everyone was okay. Things couldn't be more wrong at the moment for Team Kakashi. At first it looked like that everything was going their way. Sasuke, with his new control of chakra, was able to match the older boy in terms of speed. Kakashi was doing his best against Tsubuza and believed that he would be able to defeat him. Sakura was guarding Tazuna and was confident that she could. That's when everything changed in an instant. Zabuza thickened the mist around him and Kakashi. When this happened, Kakashi could not tell where Zabuza was coming from with his Sharingan. This is why he was stabbed in the hand by Zabuza's kunai. The man smirked as he told Kakashi that he knew the weakness of his Sharingan, thanks to his tool, Haku. He explained what Haku explained to him and Kakashi was worried. Sensing his worry, he told him that the brat who was fighting Haku would soon be in the same situation as he was because of Haku's ability. That ability of Haku was a Kekiai Genkai, which allowed the teen to create ice out of thin air. Sasuke was now on the defensive as he was nearly skewered by needles of ice. What really worried the young Echiha was that he did that with just one hand, creating one-handed seals. He then did another seal and Sasuke was suddenly concealed in a dome of mirrors made of ice. Haku called this Jetsu Makyo Hayosho, demonic mirroring ice crystals. Sasuke watched as Haku merged with the mirrors and appeared all around him. That's when Sasuke was bombarded with Senban at an incredible speed. He screamed out as he was attacked from all directions. Kakashi and Sakura were helpless as they couldn't move to help him. That's when everything got chaotic as multiple explosions rocked the bridge. The explosion dispelled some of the mist. Within the smoke, Zabuza heard the sounds of metal flying at him and blocked it with his sword. He then swung his blade and sliced the airborne Naruto in two. He continued his swing and brought it down on another Naruto who was coming at him for the smoke, splitting him in two. He let out a vicious back fist and caught another Naruto that nearly stabbed him. All three dispelled into smoke, signaling that they were clones. Haku was looking for an attacker when two kunai whizzed into the dome next to Sasuke. It exploded, consuming Sasuke and the Dun in a dark smoke. Haku was surprised that someone would just kill their own comrade in cold blood. 
When the smoke cleared, he was surprised to see that Sasuke was gone and not a trace of blood or body parts. He looked around and saw that Sasuke was fine. He was with his teammates, being looked over by the pink-haired Kunoichi. The blonde had surrounded them with clones, with one of them standing in the front. When all the chaos was done, everyone was wondering what was going on. Zabuza was the first to break the silence. So the Wonder Brat arrives? That was pretty clever of you keeping my attention while you got your teammate. Zabuza commented. You're just as I thought you were. Sending thugs to get you a bargaining chip is pretty low. Naruto commented. What the hell are you talking about? Zabuza asked. Don't play dumb. You sent two swordsmen to capture Tazuna's daughter and son. Well, it didn't work and they are either probably dead or dying. Naruto answered. Zabuza looked concerned about what he just said. What was God of thinking about sending thugs after the old man's family? Zabuza-sama, we should stick to the plan. I will handle the genin. Haku said. Very well, I leave them to you. Zabuza said, before doing a signal seal. Everyone watched as the mist rolled in again. Haku and Naruto faced off against each other, both ready to fight. I commend you on your planning. I will take you seriously for here on end. Haku said. I'm glad to hear that because if you don't, I'm going to rip you apart. Naruto said. Two prepared to rush each other as the battle of the bridge continued. Chapter 14 Naruto and Haku stared at each other. Naruto flicked out two kunai and held them in a reverse grip. He got into a stance and prepared to charge. Sakura, I need to help the team. I'm going to need his help soon. I should be able to hold him off until then. My clones would cover you all right? Naruto said. Yeah, I get it. Kick his ass, Naruto. Sakura said. That's my plan. Naruto shouted and charged at Haku. Haku slipped out some Sinbon and engaged Naruto. Sakura and Sasuke couldn't really see because of the mist, but they could hear the sounds of metal connecting. Within the mist, Naruto was doing his best to fight Haku. Haku had to admit that he was doing pretty well. Naruto was able to keep from getting hit with his Sinbon. He didn't know how, but he was able to avoid his attacks and counter with his own. Naruto patted himself on the back for the secret training he did. He trained himself to fight in the mist, because it was Zabuza's main strategy. After not getting any help from Kakashi, Naruto found a fogged area and had his clones attack him from within it. He only had a week, but it paid off as he was able to feel the attacks coming. He flicked the kunai and stabbed at Haku. Haku moved but the sight of the kunai nicked his mask. He tried to hit him in the neck, but Naruto ducked it. His leg snapped forward and caught Haku in the gut. He tried to cut him with the other kunai, but Haku caught his wrist and elbowed him. Naruto twisted with the blow and countered with a kick. Haku blocked it but was pushed back. Back to his feet, he charged again at Haku. They were once again engaged in battle. Sasuke was growling and looking into the mist. He kept fidgeting as he wanted to get back into the fight. Sakura, hurry up! Sasuke exclaimed. I'm sorry Sasuke-kun, but I don't know what will happen if I remove this Sinbon quickly. It might cause some major damage. Sakura explained. I don't care. Just get these damn needles out of me. Sasuke shouted. Hey, keep quiet kid. Doesn't that Jonin know how to hear us through the mist? What if he kills us if we're not silent? Tazuna whispered harshly. Sasuke glared at him but kept quiet after that. He wanted to get back into the fight and show this fake Oinen, Hunter Neen, just who the better opponent was. Kakashi and Zabuza backed away from each other. They got ready for another go when they listened to the sounds coming from the mist. Zabuza, whose eyes were closed, couldn't help but smirk at what he was hearing. Ha, ha, I thought that the Uchiha had grown, but it just goes to show you that he's still a wannabe. 
not that other student of yours, he might be a great ninja one day. A shame that his life will end against Haku. Zabuza said. You underestimate my little Genin. If anything, your Haku should be worried about Naruto. He really doesn't know the meaning of the word restraint. Kakashi said. Is that something that he learned for his real sensei? Zabuza said with amusement. Kakashi had a small twitch after hearing that. We'll just have to see how well he does. I know your other genin will not have the same success. Zabuza entered the mist and vanished from view. Kakashi was confused until he realized what he was taking about. Naruto's clones were alert and sensed that someone was coming from behind them. They launched a few shuriken in that direction, alerting the others. They heard nothing but were on edge. That was a nice guess kid. Zabuza said from behind. Zabuza wiped them out with a swing of his sword. He continued his momentum and was about to bring it down onto Zuna, Sakura and Sasuke. The blade came down and was intercepted by Kakashi. The force behind the blow nearly drove him to a knee but he was able to stop the blade. Zabuza smirked and quickly pulled the blade toward him. Kakashi winced as the sharp edge cut his forearm. Naruto's remaining clones came and joined his sensei. Zabuza just laughed and melted back into the mist. Sakura was trying to get her breathing under control as that moment scared her. She turned back to Sasuke, who was also very scared. She also noticed that something was up with his eyes. They were red. One eye had one tome in it and the other had two. She was curious as to what it was. Sasuke Kuen, there's something wrong with your eyes. Sakura said. Sasuke looked at her with confusion until he could see how Sakura's chakra was flowing. The only way he could see that was because he had activated his Kekiai Genkai, blood limit. He had finally activated the Sharingan. Smiling to himself, he ripped out the remaining needles and ran into the mist, ignoring Sakura's protest. Naruto and Haku were locked in a stalemate. His kunai were grinding against his senban. Despite the height advantage, Naruto was holding his ground against Haku. The battle had not gone in either of their favors since beginning. Haku attempted to get Naruto back within the Dome of Mirrors, but he saw right through the ploy and stuck to the outside. Haku changed tactics and entered his mirrors, attacking from within them. Naruto summoned his clones and tried to attack Haku from the outside but it proved to be worthless. That's when he began to do hand seals and use the Sui Ten Daibakufu of no jutsu, water release great waterfall technique. The jutsu smashed one of Haku's mirrors, sending him in a whirlspin. He quickly got to the top mirror and survived. He quickly had to block Naruto's attempt to kill him and now the two were locked in a battle of wills. You are definitely skilled Kanoha ninja. I was not expecting that. Haku said. If you think that was amazing, then you're going to love what I have in store for you next. Naruto said with an ankle-like grin. That's when the two suddenly had to move as a fireball landed where they were. As he was jumping away, Naruto was struck by several senban and hit the ground with a thud. He looked up to see that Haku was back in his remaining mirrors. He rolled out of the way as several more Senban attempted to get him. As he rolled, he watched as Sasuke entered the Dome of Mirrors. Hey, I'm your opponent now! Sasuke exclaimed and fired a fireball at one of the remaining mirrors. It hit the mirror, but it did little to break it. Haku attacked the boy, but Sasuke was quicker, deflecting all of the Senban. Haku was curious about this and launched from all areas. Sasuke was still able to keep up and deflected most of the needles. Haku was get frustrated when he noticed his eyes were similar like Kakashi. He then remembered who this boy was. Sasuke was extremely happy at having his Sharingan. With it, he could easily defeat his foe. He wouldn't have to be saved by Naruto. He stood and waiting for Haku's next attack. So you have finally awakened your eyes? I commend you for activating them. However, they will not help you. Allow me to show you. Haku said and began another barrage of Senban. 
What was different about this attack was that it was coming in groups and different types of speed. Sasuke was still able to deflect and dodge, but it became much harder for him. He was struck in the legs, shoulder, and arm. He dropped to a knee and Haku launched another barrage. Kage Bunshin no Jetsu. Naruto shouted and several clones jumped into the fray. Haku attacked them and was able to dispel several of them. Three of them surrounded Sasuke and guarded him. Naruto stood and summoned some more clones. Haku cursed as the clones attacked from within and outside. He could feel his chakra draining trying to keep this jutsu activate. His earlier fight with Naruto wasn't helping. He needed to end this now. Sasuke looked at the clones with a snarl. What do you think you're doing Dobe? Sasuke asked. What am I thinking? What the hell are you thinking team? How stupid do you have to be to run into the opponent's jutsu? You think because you have your Sharingan that you're unbeatable? Get your head out of your ass and think. We need to work together or he's going to kill us. Naruto shouted. Sasuke snarled but did not argue with him. Haku fired another set of Sinban at them and the two with the clones began to move. Sasuke kept his eyes of Haku and was able to still keep track of him and pointed it out to Naruto. Naruto would launch Shuriken and Kanai at Haku would barely dodge. Haku would counter but they were able to avoid it. He was getting very tired and he needed to at least take one of them out. He decided that it would be Sasuke. With the water that Naruto used in his jutsu gave Haku an idea. That's when he came out of the mirror doing one-handed seals. Hijitsu Sensatsu Susho, Secret Technique Thousand Flying Water Needles of Death. Haku called out. The water took the form of a thousand needles. Haku directed the needles to eliminate all of Naruto's clones. Some of them hit the original Naruto and he was dropped to a knee. Haku charged at him, attempting to finish him off. While he did not like him, Sasuke did not wish death upon him. He jumped in the way of Haku's charge, but that's what Haku wanted. He launched Senban that connected all over Sasuke's body, but Sasuke was still able to knock Haku away. Naruto watched in horror as Sasuke hit the ground with a thud. Sasuke! Naruto shouted and made his way over to him. He could see that Sasuke was in bad shape. You stupid moron, what were you thinking jumping in like that? I told you to think before you did anything. That's just like you dobe. I save your life and you do nothing but bitch. Sasuke said. He coughed a little and felt himself go a little cold. Damn it, it wasn't supposed to be this way. I was supposed to kill my brother for his betrayal. I can't. Believe. I died. Because. My. Body. Betrayed. Me. With those last words, Sasuke's eyes closed. Sasuke? Sasuke? Naruto shouted. He shook Sasuke's body, but he did not wake up. Haku stood and looked at the two. Is this the first time that you have seen a friend die? You should be thankful to him for saving your life. He truly died as a shinobi. Haku said. Died as a shinobi? Are you saying that he should proud about the way he died? Naruto snarled. A very potent and evil chakra began to leak out of Naruto. Haku looked at it with some concern. What was a leak suddenly exploded into an outpour of chakra. While the normal color of chakra was blue, this chakra was red. It surrounded Naruto and covered him like a shield. What is this chakra? It's so vile and full of bloodlust. I can barely stand it. Haku thought. That's when Naruto raised his head and looked right at Haku. The once kind blue eyes were now red and filled with malice. He put Sasuke down and took a few steps forward. Haku watched as his features changed into something more animalistic. He released an inhuman roar which made his chakra skyrocket. Within the mist, the two jonin were now concerned about the vile chakra that they were feeling. 
Kakashi knew that chakra while Zabuza was confused. Is this Kakashi's doing? No, not even he could put this much chakra. What the hell is going on? Zabuza thought. Did the seal break? No, it looks like it has just loosened enough for him to use its chakra. Still, what could have caused it? I need to finish this now and get over there. Kakashi thought. Back with the two, Naruto was pouring out more and more of the vile chakra. He glared at Haku with nothing but hate. We might not have been friends, but he had an ambition. Now, he can't complete it and you think that he should be proud by the way he died? Well then, I hope that you feel the same way because when I get through with you, you'll be joining him. Get ready to die. Naruto roared and charged at Haku with the intent to kill. Chapter 15 Haku quickly jumped into a mirror as Naruto charged at him. With one punch, Naruto shattered the mirror. Surprised, Haku didn't block the kick that was thrown by Naruto. It sent the teen flying into another mirror. Haku quickly shook the cobwebs out just in time to get out of Naruto's way. He disappeared into a mirror and surrounded Naruto. He then launched a barrage of Senban at Naruto. They struck the blonde but it did not drop him. He roared and forced the needles out of him. Haku was surprised and shocked at the hate and malice in his chakra. Having enough, Naruto did some hand seals. Katan Ryuka no Jutsu Fire release dragon fire technique, Naruto roared. He was surrounded by a dome of flame before the fire split up into several dragons. Because of the chakra of the Kyubi, the fire was much more intense and strong enough to smash through the ice mirrors. Haku was able to escape the attack and landed away from his former dome. He then felt a sudden chill. He lashed out with a senban, but his wrist was caught by Naruto. Spinning him around, Naruto drove his fist into Haku's gut. He gasped, but he wasn't able to register it because he was smashed in the face. He was sent flying a few feet before being stomped on. Naruto flicked out a kunai and was about to bring it down onto the prone body but suddenly stopped himself. The punch that he landed on his face smashed the mask into pieces. It revealed a familiar face to the blonde. Haku coughed up some blood before looking at the boy. Why did you stop your assault? Haku asked weakly. What? What the hell are you doing here? Naruto asked demandingly. I would think that the answer is self-explanatory. Haku said. He moved, making Naruto react and bat away the senban. He threw another kunai and caught Haku in the leg as he moved out of the way. Haku pulled out the kunai and looked at Naruto. You are quite good Naruto. Zabuza-sama was right about you. Enough of the bullshit, Haku. Why are you here? Tell me. Naruto demanded. Haku looked at him and began his story. Zabuza was waiting in the mist as he looked for Kakashi. That vile chakra that he felt earlier was now gone and he could barely feel Haku's chakra. He was a little worried about that. The blonde kid was very skilled and could probably match Haku in skill. Still, he needed to concentrate on the task at hand. He could hear the heartbeat of one of Kakashi's brats that was near another heartbeat, which he assumed was the old man. He could hear Kakashi's ragged breathing and smirked. It seems that that wound he gave him was affecting him. He believed that it was time to end this fight. Suddenly, he heard Kakashi's voice and something being slammed onto the ground. Kuchios Dotan Suga no Jetsu. Summoning Earth Release Tracking Fong Technique, Kakashi said. Zabuza was confused by what he was doing. He suddenly heard the rumbling of ground below him. He moved his foot as a pair of teeth came out of the ground. He wasn't fast enough to avoid the other pair of fangs that dug into his ankle. He was then bitten several more times, two in each ankle, one in his knee, one in his thigh, one in his forearm and one on his shoulder. He was restrained and could not move. He was in pain but he looked around to see that he was being restrained by dogs. What? How? Zabuza hissed. You're not the only one who can see in the mist Zabuza. 
my mean Ken, ninja hounds, can track you as well. All they needed was the blood that you have on your blade. Kakashi said. Zabuza growled. He couldn't move because the dogs would tear him apart. The mist began to clear and Zabuza could see Kakashi. I believe it is time to end this. Zabuza watched as he did some hand seals and put his palm toward the ground. That's when Kakashi's chakra was being shown. This shocked Zabuza who watched it with a little fear. Lightning was arcing from his hand and it was blaring loudly. What is this? I can actually see his chakra. Zabuza thought. Kakashi looked at Zabuza with a serious glare. Like I said before, your future is death. Kakashi said. I'm sick of your bullshit. I don't care what your stupid monkey eye could do you can't tell me the future. Zabuza snarled. You went too far Zabuza. Your ambition was too great and because of it you had to attach yourself to scum like Gato. Tazuna's dream will not be stopped by you or Gato because he is doing things for his country. A dangerous person like yourself would not know anything about that. That's why I can show you no more mercy. You're about to die Zabuza so this country can live. Kakashi lectured before charging at Zabuza with amazing speed. He reared his hand back and prepared to kill Zabuza. Naruto and Haku stood in front of each other. Naruto could not believe how harsh Haku's life was. He couldn't even compare to what he went through. While he never knew his parents, he would have never thought that they would kill him just because he had a Kekiai Genkai. To hear how the life of every Kekiai Genkai user in Kirigakure was just shocking and it made his familiarize with Haku. He couldn't judge Haku for his connection to Zabuza as it was somewhat similar to his relationship with Anko. So, now you know why? Now, I need you finish what you started. I am a broken tool and I am no use to Zabuza-sama. You must end my life. Haku said. I get where you're coming from Haku but I'm not going to kill you in cold blood. Naruto snarled. Why not? Are you too soft to take a life? Does the death of your comrade not enrage you? Haku taunted. No, you're too kind-hearted to kill. I bet that's he's in the same state that you put Zabuza in. I'm not going to kill you Haku. Convince Zabuza to surrender and maybe we can do something. Naruto pleaded. Haku smiled at him but turned serious when he felt a spike of chakra. It wasn't Zabuza so he knew that it was Kakashi. He turned to Naruto. I wish we had met under different circumstances, Naruto. We could have been very good friends. Goodbye. Haku said before he vanished. Naruto cursed and made his way over to where he believed Haku was going. Kakashi looked at the situation with surprise. Blood was splattered over his face but it was not the blood of Momochi Zabuza. His dogs were forcefully removed from Zabuza with a bunch of Sinban. A mirror of ice was between the two jonin and a body was there as well. It was Haku who had blood running down his mouth. He had a smile on his face and a grip on Kakashi's arm, preventing it from going farther into his chest. Za. Buzie. Sama. Haku whispered. Zabuza's shock turned into a vicious smirk. That's my tool. You are always the best. Zabuza said before grabbing his blade. Kakashi reacted quickly and jumped away from Zabuza who just missed. Zabuza looked ready to push his advantage until he was struck in his knees, kidneys, shoulders and elbows. He dropped to his knees and was gasping at the pain he was in. He turned to the direction the attack came from and was facing a very angry Naruto. Kakashi was surprised as well at the shuriken that was lodged into the joints of the Kiri swordsman. You bastard. He gave his life for you and you try to cut his dead body in half just to kill Kakashi? Naruto snarled. You don't deserve the love that he gave you. Heh, so he wasn't able to kill you. He must have gotten connected to you and didn't fight with everything he had. I guess he failed after all. Zabuza scoffed. Naruto's killing intent spiked and looked like he wanted to rip his head off. 
That's when he heard laughter. Everyone turned to see Gato standing in front an army of bandits. Well, look at the baby demon? Taken down by a little kid, how pathetic. Gato mocked. Everyone laughed as Zabuza got to his feet. What is this Gato? Zabuza demanded. Well, I figure that you are too expensive to keep on my payroll. I decided to just kill you and do the job myself. I'll cash in on your bounty. Gato said with a smug smirk. He then looked at the dead body of the boy Kakashi laid down. I guess I owe you a thank you for killing that brat. Stupid little shit broke my arm and I won't get to pay him back. You little son of a bitch, Naruto growled and was prepared to charge at the little bastard but Zabuza stepped in his path. Naruto was about to shout at the man before he watched him grab his sword. Naruto was surprised by this because he saw that his shuriken was still lodged in his joints. He shouldn't have been able to even stand. Zabuza saw his eyes and grunted. Next time, you should use kunai as they go deeper than shuriken. Zabuza said. I'll remember that the next time. What the hell are you planning now? If you think I'm going down, then you're as stupid as you look. Naruto said. The statement made Zabuza chuckle. I like your attitude, kid. Whoever taught you did a really go job. Anyway, the little troll is mine to kill. Zabuza said. Naruto looked surprised at that. He gave Naruto a look. Don't get the wrong idea brat, I ain't doing this for Haku. He was soft, not meant for the ninja world. I'm doing this so it will be memorized into your mind what a true shinobi is. Get ready kid, you're about to see why I'm called the Kirigakure no Kijin, Demon of the Mist. He turned his attention back to Gato and his army. He moved forward slowly, picking up speed as he went. Naruto watched as Zabuza tore into the bandits with his blade. Naruto had to concede that Zabuza was right. He would memorize this day. Naruto sat in front of the grave of Momochi Zabuza and Haku. The Kobikirubocho, decapitating carving knife, was used as Zabuza's headstone while a wooden cross draped with Haku's brown sash. Naruto watched the graves for a while before he spoke. You know Haku, I finally understand why you did what you did. I wasn't because you owe him it was because he was important to you. He took you from your hellish life and gave you a purpose. I can see why you cared for him and why you saved him from Kakashi in that last moment. The same thing happened to me not too long ago when my favorite teacher took a shuriken in the back for me. He must really care for me as you did for Zabuza. While the no-brow said some stuff I didn't like, in the end, he showed that he cared for you a lot. I bet you were smiling at that. Naruto said and laughed for a bit. He stayed quiet for a few moments before he spoke again. You know, I think I'm going to create a nindo, a ninja way for myself. I don't think that we're tools or demons. We're humans and we have the will to never give up. I learned that from the both of you. Zabuza may have been an ass, but he never gave up on going back to your village and taking control of it. You swore to protect Zabuza and you did just that. My Nindo, I'm not gonna run away and I never go back on my word. That'll be my Nindo. Naruto said with pride. He then stood up and looked at the graves. Well, I have to go and pack. We leave in the morning now that the bridge is done. I hope to see you soon, but not too soon. With that said, Naruto made his way back to Tazuna's house. Kakashi was reading his book while his students were packing up their things. With the bridge complete, it was time to get back to Kanoha. It had been a few tense days since the fight on the bridge. He was glad that everyone got out of that situation with only a few bruises and cuts. He was very happy that Sasuke was alive and only put in a death like state. Either way, everything had gone well and it was time to get back home. He turned when he heard the door open and in came Naruto. He guessed that Naruto was visiting the graves of Zabuza and Haku. He attempted to greet Naruto but the blonde just scoffed and made his way upstairs to pack. He sighed and wondered what the blonde's problem with him was. 
he had gotten very cold to him and Sasuke. His attitude toward Sasuke was deserved when he demanded that Naruto teach him that sway ton, water release, jutsu. It wasn't something to do since Naruto was thanking him for saving his life. However, his attitude toward him was something he didn't understand. He racked his brain, wondering what he did. He didn't like this attitude of his student and made a note to talk to Anko about it. Chapter 16 Kakashi decided to stop for the day. He led the team off the road and into a secluded spot. He did this so that he could get to the bottom of the attitude of one of his genin. Since leaving Nami no Kuni, Land of Waves, Naruto had gone out of his way to ignore him and Sasuke. He was also very insubordinate to his orders and just downright mean to Sasuke. While Sasuke did deserve it, he could have been a team player and helped him out some. He was not that way to Sakura, which surprised him. The two still argued but they were friendlier to each other and helped one another improve. He wasn't against it but he had grown tired of Naruto's attitude toward him and his other teammate. Okay, let's change things up. Sasuke, you go and get us some fish, while Sakura goes and get us some firewood. Naruto, you set up the security around the area. Kakashi said. Hi. They said and went to do their duties. After a while and making sure that the other two were far enough, Kakashi decided to act. Naruto, we need to talk. Kakashi said. Oh yeah, what about? Naruto asked. It's about your current attitude. I don't know why you are acting like this, but it has become a problem. Kakashi said. So, my attitude is the problem? Maybe, it's your lack of being a sensei that's the problem. Naruto replied. What is that supposed to mean? Kakashi asked. Naruto glared at his sensei before remembered what he saw back in Nami no Kuni. Flashback. Naruto was coming back from his training. It was all he could do since he was rejected again by his sensei. He did know what Kakashi's issue was, but he was starting to get sick of it. It wasn't just him, but it was Sakura as well. She was starting to take her training a little more seriously. All he told her to do was to work on her chakra control. It was a slap to her face in his opinion. Seeing that she liked books and all, he gave her the manual with basic fuinjutsu, sealing technique. She took to it pretty easy, and he saw some merit in her learning it. Still, he was pretty upset with Kakashi. As he continued his walk, he heard voices. He quietly sneaked up and saw Kakashi with Sasuke. Kakashi was sparring with him and teaching him things. Kakashi stopped him for a second and the two settled down. That wasn't bad Sasuke. You're get used to the Sharingan and its power. I'm impressed that you've done so well in three days. Kakashi said. So when are you going to teach me that jutsu that Naruto knows? Sasuke asked. We've been over this Sasuke. Naruto's chakra is larger than yours so he can handle it. You don't have the chakra to use that jutsu. Just keep working on increasing your chakra and I will teach it to you someday. What about the jutsu I showed you earlier? You can use it in many ways. Kakashi said. Naruto had heard enough and quickly left the area. He was so angry at what he heard that he needed to punch something. Present. Kakashi looked at the eyes of an angry Naruto and cursed. He calmed himself and tried to explain as best he could to Naruto. Look Naruto, as someone with the Sharingan, I am the best to teach Sasuke how to use his Kekiai Genkai. He doesn't have a family to teach him, so I must give most of my time to help him improve. Kakashi explained. So what, me and Sakura get put in the rear, just because he has a pair of eyes that copies everyone's hard work? That's nothing but an excuse. Naruto spat. Listen Naruto, Kakashi said. No, you listen. You have three students, not one. You can't just push two of us aside just because the team activated his eyes. It is blatant favoritism and you know it. Sakura has excellent control so why don't you teach her some jinjutsu? 
I have the chakra of a jonin, so why don't you teach me some ninjutsu? You might be the only one who can teach Sasuke, but that doesn't mean you can make excuses on why you abandoned me and Sakura. You're not just a lazy sensei, you're a bad sensei as well. Naruto shouted. He quickly left and went back to what Kakashi told him to do. Kakashi was not happy about what had just happened. He couldn't believe the nerve of Naruto to call him out like that. He couldn't argue that Naruto was wrong, but he didn't like the fact that he said so to his face. He had never been talked to like that, especially from a genin. He sighed and decided to confront Anko about this. He only hoped that she would do something about it. Kakashi began his search for Anko as soon as he was out of the Hokage's office. The rest of the trip home was in total silence. Naruto continued to ignore him and Sasuke, Sakura and Naruto continued to talk to each other and Kakashi was still a little angry. After dismissing his team and giving his report, he immediately seeked her out. It didn't take too long to find her as she was either at her favorite tea shop or hassling Irika. Lucky for him, she was eating dango and drinking tea. He walked up to her and caught her attention. Oh Kakashi, you're back already? Anko said. We need to talk Anko. Kakashi said seriously. Anko gave him a critical eye before nodded. He led her out of the tea shop and to somewhere more private. Once there, Kakashi faced her. So what's on your mind? Anko asked. I have to ask that you talk to Naruto. His attitude is unacceptable and a deterrent to the team. Kakashi stated. What are you talking about? Yeah, he has issues with authority, but Naruto isn't someone to do something that would hurt the team. Anko explained. His issue of questioning his superior's methods is hurting the team. What I do is for the good of the team and he needs to understand that. I know that you like the question people and I don't need another Anko on my squad. Kakashi said. Okay, first of all. Be happy that you have a second me on your team, because I am awesome. Secondly, if Naruto questions your methods, then he either has a good reason to do so. I've taught him to always look at things for different angles. If he sees something wrong, then he's going to call you out on it, despite your rank. Anko said. Just get him under control Anko. Kakashi stated and vanished via Shunshin. Anko did not like the fact that she was just blown off like that. She was curious as to what happened on that mission. Naruto had just finished unpacking his equipment and decided to relax for a bit. He would not get his wish as he was suddenly tackled from behind. He wrestled with his attacker until he got pinned. His face was in between someone's thighs and they were starting to crush his head. He refused to open his eyes, because he had been in a similar situation and was very embarrassed by it. Damn it Anko, get off me! Naruto growled. Anko chuckled before releasing him. Naruto sat up and rubbed his cheeks while Anko raided his fridge. Hey, where's my sake? Anko asked. I got rid of it. I'm underage and I can't have that stuff here. Naruto said. Spoil sport, luckily I keep a stash around here. Anko said. She grabbed a small bottle and a saucer before moving over to Naruto's living room. She sat down and took off her trench coat and poured her some of the liquid. Naruto did the same and sat down across from her. So, I was visited by a very upset Kakashi earlier. Apparently, he's upset with how you're acting. Care to tell me what happened? He actually complained to you? Anko nodded and Naruto sucked his teeth. Wow, he's a bigger baby than I thought. All I said to him is that he was a bad sensei because he has ignored me and Sakura when it comes to training. Naruto said. Well, he does have the Sharingan and he is the only one who can help the Uchiha brat. Anko said. That's no excuse for ignoring me or Sakura. Sakura is finally taking her training seriously, and she even asked him for help, and he ignores her. We could have been killed on that mission because of his lack of training and attention. Naruto argued. What happened on this mission Naruto? Anko asked. 
Naruto went into detail about what happened on the mission. Some of the things he was telling her were very surprising and upsetting. She couldn't believe that Kakashi had taken such an unprepared team into such a situation. When it got to the fight he had with the enemy, she noticed that he was kind of hesitant to talk about it. He, however, told her about the battle and the feeling that went through him when he got angry. At the end of it, the two fell into a comfortable silence. Anko understood why he was so hesitant in telling her. It seems that Naruto had tapped into the chakra of the Kyubi no Yoko, nine-tailed demon fox. She didn't know how the seal on Naruto worked, but she assumed that it was designed for him to use. She looked at the boy who called her his sister. It seemed that he didn't know what he did when he was in his rage, but he felt that something was wrong with what he felt. She didn't know what she could say to him that would snap him out of his funk. She decided to go with her gut. So, do you feel that you're a monster? She asked. What? No, no I don't. I'm just... Confused. I can't really remember what I did, but I remember that feeling. I just wanted to destroy everything and everyone. I just don't want to have that feeling again. I don't know what I would do if I hurt one of my friends. Naruto said. Anko did understand because she had similar thoughts when she was younger. She moved over to Naruto and gave the blonde a one-armed hug. Naruto was a little confused by the action. Anko sensed his confusion. Don't worry, I'm not tricking you. Just be warned that if this gets out, I'll get you like a fish. Clear? Anko said. Crystal. Naruto said with a gulp. Look, I can tell you a lot of things Naruto, but nothing I say will help with how you feel. All you have to do is train harder than before and make sure that this never happens again. I know that you can do it because I believe in your strength. Anko said. Naruto smiled, a genuine smile, at her words. Thanks Wanisan, big sister. Naruto said. No problem, Otudo, little brother. Anko said. Naruto was walking around with Sakura. He had invited her to join him at Ikaraku's after she was rejected by Sasuke. Naruto was a little put off by her sour mood and sighed at her behavior. Are you really going to mope all the way to Ikaraku's? You aren't going to kill my mood for ramen just because you're sad about the team. Naruto said. Oh shut up Naruto. You don't know how it feels to hear someone call you useless. Sakura said. Naruto gave her a look and she sighed. Okay, maybe you do, but I'm still feeling bad. Well, you shouldn't feel bad. The team doesn't know what he's talking about. You've come a long way since Nami no Kuni. You're starting to take your training seriously, you're pretty good with the few injutsu stuff and that genjutsu that you created, that can deal some real damage to anyone who isn't expecting it. Hell, I wouldn't be surprised if you dominate Eno in a spar. Naruto said. His words made her smile. Sakura had taken her training seriously, and surprisingly, Naruto had helped her get stronger. She thought that he wouldn't, but he stuck with her and helped her grow. Thanks Naruto, I needed to hear that. Now, can you tell me what your problem is with Kakashi-sensei and Sasuke-kun? I can see why you have issues with Sasuke-kun. How he's acting toward you is wrong. Still, what's your issue with Kakashi-sensei? Sakura asked him. It was something that nagged her since they got back to together after taking a few days off. A couple of days after they got back together, Naruto refused to call Kakashi-sensei. He was still respectful and called him Taicho, Captain, but she could see that Kakashi was not happy about it. His issue with Sasuke, she could understand after Naruto pulled out a new jutsu called Dotondoria Taiga, Earth Release Earth Flow River. Sasuke did not hide his intent to copy his jutsu. Naruto was so upset that he nearly turned Sasuke into a cut-up tissue. Sakura actually defended Naruto's actions and blamed Sasuke for the event. Look, you can call Kakashi-sensei if you want, but until he actually teaches something to us, you can forget me calling him that. Naruto stubbornly said. 
Sakura sighed and the two just continued their trek to Ikarakus. Unknown to them, another challenge was about to befall them. Chapter 17 Anko walked toward the Hokage office for the meeting that was going to take place. She didn't know why she was going to be there. She was already the examiner of the second part of the exam. The good part was that it was going to be in her backyard. Oh how she was going to enjoy the screams of hopeful Chunin that would be going through her forest. Speaking of enjoying something, she caught sight of her favorite Chunin and decided to greet him. Irika jumped when he felt a hand squeeze his ass. He turned to see who it was and was immediately pinned by Anko's body. Hey there Irika, Anko said in a sultry voice. She took a small sniff of him. Don't you smell nice? Hey Anko. Irika greeted with a stutter. Anko gave him a small pout. Why so nervous? She moved in closer to his ear. I don't bite unless you want me to. Anko whispered to him. Irika turned bright red and Anko grinned like a predator. She was suddenly pulled off him by a black-haired woman with red eyes. Hey! Anko said. That's enough of that. No need for you to molest the man. Karina said. I was just greeting him. Anko whined. If you are done molesting my poor instructor Anko, Hiruzen said causing some men to snicker and a few giving Irika a pat on the back in congratulations. We can get on to the purpose of this meeting. As we all know, the Chunin Senbatsu Shurken, Chunin Selection Exam, will be held here. We already have several people within the village. The exams will begin in two days. I already have certain teams already filled out, so does anyone else have any other nominations? Anko just ignored everyone but listened into who else was going to join in. She heard Karina nominate her team, which made her frown a bit because of who they were. Asuma also nominated his team, which made her giddy. Then Kakashi nominated his team. She paused for a while as she remembered the situation with Naruto's team. She had some concerns about them. It seems that Irika had some issues as well because he was arguing about it. Kakashi was waving it off like he usually did, making Irika angry. When Kakashi started to get serious, she decided to put an end to Kakashi's little attack. You have a point Kakashi, but you have shown that you're not the perfect general to lead soldiers. Anko said. Everyone turned to Anko who looked at her with surprise and interest. Exactly what are you talking about Anko? Kakashi asked. Well, Irika Kuen really has no right to stop you from nominating your team or any of the other's teams. Still, out of all the rookies, your team is the worst. I mean, I wouldn't call them a team considering that you haven't settled the internal problems within your group. Anko said while fiddling with a kunai. What I do with my team isn't your concern. Kakashi said with a serious tone. No, no, you're right, it isn't my concern, but I'm very concerned that Sasuke was nearly killed by Naruto because he kept trying to copy his jutsu. I would think that a skilled general like you would have dealt with something so serious. I mean, two parts of the exam has to be done in teams. Anko said with an uncaring tone. She could see that Kakashi was not happy about being put on the spot like that. Irika pushed his point about the rookies, and the Hokage agreed. He decided that the rookies should be tested before he accepted any of their nominations. Kakashi was told to stay by the Hokage, which just made Enko's day just gravy. Naruto rubbed his face as he attempted to catch up to Sakura. He was a little impressed that she could run so fast when she was pissed. They were on their way to Ikarakus when they ran into Kanoamaru and his friends, Moegi and Udon. The three wanted to know if he wanted to play ninja with him, which made Sakura laugh at him. Kanoamaru asked if Sakura was his girlfriend, which made Naruto tell him that he didn't date dudes. That earned him a knock in the head. Kanoamaru then made a comment about her lack of a chest and her giant forehead. Naruto quickly latched onto Sakura and told him to run. Sakura quickly broke away and chased him. He was about to turn the corner when he heard Kanoamaru scream. He looked out to see that his young friend was being held up by a guy in a catsuit. 
Next to him was a teenager with a club-looking weapon strapped to her back. Naruto knew that Sakura was not the same person before, but these two looked like bad news. He quickly summoned two clones, and they all did the henge transformation. Sakura didn't know what she could do in this situation. She tried to play diplomat but the large male was being a total bully. She was about to move and punch his lights out when the boy was confronted by someone else. He looked to see who it was and saw a jonin named Ebisu. You will unhand the honorable grandson of the Hokage this instant or you and your partner will be coming with us. Ebisu said with authority. Us? He asked. The girl looked and gulped when she saw two masked members with their hands on their blades. Oh great, I told you to just let this go but no. Let the kid go or he'll kill us for sure. She snarled. The guy put Kanoamaru down and he ran toward Ebisu. The jonin pushed his glasses up and glared at him. Why are there two Suna ninja in Kanoha? State your reasons or be interrogated. He demanded. Look, we're sorry. The girl said and pulled a passport. Ebisu took the passport and checked it over before handing it back to her. Very well, I will allow this to slide but if you or your team cause any more problems, then the Hokage will get involved and your relationship to the Kazakage will not help you. Ebisu said. Yes, we understand. She said and grabbed her brother. The two kept walking until they were out of sight. Kanoamaru looked at Ebisu. Thanks sensei, you really saved my butt. He said. Don't sweat it Kanoamaru. I don't let my friends get hurt by anyone. Ebisu said, his voice changing. The small kids were confused, but Sakura instantly understood. Naruto? Sakura asked. Ebisu grinned and vanished in a puff of smoke. It cleared to reveal Naruto. Sakura watched as the ANBU did the same to reveal two copies of Naruto. Those copies were dispelled by the original. Sakura could help but be impressed with what Naruto just did. Naruto saw this and grinned. It's okay Sakura. I know that I'm awesome. Naruto boasted. And you had to go and ruin it. Anyway, sorry for the elbow. Sakura said. Don't sweat it. In fact, after we get some ramen, I'll let you play with Kanoamaru. Naruto said. What? Kanoamaru said. Naruto grabbed him and held up in the air. While Sakura does have a temper, you didn't have the right to comment about her lack of things or her forehead. Naruto said. You called her a dude. Kanoamaru exclaimed. I've been insulting Sakura since we became teammates. She knows that I don't mean it and I'm just ribbing her. She doesn't know you that well. Don't worry she wouldn't beat you up that much. Naruto said. Kanoamaru tried to escape but he couldn't. Sakura had a grin on her face and wanted to get to Ikaraku's quickly. Naruto was chuckling until he got a feeling that he was being watched. He looked at the tree that they were standing next to but that feeling was way too faint. He then turned and faced the tree that was a few feet away. He narrowed his eyes at the tree when some birds flew out of it. Sakura noticed something was wrong and caught Naruto's attention. Is something wrong? She asked. Nah, I'm being a little paranoid. Come on, I'm starving. Naruto said and made their way to the restaurant. When they were out of sight, three figures jumped down from the other tree. They looked at the end of the alley with narrowed eyes. Well now, maybe these Kanoha ninja aren't as weak as we thought. A spiky, black-haired kid said. Yeah, do you think that he knew we were there? A long, black-haired girl asked. He must have. We will have to keep our eyes out for that one. He might be a danger to our mission. The other boy, whose face was completely wrapped with a lone eye showing, said. The three then vanished, leaving no trace. Naruto, Sakura and Sasuke were waiting for their sensei. Naruto and Sakura were talking about the day that they were attacked by two aim ninja. 
Sakura was playing with Kanoamaru when one of them kidnapped Moegi. Naruto, Kanoamaru and Udon took off after him. Sakura would have joined if she wasn't blindsided. The shinobi tried to use Jinjutsu against her but that proved to be a terrible mistake. Sakura dispelled the Jinjutsu and hit him with several small type Jinjutsu that confused the attacker. She then landed a powerful haymaker that sent the guy flying several yards. When she came upon the aim ninja, she saw that he had escaped. She met up with Naruto and the kids. She saw that Naruto was not happy and looked at the log that was riddled with kunai and shuriken. Naruto explained that the guy substituted himself before he could capture him. They took the kids home and went their separate ways afterwards. Did your Wani-san find out something? Sakura asked. Nope, she said that the investigation just started. Apparently, we weren't the only ones attacked. Kiba was attacked as well. Naruto said. Shikamaru as well, but he wasn't too concerned. He just said something about it leading to something more troublesome. Sakura said. Naruto looked confused, but before he could ask, Kakashi arrived. Kakashi looked at Naruto, and Naruto looked at him. There was just this building tension between the two that just kept building. Yesterday, the one-eyed Jonan confronted him and basically ordered him not to discuss anything about their team meetings. Naruto made a comment that further pissed Kakashi off and he placed the blame on him for the team's chemistry. Naruto was insulted by the comment and countered by saying that he wasn't a great Jonan, a hypocrite and a moron. He then slammed the door in his face. After a short staring contest, Kakashi turned his attention to his team. I have a surprise for your guys. Kakashi said. Is it a sense of time? Naruto asked jokingly. Sakura slapped him upside the head and shook her head. Kakashi just handed them forms. They read them and saw that it was for the Chunin Senbatsu Shuriken. You're joking, right? You actually think that we're ready for the Chunin Senbatsu Shuriken? Yes, I do believe that you are ready. Be at the academy tomorrow at 8.45 to take the first part. Kakashi said. Whoa, whoa, that's it? No other information, no training, don't you know that people die in these exams? Naruto said loudly. I have the utmost confidence in each of you. It is your decision after all. Kakashi said. Yeah, and we know what happens when you leave it on to others. Some jonin you are. Naruto said mockingly. Kakashi just narrowed his eye at him before vanishing. Naruto let out a shout of frustration as the man disappeared. I can't believe that Morn. Does he really think that we can pass this exam? You might not dobe, but I am on a different level than you or Sakura. Sasuke said. Didn't you just hear Naruto? People die in this exam. Maybe we should discuss this some more before we make a choice about this. Sakura said trying to play peacekeeper. I don't need to discuss anything. You two losers can stay home if you want, I'm not a coward. Sasuke said. He suddenly found himself being held into the air by Naruto. Sasuke wasn't just surprised by his speed but the rage that was in his eyes. You are the dumbest person that I've ever met. You think that just because you're an Uchiha that talent just comes out of your ass. Newsflash moron, no one cares about your name or your clan. To them, you're just an arrogant target, just like everyone else. Don't think that just because Kakashi favors you over everyone else makes you any better. You're nothing special. Naruto said before pushing Sasuke onto his ass. Naruto turned and walked off. Sakura attempted to help Sasuke, but he just slapped her hand anyway and walked away in a rage. The pink-haired Kunoichi was just in a crisis. She didn't know what she could do about her team falling apart. The surprising thing was, she couldn't blame Naruto for it. In fact, she thought that he was the best among them. Sakura sighed and made her way home. She had a very important decision to make. Chapter 18 Naruto walked toward the academy with his hands in his coat pockets. 
he decided to wear the trench coat that he got from Enko as it held more stuff. It would be something that he needed for the Chunin Sen Batsu Shurken, Chunin Selection Exam. He decided to do the exams mostly to keep that team for getting himself killed. Truth be told, he would have left the moron to his fate, but he wasn't that much of a jerk to allow a teammate die. He was fully stocked and prepared to do everything to protect the smug bastard. As he neared the building, he caught sight of the team, bastard, but also of another person that he didn't recognize. The person did have pink hair, but it was short, not long like Sakura's. When the person turned around, Naruto was shocked at what he saw. He rubbed his eyes a bit, just to make sure that he wasn't seeing things. Said person was a little nervous by the shock look that Naruto was giving her. W what are you staring at? Sakura asked nervously. S Sakura, is that you? Naruto asked. Of course it's me. Who did you think it was? Sakura exclaimed. B but, you cut your hair. You loved your hair. Naruto said. Oh, that. Well, you said that I should cut it as it could be a liability in a fight. She said. Yeah, but I didn't think that you would listen to me. The day I suggested it, you hit me with an uppercut and sent me about a hundred yards. Naruto stated, making Sakura blush. He looked her over and gave her a thumb up. You look good. You look more professional and a little cuter. You're still a, he was about to continue, but Sakura put her hand on his mouth. Just stop, you said something nice. Don't ruin it by being you. Sakura said. Naruto nodded and just grinned. Sasuke scoffed and entered the building. Naruto scoffed and followed him in with Sakura. They walked up to the second floor where they caught sight of a group of shinobi. They witnessed a boy on the ground, begging to others to let them through. Sakura saw that there was something wrong and whispered it to Naruto. Naruto was about to tell Sasuke, but he wasn't fast enough as Sasuke flat out told everyone about the Jinjutsu that was around the room. Everyone was confused by his words, but Naruto was pissed. He walked up to Sasuke and glared at him. What the hell are you doing? Naruto hissed. They are delaying me for going to the real room dobe, loser. Sasuke stated. You moron. Why in the hell would they put a genjutsu up here unless they were testing people? You just gave us more competition that we didn't need. Naruto exclaimed. Bring it, I can handle them all. Sasuke boasted. Is that so? Naruto said. He then turned to the crowd. Hey everyone, this jackass thinks that each and every one of you is not worthy to lick the dirt off his feet. He considers you all a stepping stone to the real competition because you couldn't figure out a simple genjutsu. Because he is so great, he believes that you should bow to him for allowing you to get to the real room. Let us all praise the great and powerful Uchiha Sasuke. Naruto announced. Sasuke growled at his mocking. He also noticed and felt the killer intent from the others. So you're Uchiha Sasuke? I've heard of you, but I think it's all hype if your friend there is mocking you like that. One of the Chunin said. Sasuke snarled at the Chunin and launched a kick. He did the same as him, but both kicks were caught by the Genin who was on the ground earlier. That caused a chain reaction. Naruto was quick to put a kunai to the throat of the genin with the bowl cut. He flicked out a kunai and had it in the face of another genin with white eyes. The white-eyed teen had his palm aimed at Naruto's heart, chakra glowing. A girl with her hair tied in two buns had two kunai on the chunin's neck, ready to cut his head off. Sakura had the other chunin in a chokehold and a kunai to his kidney. Everyone watched the scene with wide eyes. After a while, Naruto suddenly got a smirk on his face. This is some type of standoff. How about we all calm down before someone loses a limb or organ? Naruto asked. That would be a wise decision. The white-eyed boy said. Everyone released their captors and began to relax. Naruto and the white-eyed boy stared at each other for a while before Naruto was dragged away by Sakura. 
The white-eyed teen looked at the retreating back of the blonde, which got the attention of his teammate. She looked at the blonde and then back at him. What's your interest in the blonde? I figured that the Uchiha would be a more interesting. She said. That boy, he is the reason for the change in her. I don't see anything so important about him. He stated. The girl was a little confused, but that's when she realized that her other teammate was missing. Hey, where's Lee? That was a smooth move. Why do you always cause trouble Naruto? Sakura asked. Why are you blaming me? It's the team's fault that happened. If he wasn't so in love with himself, we could have easily passed by the genjutsu and gone to the real room. But no, I have to be seen, I have to be heard, his damn superiority complex is going to get us killed. Naruto countered. I'm getting sick and tired of your mocking dobe. Sasuke said hotly. Get ready team because the mocking is going to get a lot worse. You have to start thinking with your head rather than your ego. You might think that your Sharingan makes you something great but in my eyes, it ain't worth shit. If you want someone to stroke your ego, go to Kakashi. In these exams, you're lower than dirt. When you start to act like a ninja, then maybe I'll stop mocking you. Naruto stated. Sasuke looked ready to explode at Naruto's words. Sakura saw that this would not end well and looked ready to step in. Before she could however, someone made himself known. Comrades should not fight like that. A voice said. Everyone turned to see that same boy that was wearing the green spandex and orange leg warmers. His fists were taped and he had the hugest eyebrows that they ever saw. Naruto was the first to speak. You're that guy from before. Look, if this is about the kunai to the throat thing, Naruto began, but he was cut off by the boy. Oh no, you were only expressing your youthful energy to protect your teammate. He said which gained him some odd looks. Okay, what can we do for you? Naruto asked. I came for two things actually. He then turned to Sakura and looked at her. Sakura was a little put off by the look and wondered what he wanted. He suddenly took her hand and got on one knee. You are the most beautiful girl I have ever seen. My name is Rock Lee. Please go out with me and I will protect you for the rest of your life. Sakura looked at the boy in shock and surprise. Naruto did the same. After a few seconds, Naruto dropped to the ground, laughing his ass off. He laughed so hard that his sides hurt. Sakura glared at Naruto, who was banging his fist on the ground. As flattered as I am, I will have to decline. I am focusing more on my growth as a kunoichi. Sakura said. The boy looks sad, but he quickly brightens up. I understand, but I will not give up. You are perfect, and I will protect you forever. Lee said excitedly, Sakura blushed at the praise, while Naruto continued to laugh. Oh my god, stop it, you're killing me. Naruto laughed. Sakura growled and kicked him in the gut. Lee then faced Sasuke. You are Uchiha Sasuke, right? You are the rookie of the year of your class? Lee asked. What's it to you? Sasuke demanded. Please do battle with me. I would like to test the power of the Uchiha. Lee said with confidence. Sasuke gave Lee a cocky grin. Naruto stopped laughing and sat up with concern in his eyes. You know who I am and you still want to fight me? You must be as stupid as the dobe. Sasuke said before stepping forward. Naruto stood up to his feet. You sure that this is a good idea team? Your ego is going to get bruised some more if you fight this guy. Naruto stated. Sasuke scoffed at Naruto and readied himself for a fight. Naruto sighed and made his way to the room. He didn't need to stay to know what was about to happen. Sakura tried to help Sasuke but the black-haired boy would just ignore her help. Sakura would just sigh and follow him. When they reached the room, they saw Kakashi and Naruto. The two were looking at each other and it looked like that Naruto had said something to him again. 
Kakashi turned his attention to his remaining students and saw that Sasuke looked a little beat up. So, I hear that you had a run-in with the student of an acquaintance of mine. Kakashi said. More like his face met his fist. Naruto commented. Sasuke looked at Naruto with a glare. Sakura just sighed. Naruto, don't start. You could have told us that Sasuke was in trouble when he accepted that challenge. Sakura said. You know that he would not have listened to me. Besides, with all the private training he has been getting, I would think that the great Sharingan no Kakashi, Kakashi of the Sharingan, would have taught him to observe who he's fighting. To think, Sasuke was so arrogant to believe that he could have beaten a genin with a year's worth of training. Naruto stated. Perhaps you should have been a good teammate and stopped him before it got any farther. Kakashi countered. Maybe you should have been a good sensei and competent jonin to realize that we aren't ready for the exams. Naruto returned right back. Then why are you here Naruto? Kakashi said. I'm here to help Sakura. She shouldn't have to suffer because of you. If I happen to go up in rank, it's a win-win for me because I don't have to be under your command anymore. Naruto stated bluntly. Kakashi narrowed his lone eye at the blatant disrespect. He ignored him and turned to the other two. Either way, I'm glad that all of you came because I would not allow you guys to pass beyond this point if one of you did not come. With all three of you here as a team, you can all enter and take the exam. I wish you all luck. He said. Naruto didn't say anything and walked toward the room, followed by Sasuke and Sakura. They entered the room and the doors closed behind them. Kakashi looked at the door for a little while. He hoped that they did well and hoped that they could pull it together to pass. He was a little concerned about how Naruto would come into play for their chances to do well. Kakashi was not a fool. He could understand why Naruto had such an issue with him. He admitted that he focused on Sasuke the most, but it was because he was very concerned about him. Naruto had friends and comrades that he cared about in Konoha. Sasuke had none. He was someone who only cared about gaining power to kill his brother, Itachi. He wanted to give Sasuke a reason to stay in the village and to make roots in the village. He also believed that Naruto would form a bond with Sasuke, making them friendly rivals, and they would push themselves to become greater shinobi. That plan backfired on him horribly. Naruto did not respect, like, or try to bond with Sasuke. He considered him and Sasuke nothing but thieves and hypocrites. He would go out of his way to insult the both of them and point on their mistakes without any restraint. It was a problem and it was one that had to be taken care of. He couldn't go to Anko as he believed that it was because of her that Naruto was like that. He also couldn't go to the Hokage who sided with Anko and told him to get his team in order. He did not want to be labeled as a bad sensei as several jonin was questioning his teaching methods. He sighed and decided to go to the jonin lounge. He just hoped that Naruto would not cause any trouble for the team. Chapter 19 Naruto was not happy. He was not happy at all. He should have stayed home and let Sasuke not get his chance at gaining chunin. He knew that Sakura wouldn't have mind since she felt scared. However, she worked her butt off and wanted to try. He wasn't about to let her try without some backup. Still, he was still very pissed off at Sasuke's attitude and at Kakashi's favoritism. God, did he want to belt Sasuke in the face? Just one good shot. Suddenly, a hand touched his shoulder. He turned to see Hinata. She gave him a friendly smile and a worried look. What's wrong? Naruto asked. I was about to ask you the same thing. You were leaking out small doses of killing intent. Are you angry at someone? She asked him. Yeah, my dumbass sensei and my dumber ass teammate. I assume that you knew about the Jinjutsu downstairs? Naruto asked. What Jinjutsu? Hinata asked with confusion. Exactly, the Nimrod revealed it to everyone just because of his ego. He's just made our team a target. Naruto explained. 
So why did you come here? Hinata asked. To watch Sakura's back and make sure that she lives. Seeing you here is a bonus. Naruto said with a smirk. Hinata giggled and blushed a little at his flirting. Sakura and Ino thought that it was cute while Niji, who looked at them from across the room, was glaring at them. The two continued to converse when Naruto heard his name. He and Hinata turned to see a young man with ash-gray hair, glasses and a card in his hand. He was facing a red-haired boy who was wearing a gourd. On the strap was the symbol of Sunagakure, hidden sand. Uzumaki Naruto, age 13. Teammates are Uchiha Sasuke and Haruno Sakura. He has been on 7 D-rank mission and 1 C-rank mission that was bumped up to an B-rank. It says here that he was in the middle of his graduating class, skilled in various arts. Very high chakra pool and very devious. The young man said to the red head. The boy seemed to have scoffed at the info and was making his way back to his teammates. So I wasn't getting paranoid. You must have been the guy that was hanging upside down from that tree that myself, my teammate and my friends were standing under. That's a pretty good skill you got there. That's almost Jonan level stealth. Naruto said to the red head. The boy stopped and looked at Naruto with some very dangerous looking green eyes. Hinata stood behind Naruto, a little afraid at what she was feeling coming off the guy. The two would stare at each other for a while, before the redhead spoke. I am not as naive or gullible as my brother. Such cheap tactics and trickery will not work against me. He said. Well, you never know for sure. It did work on your brother and those three over there. Naruto said while pointing at the Odo, Sound, Shinobi. How about you tell me your name since you were asking about me? Naruto said. Sabaku no Gara. The redhead said before breaking eye contact and made his way back to his teammates. Sakura came over with Kiba, Shino, and Shikamaru. That guy gave me the chills. What does he want with you? Sakura asked. You got me, but it looks like that he doesn't care about me anymore. We can relax a little. Naruto said. Wherever you go, you always bring trouble with you. Shikamaru said with a sigh. That's when the front of the room was engulfed in smoke. When it cleared, several men were standing in the background while one man was standing right out in front. He was wearing the same thing as the others only he was wearing a black jacket. Enough of your gabbing. The first stage of the Chunin Senbatsu Shurken, Chunin Selection Exam, is about to begin. The man shouted. Kakashi entered the Jonin lounge with his book in his hand. He looked up to see his fellow Jonin and waved to them. He then took a seat across from Asuma and Kurinai. He ignored the dose of killing intent that Kurinai was giving him because of the book he was reading. So, how do you think that your teams will do? Kakashi asked. They should do well. Shikamaru is smart and resourceful. I trust him to keep the team in line. Asuma said. I'm not too worried myself. Kiba, Hinata and Shino work very well together. I am especially happy about Hinata because she no longer holds herself back. I must thank Naruto for helping her out of her shell. I wonder if I can teach him something, considering that things are not resolved with his team. Kurinai pointed out. That comment made Kakashi look up from his book. Asuma just sighed but had a small grin on his face. I do not know what you have heard Karinai, but there are no problems with my team. Kakashi said. So you did solve the issues among them? I am sorry about that. I only assumed things because of what Hinata told me. Apparently, Naruto has created flyers to post around the academy about your teaching habits. He really doesn't think your team will stick together and wishes to warn future Genin about you. However, since you solved all issues, I guess it's a good thing that Hinata stopped him from doing that. My mistake. Kurinai said and turned to her fingers, finding them interesting. A few of the Jonin chuckled at the teasing, but Kakashi was not amused. He turned back to his book, but he did not enjoy it. 
Everyone looked at the large man who had just spoken. Naruto got a better look at the guy and had a small smirk on his face. Hey Scarface, I didn't know that you were running these exams. Naruto shouted. The man called Scarface turned to Naruto and snarled. So it's you. This is a good sign for me. Now, I don't have to face your sister's wrath after I break you into pieces. He said to him. I'd like to see you try old man. Greater men have tried and failed. You ain't any different. Naruto boasted. We'll see. He said. He turned his attention back to the room. My name is Marino Abiki and I am the examiner of the first stage. Everyone has 60 seconds to get to your assigned seats. Everyone looked at him like he was crazy. Naruto quickly made his way to his seat. Did you not hear me? Get to your seats now or be disqualified. Everyone began a mad dash to their seats. Naruto found his seat and waited. Joining him was a random genin and Hinata. They said their hellos and waited for Ibiki to start the test. Once everyone was in their seat, Ibiki looked at them. There are certain rules that you will abide by while you are in this room. I will answer no question. Ibiki said. But, Sakura began. I said no questions. He shouted. Sakura bulked and shut her mouth. The first phase of the test will be a written test. Naruto bulked at that, which made Ibiki smile. There are ten questions on the exam, which mean that you have ten points to get. If you are caught cheating, you will lose a point. If your teammates get caught cheating, you will lose two points. If you get caught a total of five times, you and you and your team are disqualified. Ibiki explained. That's not fair. Someone shouted. Tough, you all have had the unfortunate pleasure of me being the examiner. These will not some simple test that you can pass. My word is law and I am Kami in this room. Ibiki said with some oppressive chakra that made everyone flinch. You all will have 45 minutes to answer the nine questions on the sheet. After that, you all will be given the tenth question. You may begin your test, now. With that, everyone began to look at the test. Naruto looked at the questions and silently growled. He was never that good of a test taker. He was a man of action. He did enough to pass the exams so that he would not be labeled the dead last. These questions, however, were impossible. These were some pretty hard questions, and there was no way that he could answer them. He then saw several teams get caught cheating. That was pretty quick in his mind. He was frustrated until he turned to see Hinata. He was a little confused as she had her Byakugan activated. Didn't she know that she would get caught if she was seen? It was pretty easy to see that she was cheating. Yet, not of the examiners were doing anything about it. Was this the point of the exam? He carefully looked around the room and saw that everyone he knew was cheating. Kiba was using his dog, Shino was using his bugs very discreetly and Ino was slumped over, which meant that she had used her clan's jutsu. So that was the point of the test, to cheat and to cheat well. Well, if they wanted him to cheat, he was going to do a great job of doing it. He had a foxy grin as a plan formulated in head. When he had something, he decided to put it into action. Hey sensei, can you come over here for a second? Naruto asked. The guy walked over to him and gave him his attention. What is it kid? He asked. Punch in the nuts. Naruto exclaimed. A quick jab in the nuts sent the man to the ground in the fetal position. Everyone looked at the move with shock and awe. Ibiki looked at Naruto with rage. What the hell are you thinking Uzumaki? Ibiki roared. Bitch was looking at me funny. Naruto answered with a tone. Ibiki came at him and lifted him by his throat. Anko should have taught you better. You don't mess with me punk. Ibiki snarled. You don't scare me. Naruto said with a grin. Ibiki just growled and threw Naruto back down into his seat. 
he made his way back to the front of the room. Naruto still had that grin on his face, which confused everyone. Naruto suddenly took his paper and erased something. He then wrote his name and sat back with his feet on the table. Ibiki looked at him with confusion. He continued to look at him until he realized what he did. That whole incident was a diversion. He managed to steal someone's test. But whose and how? Ibiki wondered. He looked around the room but did not see anything wrong. Taicho, may I be excused? Asked one of the examiners. Ibiki looked and saw a female chunin who was dressed in very tight clothing. It highlighted her curves and caught the attention of everyone in the room. Yeah, get the hell out of here. Ibiki said. She smiled and walked away with a sway in her hips that caught every male's attention and every female's ire. She left and the test continued. Ibiki was still trying to figure out what that brat did. However, the time was up and he had to continue the test. All right, pencils down. It is time for the tenth question. Before this question is asked, I must tell you all about one more rule. If you do not answer this question correctly, no matter if you answered each question right, you and your teammates will fail and you will remain a genin for the rest of your life. Ibiki said. What? You don't have the authority to do something like that. Kiba shouted. What did I say before, kid? You got a bad hand when I was chosen for the first stage. It's my rules and my world. You don't like, then quit. Ibiki said. Everyone looked very nervous at the rules that Ibiki laid on the line. One by one, several people stood up and submitted. They were too scared to take the question and they did not want their teammates to suffer. Sakura looked scared as well and she was about to raise her hand as well. That's when she was hit by something. It was a piece of paper. She opened it and began to read it. Hey, I'm with you if you want to quit but I think it would be a shame that you let this guy scare you. You're much stronger than this and I believe in you. You can do this and I have your back. The note said. Sakura looked in the direction that she was hit and saw Naruto. He gave her a grin and she felt at ease by it. She took a deep breath and relaxed. Ibiki saw this and just smirked at the group. He waited a few more minutes before speaking again. Are the rest of you sure about this? Ibiki asked the group. The remaining teams looked at him with unwavering gazes. He then smiled and looked at the group. Congratulations, you have all just passed the first stage. Everyone looked at the man with wide eyes. Chapter 20 Everyone looked at the older man with wide eyes. Naruto was the only one who did not look at him with shock as he has been through the mind games of Marino Ibiki. What the hell are you talking about? What about the tenth question? Kiba demanded. There is no tenth question. I lied. Ibiki said. A lot of people began to shout and rant about what this man put him through. After a while, he got fed up with it and unleashed his killing intent. That shut everybody up and made a couple of them gulp. Ibiki calmed himself and looked at each of them seriously. Does anyone know what the point of this exam was? You not only tested our ability to cheat but to see if we had the balls to cheat. Naruto answered. Close enough. Did you really believe that I and my fellow ninja did not notice the cheating? We wanted to see if you could get the information well enough to escape our notice. Also, we wanted to see if you could manipulate the point system that I placed up. Yes, we may have caught you but we had no reason to kick you out if you stayed within the point limit. Ibiki explained. And the tenth question? Asked the Sunakunoichi. It was to see if you had it within you to take it. Ibiki said and removed his bandana. Everyone was shocked at the wounds that they saw. Burn marks, punctures from where screws were used and long slash marks decorated his head and some wondered how he survived such a thing. These are the scars that I received when I refused to give up information to my enemies. That's what it means to be a chunin. 
to risk everything for your village and knowing that you're going to die. Ibiki put on back his bandana and faced the group. He was about to say more when something crashed through the window. Some of the genin prepared themselves for an attack when the projectile unraveled to reveal Anko. She stood proudly in front of the banner that said Sexy and Single Proctor of the Second Stage, Midarashi Anko. Heads up boys and girls, this is no time to be celebrating. I will be your next proctor, Midarashi Anko. Are you ready for the second test? Good, so let's go. Anko said with her arm raised. Everyone looked at the woman like she was insane. Naruto held up a card for her to see, which got her attention. Oh, that's bullshit. The entrance alone is worth a nine. The entrance was an eight at best. If you had used the smoke bombs and flash bombs like I said, then it would be a ten. Naruto said to her. What do you know about style? You think orange is a ninja color. Anko mocked. Hey, listen bitch, Naruto began but was cut off by Ibiki. If you two are done playing around, can you get to the second test? Ibiki said. Anko looked around the room and was surprised by how many people were in the room. She counted and was even more shocked. This can't be right. There's 78 genin left. That's 26 teams. Are you telling me that the great and fearful mind bender, Marino Ibiki, couldn't reduce the playing field? Anko mocked. Ibiki glared at her. There are some outstanding examiners this year. Also, you punk ass project kind of screwed up my aura around the place. You should warn him about who he talks to. It will get him killed. Ibiki said. No worries about that. When I'm done with them, the herd will be cut in half. Anko said with a grin. Everyone kind of froze when she licked her lips. I'm getting excited. This should be fun. As fun as you stalking Irika and trying to rape him? Naruto asked with a fake innocence. Anko glared at him for that comment. Naruto suddenly found himself in a headlock. Okay guys, follow me and I'll explain the next test. And you, you need to keep your mouth shut about my personal life. Anko growled and she tightens her grip around Naruto's neck. Everyone just watched the two with awe as they followed Anko to the next stage. Free of Anko, Naruto walked with Sakura and Sasuke to the next stage. As they walked, Shikamaru came up beside him. Naruto greeted him and asked him what he wanted. Nothing really, I just came to congratulate you on your ploy to get the answers. It was a little classless, but it got the job done. Shikamaru said with a bored tone. Naruto grinned as his teammates looked at him with confusion. So you noticed that, huh? Well, I can't help my genius. Naruto boasted. What are you two talking about? Naruto was sweating like pig during the test. He couldn't answer those questions. Sakura said. He stole them. The guy he hid in the nuts was a distraction while his henched clone stole someone's paper. Shikamaru explained. Clone, what clone? Sakura asked. Back in the academy, Ibiki was racking his brain as to how that blonde brat cheated. That little stunt was a distraction, he knew that it was. The test he checked was filled with the right answers so this had to be from one of the guys that he planted in the room. Ibiki was getting frustrated at the fact that he had been outsmarted. Hey Ibiki, are you okay? Asked one of the proctors. No, no I am not. Ibiki said and faced the group. That's when he noticed that someone was missing. Hey, where is that blonde-haired woman? What blonde-haired woman? The man said. The woman who caught the eyes of you all and many of the males. Ibiki said with a growl. Oh her, the man said with a funny grin. He quickly wiped it off as Ibiki glared at him. Well, I don't know where she is. I don't even know why she was there. She wasn't a part the group that was instructors. Truth be told, I don't even know who she is. Trust me, she would be very memorable. He said. 
Ibiki looked at him like he was crazy and was very concerned about a spy in the village. That's when he remembered Naruto's little stupid jutsu. Going deep in his mind, he recalled the face of the woman. He remembered a beautiful face with three whisker marks on each side of her face. Son of a bitch! Ibiki exclaimed. Back with the group of genin, Naruto had a huge grin on his face. Anko had to pause as she was laughing so hard. She couldn't believe that Ibiki fell for that stupid jutsu of her little brother. She could only image the rage on Ibiki's face as he was fooled by a genin. Naruto mentally patted himself on the back until he felt a decent amount of killing intent that was directed toward him. He turned and gulped as he saw the rage on Sakura's face. And now Sakura, let's calm down and talk about this. Naruto said nervously. Sakura wasn't listening and charged at Naruto. Anko just chuckled as the pink-haired teammate of Naruto beat the living hell out of him. She just enjoyed the show just for a little while. Naruto groaned and sat up. He rubbed his head and cracked his neck to work out the stiffness. He stood and faced Anko who had just finished her food. She saw Naruto stand up and smirked. Ah, Sleeping Beauty has finally awakened. Anko joked. You could have stopped her you know. Sakura punches are like iron weights. Naruto complained. I've told you before that your oirok no jutsu, sexy technique, is going to get you killed. While I have no issue with it, the female population views it as offensive. If you're going to ignore that, then you have to face the consequence. Besides, it could have been much worse if she added a bit more hip movement in her punches. Anko said. Naruto gave her a WTF look as Sakura began to think about what Anko said. The Tokubetsu Jonin ignored him and faced the group. All right, listen up because I'm only going to explain this once. Behind me is Daenjian in Shujo, 44th training ground, also known as Shinomori, Forest of Death. The radius of the forest is 10 kilometers with a tower in the middle. Your objective is to arrive at that tower with both of these scrolls. Anko pulled out two scrolls, one with the symbol Heaven and one with the symbol Earth. Each team will be given one of these scrolls, and you will be let loose in the forest. Anko said. So, we'll be fighting in the forest? Asked Kiba. Well, I figured that was self-explanatory, considering I just said you had to get to the tower with both scrolls. As a chunin, you will have to keep and get information in hostile territory. You will have to fight, sometimes to the death, to keep it. Before I go into it more, my friends here, pointing to the group of Chunin, will be giving you a form. It is a release form as there will be killing in this exam. I'd rather not be responsible when you die and your village comes bitchin' Anko said. Way to show concern when Isan. Naruto joked. Anko just shrugged and continued to speak. Anyway, the exam lasts for five days? What about food? Choji exclaimed. Anko narrowed her eyes at him, making the chubby genin hide behind Eno. There are a lot of things in the forest that you can hunt and eat. Beware though, because there are things inside the forest that like to eat plump little kids like you. Anko said with a grin, making Choji shiver more. Well, that's the second stage in a nutshell. I do have one bit of advice for everyone. What is it? Naruto asked. Don't die. Anko exclaimed. She watched as everyone signed their forms and gave them back to the chunin. Looking around to see that everyone was busy, she quickly moved to grab Naruto. She took him away from the group and brought him somewhere private. Naruto was a little confused about why Anko looked so nervous. Sorry brat, I still a rep to protect. Anyway, I wanted to wish you luck and tell you to be careful in the forest. It isn't the place to be showboating. Anko said. Hey, I might be awesome, but I know when to be serious. I'll be okay. Naruto said. Anko smiled at him and then embraced him in a hug. While surprised, Naruto returned the hug and told her that everything would be okay. Anko let him go, and he ran back to his team. 
Anko looked at him with a smile and made her way back to overlook the genin. Unknown to her and Naruto, a sinister presence saw the whole scene. It amused them and bad plans began to form within their head. Naruto was pinching the bridge of his nose. He just couldn't understand why he was placed on this team with Sasuke. It was just too frustrating to deal with him. So that's the plan? We're just going to walk around the forest until we find someone and attack them? Wow, those are some really great lesson Kakashi has been teaching you. Naruto said. You got a better idea? Sasuke demanded. Yes, I do. We find a place and make a base camp. After we situate the camp, then we can go and search for a scroll. With the base camp, we have a place to return to rest and plan. Naruto said. That isn't a bad idea. We should do that and you probably know a spot we can use, right Naruto? Sakura asked. Look, we need to finish the exam quickly and easily. We don't have time to be making camps and coming up with plans. We are doing it my way and that's that. Sasuke said. Listen asshole, this is a team, which means that this is a team decision. Running around aimlessly, finding someone with a different scroll than ours is a waste of time and energy. If you want to do this plan of yours, then you are giving up the scroll because I'll be damned if you lose our scroll because you got an over in your head. Naruto said loudly and held out his hand. Sasuke glared at Naruto, who did not look scared of him. That's when Sakura stepped in. Sasuke, I agree with Naruto. I think that we should do his plan since he might know a safe area in the forest. I'm sorry, but I can agree with your plan. Sakura said with regret. Sasuke looked at the two with defiance. He scoffed at the two and pocketed the scroll. Just lead us to a safe area so we can get our scroll as soon as possible. Sasuke stated with anger. Naruto sucked his teeth at him and nodded at Sakura who nodded back. After a few minutes, a chunin opened their gate. All three genin dashed into the forest as the second stage of the chunin exams began. Chapter 21 It did not take long for Naruto to lead the team to a spot. It was concealed and it was near the river. There were some fruit trees near the place as well. The team unloaded some of their things there and set up camp. Once the camp was set up, Sasuke quickly went on the hunt for a scroll. Annoyed, Naruto and Sakura followed him. As they searched, they could hear the screams of someone. Naruto looked toward Sakura and saw that she was not so bothered by the scream. Well, you certainly toughen up Sakura. Naruto said. I can't afford to be jumpy. It's like you said Naruto, we can get killed in this forest if we're not careful. Sakura said. Naruto nodded as they continued to move through the forest. Naruto looked at something out of the corner of his eye and moved up to Sakura. He tapped her shoulder three times and Sakura shook her head. Hold up guys, I have to go and pee. Naruto said. Sakura looked him and popped him in the head. Don't tell me that. Don't you know how to be respectful in front of a lady? Sakura exclaimed. Show me a lady and I'll respect her. Naruto said and made his way out of sight. When he was gone, the other two waited. A few moments passed by and Naruto returned. All right then, let's go and get that scroll. They nodded and Naruto walked past Sakura. As he closed in on Sasuke, he was suddenly caught in a chokehold. Sasuke looked at Sakura in shock as she choked Naruto out. Naruto tried to free himself, but Sakura would soon wrap her legs around his waist and drop to the ground. Naruto suddenly vanished and replaced was a genin from Amage Cure. He tried to get free, but he just couldn't get Sakura to let him go. After a few moments, he was rendered unconscious. Sakura threw the aim mean off her and took some deep breaths. Sasuke looked at Sakura with some demanding eyes, which made Sakura a little nervous. That's when Naruto returned with another Aimin. He dropped the guy right next to him. He began to search for a scroll. That's when Sasuke finally had enough. 
What the hell was this all about? How did you know that we were being followed? Sasuke demanded. Well, Naruto figured it out. He told me that if he tapped the left side of my shoulder that there was company near us. Sakura explained. Sasuke was angry at that and looked at Naruto with a glare. Why didn't you tell me that? He snarled. I tried to, but you were so damn impatient, you blew me off. Naruto spat softly. He stopped searching and growled. Neither one of these guys have a scroll. It must have been the third one. Naruto said. So what are we going to do? Sakura asked. Let's tie these guys up and throw them in the river. It will really hinder their process. Naruto said as he created a goal. Are you doing this just because? Sakura asked with a tone. Well, that too. Naruto said. He and Sakura tied the two up while Sasuke sat back and stewed. He did not like this. He did not like this at all. While he didn't like the fact that Naruto was just as skilled as him, he definitely didn't like that Sakura was improving. That chokehold that she did to that Aimeen was very well done. Also, she had enough strength to actually hold and choke out the guy. When did she start to take her career seriously? Who taught her that move? Were she and Naruto training together? It just frustrated him to no end. Hey dumbass, snap out of it. We're heading back to camp to come up with another plan. Naruto said. No. Sasuke said. Excuse me? Naruto asked him. I said no. We aren't wasting time going back to the camp. We have to get another scroll and finish before everyone else. Sasuke stated. Naruto was about to argue but Sasuke ignored him and jumped off. He looked at Sakura with his arms open and Sakura just sighed. The two turned and followed their teammate. Anko ate the last piece of dango off the stick. As she chewed in bliss, she threw the dango stick with ease and precession. It connected with a tree that had several more dango sticks. The recent one finished the Kanoha symbol. She admired her work for a second before pulling out a small little book. It was his Irika book. She was kind of bored and she decided to go and visit Irika for a while. Maybe chase him around the village like she did a week ago. For a chunin, he was pretty fast. Let's see, oh, he's a part of the crew that will be summoned when they reach the tower. That means that he's close by. Maybe I should say hello and give him a good groping. Anko said with a grin. Her happy thoughts were suddenly dashed by a chunin. Anko senpai. He called out. Anko growled and fixed him with a glare. This had better be good. I was just about to visit Irika Kuen. Anko said with a tone. You really need to see this. We have an emergency. The Chunin said. Anko was curious and followed the Chunin. When she arrived, there were two more Chunin and three dead bodies. She walked up to the bodies and looked at them carefully. She noticed that their faces were taken off. That raised some red flags because this was very familiar to her. Who are they? She asked. By the clothes and the symbol on their hatayate, we believe that these are the three genin. One chunin said and handed her the files. She looks at the files and saw that these genin were from Kuzagakir. The red flags were blowing in the wind. These genin had entered the forest with the others. That's when she remembered and was greatly alarmed. Get to the Hokage fast. Tell him to send in two squads of the ANBU into the forest. I'm going in. Anko stated and prepared to enter the forest. Wait, 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 what are we to tell the Hokage? Shouted a Chunin. Tell him that Orochimaru is here. Anko shouted back before jumping over the fence. Naruto groaned as he got to his feet. Whoever hit his team with that damn jutsu was going to get punched in the face. He looked around and tried to get his bearings. Whatever that jutsu was blew him a pretty good distance. 
That's when he heard the sound of something. He quickly pulled out two kunai and looked around him. He looked around for whatever was stalking him. He felt someone coming from behind and quickly lashed out with his kunai. It was knocked away and Naruto was quickly wrapped up. He looked up to see a large snake. He was surprised to see a snake this size. The reptile bore down on him and looked at him in the eye. Naruto looked right back at the snake and focused his chakra. The two stared at each other for a while before the large serpent released Naruto. He sighed and kept his gaze on the snake. He knew that this was no ordinary snake. It was a snake that was similar to Enko's familiar, Kaijin. Okay friend, take me to your summoner. Naruto said. He jumped on its back and the two slithered away. Sakura and Sasuke was wondering how they got in this situation. A few hours ago, they were arguing about Sasuke's attitude during this exam. She was in agreement with Naruto on this as Sasuke was angry about nothing. Because of this, Naruto demanded the scroll and Sakura agreed to it. He challenged the both of them to come and take the scroll from him which not only surprised her but annoyed her. It made her question everything about her crush. That's when they were hit by a very strong wind. Lucky for her, Sakura was able to keep herself from being blown away like Sasuke. Naruto was not that lucky. When the wind died out, she was going to look for him when the two of them were confronted by Akusa Kunoichi. She challenged the two of them to a fight. Sasuke was ready for a fight and Sakura decided to back him. That's when they were hit with a killer amount of intent that froze the two. They could each see their death if they faced this woman. Sasuke was the first to break out of the intent and grabbed her. He thought that he got away, but he was wrong. The Kunoichi chased them. Sakura attempted to confuse her with a few Jinjutsu, but they were quickly dealt with. Sasuke attacked, but it was out of fear. That's when the teenage summoned a snake to face them. Sasuke was so scared that he was about to give her their scroll. She was about to object to this when the Kunoichi and her snake was hit by another snake. The Kunoichi was surprised by the attack and was concerned. She was then struck from the blind side and sent flying off her snake. She quickly flipped out of her flight and landed on her feet. Sakura suddenly felt someone next to her. She turned to see Naruto. He suddenly tossed something to her. It was their scroll. Naruto looked at the kunoichi before them and slipped out two kunai. Sakura, you protect the scroll. Provide support if you can. Sasuke and I are going to have to deal with this kunoichi. Naruto said. Naruto, I think we should flee. This kunoichi, she on a different level. Sakura said. I can see that but she's going to just chase us down and kill us. Besides, this chick might have some answers and I'm going to get them. Naruto said and jumped away. Sakura looked on as Naruto appeared in front of the Kusa Kunoichi. The Kunoichi wiped her mouth before facing Naruto. That was quite a punch. She said. I believe I heard that you have some questions for me. I have a question of my own. How did you do that with my snake? Naruto looked at the two snakes who were wrestling each other. After a while they vanished in a puff of smoke. I'm not going to tell you Jack. Now, how in the hell did you get the Hebe, snake, contract? I know that there are only two people who have that summoning contract. One is Anko and the other is that bastard who hurt her. Naruto exclaimed. That brought a small smirk to the teen's face. So, Anko hasn't told him much about her past. By the looks of it, he figured some of it himself. Very well, I'll indulge him a little. She thought. You would be right, but do you believe that he wouldn't replace Anko? She was weak after all. It was why she was abandoned by him. I am much stronger than she is. Weak, huh? Fine, let's test that theory. Naruto said and charged at her. The Kunoichi grinned and met his charge. Watching the two, Sakura was amazed at the courage that Naruto showed in front of a superior combatant. 
it boosted her confidence as well. She was about to go and help her teammate when she was stopped by Sasuke. Sasuke? Sakura asked. What are you thinking about? We need to give that woman the scroll. Give me the scroll, Sakura, before that dobe get us all killed. Sasuke said. Sakura looked at Sasuke for a while, angering him. I said give me the scroll. That's when it happened. A loud crack was heard. Sasuke stepped back stunned at what just happened. Sakura looked at Sasuke with narrowed eyes. I can't believe that the last Uchiha is such a coward. You aren't the Sasuke I fell for. You're a fake. You're not strong at all. Sakura shouted. She took off to help her teammate fight this Kunoichi. Sasuke stood there and placed his hand to his cheek. It stung a lot. What was just said to him had stunned him and to hear it from Sakura of all people was embarrassing. That's when he heard the voice of his brother. It was telling him how weak he was. It was telling him how he wasn't worth killing. He clenched his fists in anger. He snarled and turned toward the battle. He jumped toward the fighting, hoping to show them that he was not a coward. Chapter 22 The Kusa Kunoichi dodged another kunai slash and caught Naruto's other wrist when he tried to stab her in the kidneys. She tossed him, but he flipped in midair and landed on his feet. He dashed at the teenager with both his kunai. He attacked her with stabs and slashes that she dodged, parried or blocked. The two backed off to get some space and faced each other. She was not breathing hard, but Naruto was. He hated to admit it, but this teen was strong. That was very impressive. Did Anko teach you how to use kunai like that? My master always said that she was skilled with short blades. She said with a grin. You just like to hear yourself talk? Don't worry I'm going to give you another hole to talk through. Naruto spat. Knowing that he couldn't match her up close, he decided to change up his strategy. He did a few seals and opened his mouth. Katan Karyudun. Fire release fire dragon bullet, Naruto shouted and spat a flame of fire at the Kunoichi. She sailed over the attack and landed behind Naruto. She rushed to deal with him but was cut off by a kick from one of his clones. In midair, another clone hit her from above, stabbing her with two kunai. They hit the other branch with some force as the woman lay dead. The clone watched as she turned to mud. The clone was then dispelled by several shuriken from behind. Naruto summoned some more clones and charged at woman. They all dodged the barrage of shuriken and attacked. The teen fought the clones with some difficulty. She had a smile on her face as she did. So, she has showed him some of the hebe, snake, style that I taught her. It doesn't really fit him, but he is using it well. Still, this is getting quite boring. She thought. That's when she smelt something like gas. That's when she saw the clones ignite explosive tags. The explosion was big and loud. Naruto hid behind a tree for safety as the explosion happened. As his clones fought the woman, he used the Katan Kasumi and Buno Jutsu, fire release mist blaze dance technique. He was pretty sure that he got her with that one. Suddenly, he moved out of the way as some kunai nearly hit him. He rolled out of it and was suddenly kicked in the stomach by the woman. Naruto groaned but was able to get up and get into a stance. So, you still have some fight left in you? That was an interesting tactic. Do you have any more things to show me? She asked with a smile. Naruto growled at that smile and was thinking of ways to wipe it off her face. That's when something came at the woman. She didn't even look at the figure and just backhanded it. The figure turned out to be Sakura. Sakura! Naruto shouted. Naruto! Get away! Sakura shouted. Naruto saw her make a seal and jumped away from the branch. Sakura then activated the Jutsu Shiki technique formula she managed to put on the woman. They both heard her scream as an explosion sent her flying to the ground below. Naruto watched the burning corpse drop to the ground. 
he turned his attention back to Sakura. He made his way over to her and saw that she was holding her cheek. He gave her a surprised look. Sakura, what was that? He asked in surprise. I've been studying that fuinjutsu, sealing technique, that you told me about. I figured that if I learned how to do jutsu shiki it would be a help to the team. I didn't get to hold on to her for as long as I wanted to. Sakura explained. I don't think you have to worry. She's got to be dead now. Naruto said. How right you are, but she has been dead for quite a while. The two turned to see that the woman was still alive. Naruto jumped in the way of the blow meant for Sakura, but it was so powerful that both were sent flying. The two maneuvered in midair so that Sakura wouldn't get crushed. As the woman made a small move to end them, she dodged a barrage of kunai. The person landed and faced their attacker, Sasuke. Ah, so you are ready to fight Sasuke Koen? The male voice asked. They suddenly opened their mouth and out of it came a tall man with extremely pale skin and waist-length black hair. He had a long face with pronounced cheekbones, golden eyes with slits in his pupils and purple markings around his eyes a reference to his snake-like nature. He stood in front of Sasuke and waited. Sasuke growled and activated his eyes. This made the man smile. Ah, the Sharingan. I have been waiting to see its power. Sasuke quickly did some hand seals. Katan Gokaku no Jutsu. Fire release great fireball technique, Sasuke shouted and spat a ball of fire at him. He jumped over it and engaged Sasuke in Taijutsu. With the Sharingan activate, Sasuke was able to keep up with the man. When he sped up, Sasuke was still able to follow him. He jumped away and launched another fireball. Moving like a snake, the man appeared and struck Sasuke from behind. He attacked him in midair, but Sasuke was able to move and grab him. He placed three balls on his back and pushed off. The small explosion caught the man by surprise and stung him. Sasuke reached into his pouch and threw several shuriken at the man. They were off target but the shuriken were attached to wires. The man noticed this and was shocked. The Sufushisen no Tachi, manipulating windmill triple blades, he thought in shock. Sasuke landed and pulled the wires, wrapping the man up and restraining him to the branch. He then did hand seal for another jutsu. Katan Ryuka no Jutsu Fire release dragon fire technique, Sasuke was surrounded by flames and they traveled up the wires. The man screamed as he was consumed by the flames. The power behind the jutsu destroyed the branch he was tied to and sent it falling to the ground. Sasuke dropped to his knees and was tired. Sakura appeared and looked at Sasuke. The boy just glared at her and Sakura just sighed at the attitude. That's when they were frozen by an unreal killer intent. A head appeared from behind and bit Sasuke in the neck. Sasuke screamed as a mark appeared on his body. Sakura couldn't move and watched with horror. Get away from him, you son of a bitch! Naruto roared. The head moved just in time to dodge Naruto's swipe. The pressure of the swipe however left three marks on his neck. Naruto landed and pushed off the tree and chased the head. Naruto hit the ground, creating a crater just as the head returned to their attacker. Naruto took off like a bullet and attacked the man with vigor. The man dodged all his attacks and saw the red in his eyes. So, she has been training the Kyubi Jinchuriki. Interesting. He continued to dodge, all the while doing something behind his back. Naruto brought his arm down, but the man vanished. Naruto was able to follow him and give chase, but the man was ready. Futon de Tapa. Wind release great breakthrough, Orochimaru called out. Naruto was sent flying into a tree and hit it hard. Orochimaru was on him in seconds and lifted his mesh shirt. Gojio Fuin. Five element seal, he then slammed his hand into his gut, flames on each of his fingers. Naruto roared in pain and began to feel weaker. The chakra of the Kyubi receded and Naruto passed out. The man dropped Naruto to the ground. He looked at the blonde and considered giving him a special bite. 
however, he was interrupted by the girl. He moved away as Sakura stood protectively over him, while carrying Sasuke. Sakura looked at Naruto, and then glared at the man in front of her. What did you do, to the both of them, you monster? Who are you? Sakura demanded. My name is Orochimaru. Sakura eyes went wide and her knees began to shake. She couldn't believe that one of the Densetsu no Sanin, legendary three ninja, was actually here. She ignored her fear and stared him down. This amused the man some. Do not worry I will be retreating for now. I have already given my gift to young Sasuke. If he survives, he will come to me for more. You will watch over him now? He is very important to me. Orochimaru said and melted into one of the trees. Sakura released a breath that she was holding and wiped the sweat that appeared on her face. Why was the great Orochimaru after them? She put in the back of her mind for now. She needed to get her teammates to safety. Anko rushed through the trees and searched for Orochimaru. She didn't know why that man was here, but she didn't care. Today was the day that she ended him and got him back for his betrayal. He would not escape for her. That she swore. She jumped off another branch and searched. That's when she saw him, Orochimaru. She rocketed toward him, two kunai out. Orochimaru! She roared. The man turned around and smiled. Ah, my dear Anko, how have you been? He asked with ease. He then ducked her first strike and stepped back from her second strike. Anko threw the kunai, but he easily caught them and returned them to her. She dodged and got some more space. That hurts my feelings, Anko. Aren't you happy to see your old sensei? Happy? I'll be happy once you're dead. Anko shouted. Orochimaru just smirked and charged at her. Anko jumped into the air and held her arm out. Sanai Jishu. Hidden shadow snake hands, for snakes shot out and attacked. They bite into the man and held out. With amazing strength, Enko pulled him toward her and she punched him in the chest with Senban between her knuckles. This sent him into the branch hard. She then did a foot stomp on his chest that made him spit blood. She spun him again before slamming him into the tree. She ended her assault by stabbing him in the hand with a kunai. She then did one-handed seals, locking her and his hands together. Orochimaru saw this and was shocked. This is the end. This is for Kanoha. Anko roared. Sojusosai no Jutsu. Twin snakes mutual death technique, two snakes were summoned and they bit the both of them. Anko winced, but she knew that this was for the best. She might die, but she had taken this bastard with her. Still so impulsive Anko. Did you forget who showed you that Jutsu? Orochimaru's voice said from behind her. Anko was shocked and watched the Orochimaru in front of her smile before turning into mud. Anko cursed and dropped to her knees. What would poor Naruto think of his sister figure sacrificing herself, leaving him alone? Anko's eyes went wide. Finding the strength within her, she grabbed the kunai from the tree and rushed at him, roaring with rage. Orochimaru did a single seal and Anko suddenly felt unimaginable pain. She dropped to the ground, holding her shoulder. She tried to fight it, but she couldn't. That will be enough. I was very surprised that you would be training the Kyubi Jinchuriki. I must admit, you did a very good job with him. He impressed me enough that I considered giving him my gift that I gave you. Orochimaru said. If you go near him again, I swear that I'll rip your fucking throat out. Anko snarled through the pain. Orochimaru laughed at her. How delicious. Don't worry Anko, I have no plans to use him. I have already gotten what I came for. Besides, there are worse people out there that want your dear Otudo, little brother, and you are nowhere strong enough to defeat them. Even I would be wary to get in their way. Orochimaru said. Damn. You. Anko snarled. Do tell Sensei not to cancel the exams. 
I would be most displeased if you do. He said and vanished from view. Anko laid on the tree branch, in pain and near death. She had enough energy to pull out a flare and launch it. After she did, she passed out. As she closed her eyes, she couldn't help but worry about Naruto. Sakura placed a cool rag on Sasuke's forehead before checking over him. It looked like he was okay, but she couldn't really tell. She then turned to Naruto, who was still out. Whatever that man did, knocked him out pretty good. Surprisingly, he was in the same boat as Sasuke as his injuries were healing. She always realized that Naruto seemed to recover faster than most people. She wondered why. She sighed and decided to get a little sleep. She kept a kunai on her person and positioning herself to keep an eye out. She knew that the forest had many enemies and she would have to be ready. It would be a lesson that would save her life when the morning came. Chapter 23 Sakura was awakening by the sound of a trap going off. She looked out of the tree that she had placed the boys and saw that one of her mines were detonated. When the smoke cleared, she saw three people, two of them were arguing. It was that Odo Genin team that was in the first part of the exams. She didn't know what they wanted but she was going to find out. Hiding their scroll and making sure that the others were safe, she stepped out of the tree. The boy wrapped in bandages hit his teammates and directed them to Sakura. The pink-haired girl looked at the group and had her kunai out. What do you what? Sakura demanded. Are you the one that put all those jinjutsu traps? Shouted the spiky-haired boy. I asked you what do you want? Sakura asked. We have come here for Uchiha Sasuke. Bring him out. The kid with the bandages said. What do you want with Sasuke? Sakura demanded, getting into a stance that Naruto showed her. Are you really going to fight us bitch? Asked the black-haired girl. Shut up Kin. Don't try to act tough when you fell for those corny jinjutsu traps. The boy shouted. Kin turned and glared at him but flinched from the glare that the one-eyed boy gave her. He turned back to Sakura. We were ordered to kill him. Now, bring him out. He ordered. I'm not about to allow you to harm my teammate. If you want him, you'll have to go through me. Sakura said. This made the other two chuckle. Sakura growled at the fact that they did not take her seriously and decided to show them just who they were messing with. She did some hand seals and concentrated. The Odo Genin watched as smoke appeared out of her ears. Her eyes opened and she faced her opponents. It's done. I have just placed you under my spell. Sakura said. This made the spiky hair boy laugh. Is that right? Well, let me show you one of my spells. Zankaha. Decapitating airwaves, he shouted and fired a blast of air. It hit the spot where Sakura was, but the girl vanished like mist. The boy was surprised and it increased when Sakura appeared right in front of him. She lashed out with a right. He jumped back, but he was hit hard by the punch. Sakura vanished again and appeared in front of Ken. She threw a hook kick, which Ken blocked. However, to her surprise, she still got hit by the ball of her foot. Sakura hit her with a three-punch combo that sent her to the ground. Sakura felt the leader come at her and lashed out with a kick. He stopped, but he too got hit and sent flying. Sakura vanished again as the group regrouped. What the hell? I know that I blocked that kick. Kin growled. You aren't the only one. Her leg stretched enough to hit me in the chest. Something is not right. He said. That's when Sakura reappeared and had her kunai ready. She was dropped down toward the spiky-haired boy. Zaku! The leader shouted. I see her. Zankaha! Zaku shouted and fired. Again, Sakura just faded away and his attack missed. Damn it Kin, dispel this jinjutsu that she put on us. He was attacked from behind as Sakura slashed him across the back. 
He spun around to fire, but Sakura was already inside his guard and hit him with a three-punch combo. Kin and bandaged kid charged at her. Sakura threw something on the ground that blinded them. They stop and looked for her. Sakura appeared like the mist and kicked the bandaged guy in the face. Dosu! You bitch! Kin shouted and tried to cut her. Sakura ducked the attack and threw an uppercut. Kin dodged, but she still got hit. Kin growled as she was sent flying. She managed to right herself and launched some senban at her. Sakura vanished again and the senban missed. Kin landed on the side of the tree and searched for her. Sakura appeared behind her and poised herself. She stabbed Kin in the shoulder. The girl cried out and fell to the ground. Zaku was starting to get frustrated with this girl and her hit-and-run tactics. He then got a wicked idea. He gathered air into his hands and pointed it at the tree where her teammates were. Sakura saw this and quickly moved. She appeared back in front of the tree and went inside. She quickly covered her two teammates as Zaku fired. Zan, Zaku began. Kanoha Senpu. Tree Leaf Whirlwind, a voice said. Zaku's arms were kicked up and he received two more blows to his chest. His attack shot into the trees. Sakura was confused and got off her teammates. She looked out of the tree to see that boy clad in green. Dosu and Kin watched as Zaku was starting to stir. The boy in front of them just looked at them with serious eyes. I made a promise to protect Sakura-chan forever and I will keep my promise. I am the Kanoha no Atsuku Shiki Aoyaju, Kanoha's beautiful green wild beast, Rock Lee. Lee introduced. He briefly looked at Sakura, who had just exited the tree. My beautiful blossom, are you all right? Yes, I am okay. She said with a blush. I don't know why, but they are after Sasuke's life. We can't allow them to hurt him. Yash, they will not get past me. Lee exclaimed. Sakura took a deep breath and did some hand seals. Megan Sakuramori. Demonic Illusion Cherry Blossom Forest, Sakura shouted. The area changed and everyone was surrounded in a forest of cherry blossoms. The trees suddenly exploded and began to circle the Odo team. Sakura and Lee moved, using the Jinjutsu as cover. Kin tried to dispel it but she couldn't do to cuts to her body. Zaku fired his attack into the whirlwind, but he paid for it with some crushing blows. Dosu was the only one who was calm throughout the attack and listened for the two. When he got a beat of someone coming at him from his blind side, he acted. He threw a punch at the approaching figure. Sakura blocked the attack with a kunai, but that would be a mistake. He focused the sounds that reverberating off the clash and used his chakra to redirect it. Sakura suddenly felt ill and disorientated. She grabbed her head and stumbled. This caused the Jinjutsu to fail and left her wide open to an attack. Dosa hit her in the gut and watched as she dropped to the ground. She threw up as she fell and felt the darkness coming. The last thing she heard was Lee shouting her name. Naruto groaned as he sat up. He couldn't believe the pain that he was in. He tried to recall what happened and where he was. He heard some noise coming from the outside and wondered what was going on. He noticed that he was in a hollowed-out tree. When he looked out the entrance, his eyes shot up wide, the reason being that he just witnessed Sasuke pull a guy's shoulders out of their sockets. Naruto was widely awake and looked around. He saw Sakura down and that guy with the large eyebrows down as well. Team Asuma didn't look all that good either. He was wondering what the hell happened. That's when he saw Sasuke stalking toward the last remaining guy. He watched as the guy was giving up his scroll in order to leave. He saw Sasuke smirk evilly and rush to attack. Naruto wasn't about to let this happen. He moved and got in Sasuke's path. Sasuke skid to a stop and frowned at Naruto. Get out of the way Dobe. Sasuke ordered. I don't think so. What the hell is going on with you? What the hell are those tattoos? Naruto demanded. 
I don't know, and I don't care. It has given me the power I was looking for. These Odonim will be my first test of this power. Now move. Sasuke ordered again. Why don't you make me? Naruto challenged. Gladly. Sasuke said and vanished. Naruto narrowed his eyes as Sasuke appeared in front of him. He saw that fast punch coming at him. Naruto dodged the blow and grabbed Sasuke by the head. He picked the surprise boy off the ground and slammed his head into the ground. He lifted his head again and drove it into the ground, this time harder. Sasuke groaned and went unconscious. The tattoos that he had were going into a spot on his neck. When Naruto saw the mark, he got really nervous. He stood up and looked at Timasuma. Okay, can someone explain what the hell is going on? Naruto asked. Sakura moaned and struggled to open her eyes. The moan caught the attention of everyone there and one of them checked on her. Hey forehead, can you hear me? The voice asked. Sakura could barely make the voice out but after a while, she could begin to hear clearly. She recognized it as someone she knew. Inobuta, is that you? Sakura asked groggily. Woo, am I glad that you are all right. She then turned to someone. Hey Naruto, she's waking up. Ino shouted. Sakura looked around and saw Naruto walk up to her. He gave her a grin. There's our hero. How are you feeling? Naruto asked. I feel strange and my hearing isn't all there. What's going on? Sakura asked. She then remembered what happened. Where's Lee? His teammates came and took him. He was really impressed with you. He said a lot of sweet things about your skills and your beauty. Clearly love is blind. Naruto joked. I would hit you if I could. Sakura said with a glare. Naruto just snorted and helped Ino sit her up. Sakura was led to a tree and leaned up against it. She looked around and noticed Shikamaru and Choji. She saw that Sasuke was by himself and was ignoring everyone. She then looked at Naruto. What happened when I went down? Sakura asked. Well, your fall distracted Lee enough for them to get a clean hit on him. Shikamaru's team came and saved you guys, but then they were beaten. That when Sasuke woke up. I wouldn't tell you the details, but let's just say I had to stop him before he killed that Odo team. It seems that they were working for that guy who attacked us. Naruto said. They were working for Orochimaru? Sakura said. Naruto nodded and sat down next to her. So what's our next move Naruto? Well, we got an earth scroll and you still have our heaven scroll. So, we're making a beeline to the tower once you got your bearings. Naruto said. Sakura nodded and rested. She looked around and noticed that everyone was keeping a good distance away from Sasuke. She looked at Naruto and saw that his eyes were narrowed as he looked at him. What did Sasuke do while she was out? Whatever it was, it wasn't good. Naruto and Sakura made their way to their room. They made good time and entered the tower before sunset. Once inside, they read the thing on the wall and figured out that they could open the scroll. Irika appeared and was very happy to see the team. He congratulated the team but could see the fiction between members. Before he could ask what was wrong, Kakashi appeared and took Sasuke with him. It was surprising but then Naruto got a suspicious look on his face. Irika took his attention away and led the two to their room. As Naruto opened the door, he was suddenly tackled. Sakura looked ready to help but Irika held her back and just shook his. She looked at the scene and watched as Anko began to check every part of Naruto's body. The blonde was trying to escape but Anko had him in a strong grip. Hey, what's the big idea Anko and Izan? Naruto demanded but was ignored after a few more moments, Enko let out a sigh of relief. Good, he didn't place that mark on you. Sorry about that Naruto, but I had to sure. Enko said. 
If you're talking about the mark that is on you, then you need to talk to Sasuke. Orochimaru was after him. Naruto said. Yeah, I know. We figured that out. I tried to get the Hokage to take Sasuke out of the exams, but Kakashi stopped me. He was so sure of himself that he could deal with the curse mark. I think that's he's being foolish. Anko said. So that's why he took him? Sakura asked. Irika nodded at her question. She then looked at Naruto. Naruto, what happened when I was out? I noticed that you were glaring at him and the others kept a wide berth. Naruto looked at her with a serious face. I only know from what I woke up to. I saw Sasuke pull one of those Odonin shoulders out of the sockets. He was then stalking over to the last remaining one with a pleased smile on his face. I got in his way and told him that it was enough. He snarled and actually threw a punch at me. Too bad for him I wasn't in the mood and I dodged it while grabbing his face and slamming it into the ground, knocking him out. Naruto explained. He then turned to Enko. I think Gigi is making a mistake in allowing Sasuke to continue. He's a danger to everyone if this doesn't work. I know, but my hands are tied. Look, just get some sleep you too. I will come to get you in the morning for breakfast. Anko said. The two nodded and entered the room. Anko just kept her eye on her otudo for a while. She did not forget what her bastard of a sensei said to her. There are worse people out there that want your dear otudo, and you are nowhere strong enough to defeat them. Even I would be wary to get in their way. That comment bothered her so much. Who were these people and why were they after him? She had to find answers and now. Tomorrow, she would be taking him aside. She did not wish to allow him to know certain techniques that she learned. It was why she always got him jutsu scrolls. However, whoever these people were that even Orochimaru was weary of those techniques would be a boon rather than a curse. Chapter 24 Enko walked down the hallway after leaving Naruto and Sakura alone. She was still thinking of her former sensei's words. She didn't want to believe him, but he was not one to say things, just for the hell of it. If there was a group after Naruto, what would they want with him? The only thing that Naruto had was the QB. If that was the reason, then he would be in deep trouble. Anyone after the power of the QB could not be doing anything good. She sighed and realized that maybe she would have to break her rule. She was violently against teaching him any hibi, snake, jutsu, but maybe she could teach him one. She had to sleep on it first. As she made her way to her room, she saw Kakashi standing by the door of the medical bay. She really didn't want to deal with him, so she just walked right by him. She saw Sasuke laying on the bed but paid him no mind. She was about to turn the corner when Kakashi spoke. That's kind of rude Anko. You didn't even say hello. Kakashi said in a teasing tone. Why would I say hello to you? We're not on good terms at the moment. Anko said and turned to continue on to her room. Are you still angry with me? Look, I didn't mean to step on your toes, but we can't take Sasuke out of the exams. If Orochimaru is interested in him, then he could convince him to join him. Sasuke is easily persuaded and with that curse mark, he will seek Orochimaru out. If we take him out of the exam, it will give him a reason to leave. Kakashi explained. So we should just kiss his ass just because he's the last Uchiha? Man, if you weren't pathetic before, Anko said with a laugh. Kakashi suddenly got serious and faced the laughing Anko. If you have something to say Anko, then just say it. Kakashi said. Anko looked at him and grinned at him. You suck Kakashi. You carry this air of superiority and you believe that you are an elite but you suck. As a sensei, you are terrible. In decision making, you are terrible. You will never get my respect Kakashi until you realize that you are doing something wrong. Since I don't see that happening, I'm just going to sit back and watch as all your failures bite you in the ass. Anko said with a smile. 
she could see that Kakashi was not happy, but she didn't really care. If he was as responsible as he claimed, she wouldn't say anything. Well, I have to get some sleep. Keep careful watch on your student Kakashi. Anko walked away leaving a very angry Kakashi behind. The next day found Naruto with Anko in a training hall. He woke up with Sakura and the two went to get something to eat. They ran into Team Karinai and Team Asuma and ate breakfast with them. They ignored the Suna team that and Kabuto's team and just talked to each other. Once they were done, Enko came by and took Naruto with her. Alone, Enko faced him who was pretty confused as to why she wanted him here. Okay Gaki, brat, I know that I wasn't going to teach you any of my special jutsu but I have decided to change my mind. Enko said. Really? What changed? I know that you were really adamant about me not learning any of those jutsu. Naruto said. That was until I met my old sensei and heard some disturbing things. I can't prove it but there are some harsh times coming. It's better that you be prepared for anything. So, I'm going to teach one of my most used jutsu, Sanaijushu, Hidden Shadow Snake Hands. Anko said. Yes. I can't wait. Naruto exclaimed. Anko slapped him in the back of the head. Naruto calmed down and faced her. Anko nodded and began to teach Naruto the hand seals for the jutsu. Three days later, the second exam ended. As everyone filed into the large room, everyone wondered what was coming up next. They stood and waited for someone to speak. After a while, and seeing that there were a lot of teams, the Hokage spoke. Congratulations, you have finished the second part of the exams. There was a sigh of relief from everybody. However, there are just too many of you left. Because of that, we will be holding a preliminary bout. What? shouted Zaku. We just got here. Are you tell us that we have to fight? Yes. Hiruzen said. These exams are a substitution of a war. Will your enemies hold back just to allow you to rest? Zaku growled at the old man but before he could speak, one of his ninja jumped forward. Hokage-sama, allow me to continue on. He said. Hiruzen nodded and allowed him to speak. I am Gekko Heiate and I am the proctor of this preliminary round. Well, we'll randomly be cycling your names on the board that is descending right now. The winner of that match will move on to the final exam. Is there anyone who does not or cannot continue? Proctor, I would like to give up. I have not fully healed up from my battles. Kabuto said. Very well. You may leave the floor. Hayate said. Kabuto left the floor and out of the tower. Seeing that no one else was giving up, the board began to cycle the names. The first two names were Uchiha Sasuke and Kinyuta Dosu. Everyone cleared the floor and made their way to the balconies above. Sasuke faced Dosu with a smirk, but Dosu looked at him with complete seriousness. Naruto saw this and was a little worried. I'm a little worried. That Dosu guy doesn't look like he's playing around. Naruto said to Sakura. You don't need to worry about Sasuke Naruto. He will do fine. Kakashi said. Well, of course he will. He's your only student after all. Naruto spat out. Kakashi gave Naruto a frown while Sakura elbowed him for being disrespectful. The fight got started and Sasuke wanted to end this fast. He attacked Dosa directly and that would prove to be a huge mistake. Dosu used his melody arm to block the attacks and generated sound with each attack. He then used the sound that he generated to surround the area. Sasuke started to get sluggish and sloppy. He was staggering and Dosu used this to attack. He pummeled Sasuke who couldn't block his attacks. He tried to activate his Sharingan but it only made his head hurt. He was sent flying into the wall. As Sasuke struggled to stand, Dosa sneered at him. Is this all you can do? No wonder he gave you that power. You are weak. I'm going to finish you off and I'll show that it was a mistake to give you that power. 
Dosa said. Sasuke snarled and did some hand seals. Katan Gokaku no Jutsu. Fire release great fireball technique, Sasuke fired a stream of fire at Dosu, but he dodged it. Sasuke kept it up, but Dosa kept avoid the attack. Dosa threw several kunai at Sasuke, making him stop his attack and dodge. Sasuke did another set of seals and called out his attack. Katan Hosanka no Jutsu. Fire release Phoenix Sage Fire Technique, Sasuke shouted and spat out several balls of fire. Dosa countered by releasing a supersonic blast of sound. It dispelled the flames and shattered the shuriken. Dosa rushed Sasuke and threw a punch with his arm. Again, Sasuke was feeling a sense of vertigo. Dosa beat on Sasuke again and was making Sasuke look like an academy student. He jumped away to get some distance and to clear his head but Dosa would not allow him. Realizing that he needs to get one good blow, he remembered what his Sharingan copied earlier. When Dosa lashed out again, Sasuke disappeared. Dosa was shocked until he was launched in the air by a strong kick. He was stunned and looked around for what hit him when Sasuke appeared behind him. Sasuke lashed out with a punch that caught Dosu in the jaw. He spun again and landed another blow to the chest. Sasuke continued his assault, using the descent to increase the power of his blows. At the end, he slammed the heel of his foot into Dosu's stomach just as his body hit the ground. Dosu growled in pain and could feel the contents of his stomach come up. He laid on the ground, unmoving and out cold. Sasuke moved away and struggled to get to his feet. He was hurt and he was beaten but he was victorious. Hayate announced him as the winner. Ino cheered for him but Sakura did not. Naruto just looked at him and shook his head. Sasuke made his way up to his team and gave everyone a look. When he saw Naruto smirk at him, he narrowed his eyes. You find something funny? Sasuke asked with an edge. Just that your title of Rookie of the Year is a lie. That was just pathetic Uchiha. And what's really funny is that you had to steal a move from your comrades to win. That move you used to start that combo, I've seen that guy with the super hairy eyebrows use that same move. Face it your title is nothing more than a joke. Naruto said. Sasuke threw a punch, but Naruto caught it. He added some pressure and forced Sasuke to his knees. That's enough Naruto. Kakashi ordered. Naruto scoffed and released him. He walked away and went to the other side of the balcony. He ignored the calls of his sensei and stopped at the edge of the balcony. Everyone looked at the scene with wide eyes and confused looks. Even the Hokage looked concerned about what he just saw. Kakashi looked over to the Hokage only to see a smirking Anko. He ignored it for now and helped his student. The board cycled again and two more names popped up. It was Yamanaka Ino versus Sabaku no Kankuro. The two came down to the floor to fight. Kankuro looked at her with a smug grin which pissed the girl off. She was going to make this guy walk around in his underwear. Once Hayate started the match, Ino quickly used her specialty. Shinten Shin no Jutsu. Mind body switch technique, Ino shouted. Kankuro was surprised as the Jutsu hit him. Ino slumped down and Kankuro stood still. That was until the bundle unraveled and the real Kankuro appeared. He then dispels the henge, transformation, over his puppet. He moved the puppet and has it show all his weapons. He held there and poised it to kill her. He looked at Hayate, who announced him the winner. He goes back to his team while Asuma comes to get Ino. He knew that the girl would not be happy about her lost. After a while, the names cycled on the board. The next two names were Aburim Shino against Tsuruji Masumi. The two appeared on the ground and they faced each other. Hayate started the match and Masumi attacked Shino with gusto. Shino dodged his attacks and kept ahead of the larger teen. Masumi continued to attack him and managed to corner Shino. He then did something that pissed off Anko and Naruto. He seemed to dislocate his joints and began to choke out Shino. The ability was too much like Orochimaru's. Heh, 
I've got you now, kid. If you surrender, I won't kill you. Misumi said. Shino did not answer him. After a few minutes and a few threats, Misumi got angry. He snapped Shino's neck and was smirking at his victory. It suddenly turned to shock when Shino dissolved into a lot of kikachu, parasitic insects. Misumi would not escape in time as he was consumed by them. He kicked and screamed but it soon stopped and Misumi was no longer moving. Shino appeared next to his fallen foe and the bugs returned into his coat. Shino is declared the winner and he moves back to his team. On the balcony, Naruto watched Shino and was a little freaked out. He always thought that Shino was a quiet, reserved person, but he saw a vicious side to him that he would have to be careful about. Hey Naruto. A voice said. Naruto turned to see Shikamaru. You want some company? Yeah, it was getting lonely. He joked. They stood there and waited for the next match to begin. What made you come here? Ino woke up and started to complain. Her voice was annoying and I didn't want to deal with it. So, what's up with you and Sasuke? I know that you guys don't really like each other, but that looked kind of personal. Is it because of what happened in the forest? Shikamaru asked. It isn't just the forest. You saw what he did. Sasuke has no remorse about what he does and Kakashi doesn't police his actions. You think that was the only move he copied with his Sharingan? I bet you right now he has it active and is looking to copying some more moves. It might be a powerful tool but that doesn't give him the right to abuse it. Trust me, he does that shit to me again, I'll bleed his ass. Naruto said. The board stopped on two more names. It was Sakura vs. Tsuchikin. Shikamaru saw Naruto get a smile on his face. What are you so happy about? It's Sakura. Shikamaru said. Get ready to see something amazing Shikamaru. Sakura isn't that same annoying girl that you remember. Chapter 25 Sakura took a deep breath and relaxed herself. She faced the Odo Genin who was glaring at her. She figured that she wasn't happy about her victory over her. She could tell that she wanted to do some real damage to her. Kin kept glaring at her and couldn't wait for the match to begin. Sakura turned to Naruto who gave her a nod. She nodded back and faced her opponent. I would be more worried about yourself, not your teammate. I'm going to make you hurt after what you did to me. Kin snarled. Sakura didn't say anything and waited. When Hayate started the match, both quickly made a move. Kin threw several senbon at Sakura but Sakura dispelled into Sakura leaves. Kin was surrounded by the leaves and Kin cursed. She activated the bells that she had kept on the senbon. The ring bells dispelled the leaves and Sakura was frozen, holding her hands to her ears. Kin smirked and attacked Sakura punching her in the jaw. He smiled disappeared when Sakura was replaced with a log. The sound stopped and Kin turned into Sakura's fist. She was set bouncing off the ground. She got to her knees just in time to see Sakura use the Bunshin, clone. Kin was quick to her feet and allowed the two clones to pass by her and attacked the last Sakura. She ducked and dodged Kin's attacks, staying at distance because of Kin using Sinbon between the knuckles. She lashed out with a low kick that stopped Kin's movement and tripped her up. She quickly connected with a knee that rocked Kin's head. She then hit her with a five-punch combo and ended it with a kick to the gut. As Kin tumbled Sakura did some hand seals and disappeared. When Kin got to her feet again she could not find the short pink-haired girl. She then felt someone grab her ankle. She cried out as she was dragged underground. When the smoke cleared, Kin's head was the only thing visible. Sakura pulled out a kunai and placed it on her forehead. Kin snarled at her but she could not move and she was in a non-favorable position. Hei declared the match over and Sakura the winner. Sakura relaxed and placed her kunai back in her holster. She bowed to Hei and made her way back to the balcony. 
she could hear the sounds of Lee cheering and a group of Naruto's leading the chant S-A-K-U-R-A. S-A-K-U-R-A. She blushed at the two but loved the attention. There were many who were surprised by the victory. Ino couldn't believe that her rival had actually won. She didn't even know that Sakura knew Jutsu besides the academy ones. She suddenly felt depressed and wondered if she was any good to be a kunoichi. Shikamaru was impressed with Sakura's skills. He was there to save her and Lee from the Oto Ninja. She was already out cold and he figured that the injuries on the Oto team were because of Lee. Now, he was reconsidering that. The last was Kakashi. He had never taught Sakura those moves. He figured that Genjutsu was the way to go, but he never gave her any scrolls to work with. He definitely didn't teach her the Dotan Shinjuzanshu no Jutsu, Earth Release Double Suicide Decapitation Technique. He needed answers, and now. He walked over to his other two students and overheard them. Say it, say it, say it, say it, Naruto kept saying. All right, damn you. You were right and I was wrong, happy. Sakura exclaimed. Yes, yes I am. As I said, simplicity is better than being flashy. Using simple genjutsu and that jutsu I taught, you were able to win the match. Naruto said with a grin. Sakura just gave him a dirty glare before softening it. Thanks again Naruto for helping me out. I don't think I would be nearly as strong if it wasn't for you. Sakura said. That's when she noticed Kakashi. No problem. Unlike Sasuke, I won't ignore you and unlike Kakashi, I won't abandon you. Naruto said. He noticed that she got quiet and saw her eyes. He looked behind him and saw Kakashi. The two looked at each other before Kakashi turned and walked back over to where he was. Sakura just sighed and gave Naruto a look. Naruto did not look apologetic and turned his attention back to the match that was about to start. It was Akato Yoroi vs. Sabaku no Tamari. Tamari readied herself as did Yoroi. Hei began the match and Yoroi rushed her. Tamari was quick to blow him away with her Tessin iron fan. Yoroi hit the wall hard as Tamari backed away to get more of a distance. He got up and tried again to get close to her, but Tamari would not allow that to happen. She opened her fan fully and waited. When he got close enough, he attempted to use his speed to get close. He managed to get very close to a surprise Tamari. However, Tamari smirked and vanished. Yoroi was surprised until he heard Tamari speak. Kamaitashi no Jutsu. Sickle Weasel Technique, was her cry. Yoroi was left up by a violent whirlwind. He cried out as he got cut up by the slicing winds. Heiate awarded Tamari the match and told her to stop. She stopped her jutsu and allowed Yoroi to drop to the ground. Everyone winced when he landed head first onto the concrete. She just walked back to her team without a care. Shikamaru, Naruto and Sakura watched with some worry. Those Suna ninja are kind of vicious, don't you think? Sakura asked. Considering how they live and where they live, it isn't too surprising. We should all be careful. Shikamaru said. The board cycled again and Naruto smirked at who was next. He also smiled due to who he was facing. Well Shikamaru, good luck on your match. Naruto said. Shikamaru looked at the board and sighed. He would be going up against 10-10. He slowly made his way downstairs and faced his opponent. He could see that the girl looked very annoyed with him and his attitude. What the hell is your problem? Aren't you going to defend yourself? Ten Ten demanded. What's the point? I don't even want to be here. I especially don't want to fight a girl. Shikamaru stated. What does that mean? Ten Ten growled. It's just that all women are troublesome. Shikamaru said. Ten Ten immediately pulled out two scrolls and called out her technique. Sashoryu, twin rising dragons, Ten Ten roared. Smoke exploded, taking the form of dragons. 
They spun in the air and reached the ceiling. The smoke cleared and two scrolls were revealed. Ten Ten jumped in the middle of the two scrolls that were still spinning. Ten Ten summoned an array of weapons and began to attack Shikamaru with some gusto. The boy looked at the weapons and began to run. Ten Ten attempted to kill Shikamaru who just kept running. It didn't help Shikamaru that Naruto was egging the girl on. After a few minutes, Ten Ten finally ran out of weapons. Shikamaru sighed in relief until he saw Ten Ten's hands move. Her weapons came out of the ground and floated in the air. Oh crap. Shikamaru had to continue to run as the weapons came at him again. Ten Ten missed the running boy again and attempted to move her weapons again. Shikamaru wasn't about to let that happen. He did a seal and his shadow connected with the wires. He used it to connect with Ten Ten's shadow. Now in control, he used Ten Ten to turn her weapons on herself. Ten Ten was very confused and surprised at her actions. She couldn't move her arms to dispel the jutsu and was now at Shikamaru's mercy. With no other choice, Ten Ten had to surrender. Shikamaru released her and quickly left the floor when he was declared the winner. He reached Naruto who was now alone again. He glared at his friend who just smirked at him. You could have made that match a little exciting. Naruto said with a smirk. I hate you so much right now. Shikamaru said. He quickly hid behind Naruto when Tenten passed by. She attempted to glare a hole through Shikamaru. Naruto just chuckled and turned his attention to back to the grounds. The board cycled names again and it was Inazuka Kiba against Akimichi Choji. The two boys dropped to the ground and prepared to fight. Kiba was cocky and told Akimaru to stay out of this. He used the Shikyaku no Jutsu for legs technique and attacks. Choji stood his ground and took the blow from Kiba. However, Choji absorbed the blow and threw Kiba back several feet. The boy was surprised and tried again. Choji took the blow again and sent him flying again. Naruto was impressed and looked at Shikamaru. Wow, I didn't know Choji was so strong. Naruto said. He's not really strong, but he's using his brain a little. He's using his clan's ability to absorb the damage and return it, using Kiba's own energy against him. Shikamaru said. That's pretty cool. Naruto said. Kiba growled that Choji would was standing in the same position. He called Akamaru to his side and gave him a pill. Akamaru's fur turned red and his energy spike. He jumped on Kiba's head and the boy did a signal seal. Jujin Bunshin. Beast human clone, Kiba, called out and Akamaru turned into a copy of Kiba. The two Kiba moved and attacked Choji. Choji stayed on the defensive and was parrying every attack of Kiba's. He was using mostly throws and redirects to combat the two. Kiba was getting frustrated but quickly calmed himself. He threw two smoke balls at Choji and blinded him. They both used this to attack Choji. Choji couldn't help himself but take some blows from the two. That's when Kiba decided to finish it. Gatsuga. Fan passing fine, Kiba said. The two began to spin and came at Choji to finish the match. Baika no Jutsu. Multi size technique, Choji called out. He grew in size and got very big. When Kiba's and Akamaru's attack hit, Choji was able to absorb at the brunt of the attack and threw the two drills away and into the wall. The two crashed into the wall and grunted. Choji decided that it was time to attack. Slipping his arms, legs and head inside, Choji began to roll. Nikudan sent Sha. Human bullet tank, Choji shouted and quickly rolled towards them. Kiba shook the cobwebs out but he saw the large rolling ball coming at him. He looked at Akamaru and told Akamaru to move. They did and Choji crashed into the wall. Kiba and Akamaru used the Gitsuga again but Choji used the roll to launch himself from the wall and clash against the Gitsuga. The attacks were batted away and sent flying. Choji managed to stop and took to the air. Using the gravity, 
Choji brought his full weight down on one of the kibas. The kiba gasped before turning back into Akamaru. Kiba roared at Choji for hurting his friend and charged at him with everything. Choji rolled at him as well. Kiba did a powerful tsuga, passing Fang, and Choji increased his speed. The two moves clashed and there was a large explosion. Everyone watched the smoke, awaiting a victor. When it did clear, they all saw Choji and Kiba on the ground. They were both not moving and both had swirly eyes. Hey 8 checked them both and stood. This match has been declared a draw. Hey 8 said. While the outcome was not what some wanted, people were impressed with the fight. Karina went to get her student and Asuma did the same with Choji. Naruto had to say that was a very interesting match. It looks like things are starting to pick up. Let's see, Naruto said and looked around to see who was still left. There's the guy with the large eyebrows, myself, the guy with his arms and slings, Hinata, that Niji guy, and the sand guy. Oh man, I can't wait to go. Calm down Naruto, why must you always be so excited? Shikamaru said. Naruto was about to say something when the next two names were shown. Naruto's face took a serious expression when he saw that it would be Hinata against her cousin Niji. He looked across to see Hinata had a similar expression on her face. As Niji made his way down, he appeared right next Naruto. Let's see if your influence has done anything to her. In the end, it is her fate to be a loser, just like you. Niji said and walked off. Naruto just glared at the retreating form of Niji and really resisted to toss a kunai to the back of his head. He looked back toward Hinata who was also making her way down. The two locked eyes with each other for a brief moment. Naruto gave her a thumbs up and a goofy grin. Hinata smiled and nodded at him before continuing. Shikamaru looked at Naruto before facing the field. Do you think that she will do well against Niji Naruto? Shikamaru asked seriously. I think so. I believe that Hinata will not just show Niji just how strong she is but she going to show just how strong a Hyuga can really be. Naruto said. The two focused on the floor and waited for the match to begin. Chapter 26 Hinata walked down and faced her cousin, Niji. She was very nervous and fidgeted for a bit. Niji saw this and narrowed his eyes. I thought that you have changed, but I guess that I was wrong. You are still that scared little mouse that is too afraid of her own shadow. It is your fate after all. Niji sneered. Hinata looked like she was going to break down, but she then closed her eyes and remembered. Flashback, so, your cousin hates you for his father's death? Weren't three at the time? Why does he believe that a three-year-old can fight a jonin? Naruto asked Hinata. They were at the ramen stand, Naruto treating her after their confrontation with Niji. The prick was insulting her in a roundabout way that he did not like. He then offered an ear to her and asked what that was about. That's one reason, but another reason is that he feels that I don't belong in the main house, because I am not the typical Hyuga. Hinata said sadly. Well that's a good thing. No offense, but most of clansmen are pricks and your dad is an ass. Naruto said, gaining a gasp from Hinata. You shouldn't worry about Niji either. He's just a coward who's blaming you for no good reason. You need to just look him in the eyes one day and tell him that he's a jerk and delusion. Oh, if he tries to break you down again, just turn it on him and tell him to bring a bitch. That earned him a slap on the head by I am. Hinata giggled and just smiled. Present Hinata opens her eyes and looked at Niji with some confidence. Niji saw this and sneered. Before he could talk, Hinata stopped him. I know what you're going to say, and you can just save your words cousin. I will not be put down by your words, because they are nothing more than an excuse. I am sorry that your father died, but I will not be blamed for it anymore. I will not carry the guilt of his death on my shoulders, just to make you happy. If you want to hurt me, then you are welcome to try. However, Hinata activated her Byakugan without a hand sign and got into a stance. You will find it much harder than you realized. 
So, in the words of my best friend, bring it bitch. Hinata said. There was a yank shout and Niji was snarling in rage. He activated his Byakugan and slipped into the traditional stance. Seeing this, Hinata changed her stance and readied herself. Seeing that the talk was over, Heiit started the match. Niji struck out to hurt Hinata badly, but Hinata moved and redirected the blow. She twirled and pushed Niji away. Shocked, Niji spun around and lashed out with a kick. Hinata redirects the kick, throwing him a little off balance. Niji gains control and strikes out. Hinata moves with grace, avoiding and redirecting his jukin, gentle fist, strikes. When Niji tried to strike her in the chest, Hinata blocked his hands and began circling them. Niji could not break free, but he wouldn't have to as Hinata locked his arms to his chest. She then slammed her other palm into his trapped arms and sent him skidding back a few steps. Hinata took her stance and waited. Niji looked at her with shock, which quickly changed to rage. What the hell are you doing? That's not the Jukin. He roared. It might not be the clan's Jukin, but it is my Jukin. What's wrong? Aren't you the prodigy of the Huga? Hinata mocked. Niji growled and charged at Hinata. The two engaged each other again and the fight was on. Everyone watched with some surprise. Who would have thought that the meek and shy Hinata would be doing so well against the Huga prodigy? What did she mean about her Jukin? Guy looked at the fight with Sama before smiling. He then made his way over to Naruto. Naruto Kuen, was it you who inspired this youthful behavior in Hinataheim, princess? Guy asked. Naruto looked at him with some confusion. Sakura and Shikamaru looked at him in confusion as well. Guy explained himself more. That form and style, it is not the traditional Jukin. Did you encourage this change? Oh that, why didn't you say that in the first place? Naruto asked with confusion. He quickly turned back to the fight. Well, I only made a suggestion after we had a spar. I saw that the traditional Jukin wasn't working, so I suggested that she creates her own. She was resistant at first, but I managed to coax her into it. You mean annoy her into it? Shikamaru said, earning a glare from Naruto. That is very youthful of her. She has done what I've been saying for quite a while. She has created a soft style to the Jukin. Guy said. Back to the fight, both Hugas were having quite a fight. Hinata's created soft style was keeping up with Niji's strikes. Niji was starting to get frustrated because her style was actually working. He had taken several blows from her that hurt like hell. He was getting annoyed and decided to stop this now. Niji changed his strategy and used his fingers to strike Hinata's arm. He did the same to her other arm. Hinata caught his arm and pulled him toward her. She slammed her shoulder into his chest and made him back off. Hinata realized something was wrong and used her Byakugan to check her chakra. That's when she noticed that Niji sealed the chakra in her arms. She looked up to see the smile on his face. You may have used that abomination of the Jukin, but the games are over. As you can see, I have sealed off the chakra in your arms. What will you do now? Niji asked with some humor. He pushed off his back leg to attack. Hinata took a deep and flared her chakra. Niji watched with some concern and it turned to shock when he saw the chakra return to her arms. He lashed out but she knocked it away. She did the same with his other arm and began to dispel her chakra out of all her points. Niji was wide-eyed as Hinata covered herself in chakra. Hakusho Katen Eight trigrams palms revolving heaven, Hinata roared and spun. A spinning dome of chakra appeared and grind into Niji, who was wide open. He was then flung several feet across the floor, bouncing twice and landing in a heap. Hinata stopped spinning and dropped to a knee. Everyone watched with surprise. What were they just witnessing? The only one cheering was Naruto who pumping his fists in the air. Sakura and Shikamaru could only watch with wide eyes. Was Hinata really that strong? 
Even Karina looked on in surprise. Hinata took a few breaths. The Katen was still new to her and she didn't have the stamina to do another one. It took a lot out of her just to push enough chakra into her system to undo the blocked chakra points. She could only hope that the fight was over. She did not get her wish. Niji struggled to stand to his feet. Once up, Niji looked at her with extreme hate. She could see his rage and she needed to gather a proper defense. It was not to be where Niji teleported right in front of her in a very familiar stance. Hak Rokujian, show. Eight trigrams, sixty-four palms, Niji shouted. With amazing skill and speed, Niji hit Hinata with sixty-four strikes to her body. The blows were hard and painful, forcing Hinata to spit blood. Niji ended his attack, throwing a powerful palm strike to her stomach that sent her flying across the air. Hinata hit the ground and bounced. Hinata then hit ground and stayed there unmoving. Niji wasn't done and he moved to end her. He ignored Hayate and charged her. That's when he caught something out of the corner of his eye. It was a fist with three kunai in between the fingers. It was stopped short of piercing his head. Everyone looked at the scene with shock and awe. Niji was held by Guy from behind. Hayate had his fingers on his forehead and Karinai had his arm. The person who was holding the kunai, his arm was held by Enko, he was held back by a combination of Kakashi and Shikamaru's cagemane no jutsu, shadow imitation technique. Niji looked and saw the rage in the eyes of Naruto. Medics quickly rushed to the Hinata's prone form and got to work. Naruto was struggling to get to Niji and Shikamaru was having a time keeping Naruto in place. Damn it Naruto, calm the hell down. Anko shouted. Calm down? Calm down? This prick deserves to die for what he did. I don't care if it was a match. He tried to kill his family all because he got his ass handed to him by someone he deemed weak. He's the weak one. Naruto shouted. You dare to call me weak loser. Niji shouted and glared at him. You are weak. You're too much of a coward to face things, and you put it on other people. You've bullied Hinata for as long as she had been alive, and she finally stood up to you. You and those assholes in your clan deemed her as weak, and she just showed you just how strong she really is. She actually strong, and your ego can't handle it. Naruto spat. Niji was seething, and looked to go after him, but Guy held him in place. Enough, both of you. Hiruzen shouted. This got everyone attention. Both Jenin turned to face him and had sweat rolling down their cheek. He glared at the both of them. The winner of the match is Hyuga Niji due to interference. What? Naruto roared. You will be silent Jenin. Hiruzen stated. Guy, take your student to the balcony. Anko, take Naruto to the other side and watch over him. That's all. Final and over, the two both relaxed, but they continued to glare at each other. You better pray that we do not meet in the finals. I will destroy you and put you in your place. Niji snarled. That goes for you, too, jackass. You better pray I don't win because if I do... I'm going to take my kunai, attach some explosive notes, shine that shit up and shove it straight up your ass. The jonin grabbed the two and led them toward the balconies. Anko lead Naruto past the Suna team and to the far corner of the other side. She made sure that she had a good grip on Naruto. Shikamaru finally relaxed and sat down. Oh man, that was troublesome. Shikamaru said. Are you all right, Shikamaru? Sakura asked him. Yeah, I'll be fine. Man, I hope that I don't fight Naruto in the finals. If he could resist my cage main no jutsu, I have no shot. Shikamaru said. The board cycles again and two names pop up. It was Rock Lee versus Gara. Naruto was glaring at Niji and flipping a kunai knife in the air. It would be so easy to just throw this weapon and bury it inside his head, but he knew that Anko would stop him. Anko just looked at him with a sigh and took the kunai away from him. That will be enough of that. 
There is a great match going on and you're missing it. Anko said. You think I care about this match right now? All I want to cut that son of a bitch into pieces for what he did. Naruto snarled. Come on Naruto, you know her situation with her clan. She's told you about. Why are you so surprised by what happened between the two? Anko asked. Because it's bullshit. She's been listening to that shit from those dried up drones all her life that she's useless. Before she met me, she was this shy girl would always stutter. We became friends and we both pushed each other to be better so we can accomplish our goals. She deserves respect for that. Besides, she is one of my precious people and my best friend. I don't like to see her hurt. Naruto said. Anko had hearts in her eyes and hugged Naruto, holding him in the air. That's just so cute. Why can't Irika be sweet like you? Anko asked with a pout. Maybe because rape, no matter what reason, is still illegal. Naruto muttered. Anko heard him and turned the hug into a rear naked chokehold. Naruto was flailing around, trying to escape death. The match between Lee and Gara ended in Gara's victory. Guy had to step in to save his student who was badly injured. Most of the injuries that he sustained were self-inflicted due to him using the Hashiman aid gates. Sakura was very concerned about Lee as it seems that his injuries were very bad. As Lee was carried off the floor, the final two genin got ready to fight. Abumi Zaku walked down to the floor, his arms being removed from the slings that he was wearing. Naruto was about to jump down to face him, but he was stopped by Anko. Okay, kid remember what we were talking about before they took Lee out of here. Anko said. All right already. Geez, you're acting like you're any better. What about that guy that been walking with a limp for two months? Naruto demanded. Hey, that bastard called me a whore. I am an active, vibrant woman who just enjoys a good time. Anko explained. Good time, yeah right. Sneaking into Irika's home and cutting pieces of his hair to make your Irika doll, he was cut off by Anko punching him in the jaw. Naruto hit the ground with a thud. Everyone just watched with a sweat drop on the back of their heads. Chapter 27 Naruto got off the ground and looked up at Anko. He gave her a glare before focusing on his opponent. The boy gave him an angry look and took both of his hands out of the slings. Naruto just looked at him like he was bored. I would have liked to fight the Uchiha, but you'll have to do. I don't care what that bitch told you to do. It isn't going to matter because I'm going to kill you. Zaku said. Naruto just raised an eyebrow at him but did not say anything. He looked at Heiate and raised one finger. He made his way to where Sakura and Shikamaru were standing. Hey Sakura, are you carrying that grooming razor? Naruto asked. Sakura looked at Naruto in surprise. Yeah. She answered. Let me borrow it for a while. Naruto said. Sakura gave him a look. No way. I'm not giving you my razor. I need it. Sakura said. Look, no one cares about your hairy legs. Just loan me the razor or I'm coming up there and taking it from you. Naruto said. Sakura looked ready to argue but she knew Naruto a little better. He was just as crazy as Anko and while he would not really hurt her, he would do something to devastate her. She sighed and pulled out her razor. She tossed it to Naruto who caught it. Thanks. After this is over, I'll get you a new one and those scrolls you wanted. Naruto said. He took off his coat and tossed it to the side. He gave Heid a nod and the Jonin nodded back to him. He raised his hand and started the match. Naruto flipped out the blade while Zaku quickly held out his arm, palm facing him. Zankaha! Decapitating airwaves, Zaku called out. Naruto vanished and the blast hit the wall. That's when Zaku felt a cut on his back. He threw his other arm back to fire another Zankaha but saw nothing. Another sting was felt as he was cut on his arm. 
he backed away, looking for Naruto. When he felt something touch his shoulder, he spun into an elbow. This was followed up with a knee, another elbow and finished with a side kick. Zaku was flying and hit the ground. He was quick to his feet and fired another Zankaha. It hit nothing. You're a one-trick pony, huh? Naruto asked from behind. Zaku turned to fire but Naruto caught the wrist. He cut his forearm in three places and cut his calf. Zaku dropped to a knee but fired another Zankaha from his other arm. Naruto jumped away and landed a distance away. Zaku was holding his bleeding arm as Naruto twirled the razor in his hand. Is that all you can do? That's pretty boring. Why don't you give up and I won't have to cut you up? Naruto said with a bored tone. You son of a bitch, I'm going to wipe you off the face of planet. He shouted. Naruto just sighed. Well, I tired. Since you're going to be a little girl about this, I want to test out this method Anko uses on her prisoners. Naruto said. For the next ten minutes, everyone was a witness to the most disturbing thing in the world. Everyone cringed at every cut Naruto made on Zaku. What was more disturbing to everybody was the fact that Naruto seemed to be enjoying himself. He was even doing a little dance as if he was listening to music. Zaku was on his knees, bleeding from several wounds all over his body. The only one cheering throughout the thing was Anko. She called for more blood and cheered when she got it. All right. All right. I, I give up. I fucking give up. Zaku shouted. Naruto stopped his dance and nodded at Zaku. He wiped the blood off on his pants and made her way to get his coat. He flipped the razor into the handle and calmly accepted his win, walking back over to Enko. The woman smiled and congratulated Naruto, praising him. Everyone just watched in silence as the two crazy people just smiled at what just happened. Hiruzen just pinched the bridge of his nose. He now regretted allowing Enko to train him. It was just like what Guy did to Lee. Naruto and Sakura made their way to the hospital. After getting Zaku off the floor and cleaning up the blood, everyone took lots to see who was fighting who in the finals a month from now. Naruto was glad for his drawing because he got that prick Niji. Sasuke got that Gara guy and Sakura got a bye. Naruto didn't really care about that now. He need to go and check on Hinata and hope that she was all right. Sakura came with him. When they got the room number, they made their way to Hinata's room. Their trip was stopped by Kakashi. You guys sure left in a hurry. Kakashi said. Well, I am going to check on Hinata with Naruto. Sakura said. Yeah, she also wants to check on Lee because she kind of interested in him. Didn't know she was into bowl cuts. Naruto added. It earned him a slap to the head. Anyway, I wanted to say that I'm proud of you too. You did well in these exams. However, I have a little dilemma. While I would love nothing more to train you all, I have to focus on only one of you. Sasuke's opponent is a serious threat and he will need my help to deal with it. Kakashi said. He watched both of his students and surprisingly, Naruto did not make a snide comment. Seeing his expression through his mask, Naruto spoke. What? This will probably be the only time I agree with you. Something is up with Gara. something dangerous. Besides, isn't like you weren't planning on focusing on Sasuke, with or without Gara. Kakashi held his tongue and gave the two an eye smile. I'm glad that you understand. However, I'm not going to leave you high and dry. Kakashi said. That's when someone made themselves known to the three. Guys, this is Ebisu. He'll be doing me a favor and training the both of you. Seriously? The closet pervert is going to be training the both us. You mean to tell me that you couldn't find each of us a sensei? You do know that the both of us are in the finals? What reason do you have to have us train with the same sensei? Naruto demanded. Look Naruto, can't you just accept my help just once? I'm trying to help you at least survive the finals. 
Kakashi explained. You know what that sound like to me? That sounds like that you don't believe that I will succeed in beating Niji. It sounds like you don't think that Sakura can go far. No insult to Ebisu because I see some improvement in Kanoamaru, but your meaning is hidden under those words. Because of that, you can take you help and keep it. Naruto said. He faced Ebisu and gave him a serious look. Sakura has the potential to be very good. She's hardworking and smart as hell. You do everything in your bag of tricks to make sure that she goes into the finals and kick as much ass as possible. Can you do it or are you all talk? Ebisu looked at Naruto and fixed his glasses. Who do you think you are talking to boy? I am training our future Hokage. Ebisu said with a smirk. With a nod, Naruto moves on to Hinata's room. Kakashi called out to him but the blonde ignored him. He continued on his trek and arrived to Hinata's room. He entered the room and saw her. Her chest was heavily taped due to the damage caused by Niji. This made him angrier. She was asleep and looked to be breathing a little better. He walked up to the side of her bed and looked at her. You did really good Hinata. You showed that bastard Niji just how strong you are. You did it on your own, without the help of your dick dad. Man, I can only image the look on his face when he hears that the daughter he deemed a failure was actually beating the so-called prodigy. Even Niji sensei was impressed with what you did. You're on your way Hinata to changing the clan for the better. Naruto told the sleeping girl with a smile. He then got serious. I'm going get him back Hinata. I'm going to mess Niji up so bad that you probably won't recognize him. I know that you might be upset with me for it but I'll take that. No one hurts my precious people and gets away with it. No one. Naruto said. He took Hinata's hand and gave it a squeeze. He then ran out of the room, not seeing the two adults that were listening in. Karinai had a small smile on her face, while Hayashi had a neutral look on his. He decided to head back to the compound. He would send someone to keep an eye on his daughter. He had much to think about. Kakashi made his way to see the Hokage. He needed permission to take Sasuke with him out of the village to train. However, that was the furthest thing from his mind. He was angry with Naruto again. His refusal of his help again just finally set him off. He didn't like how a child just kept questioning every decision that he made. He was the sensei, he was the student. He was supposed to do everything he said and accept the fact that he knew what was best. This challenging him thing was something he didn't like and it needed to stop. As he entered the office, he saw another one of his problem. To him, it was the cause of his current problem. Anko and Hiruzen turned to see Kakashi. Anko saw the angry look on his face and that his anger was directed to her. Anko frowned and wondered what he was going to complain about now. You got a problem Kakashi? Anko asked. Yeah, I have a problem. I have a problem with you and Naruto. Kakashi stated with an edge. Really? Why don't you tell me what we did this time? Anko asked. Naruto is a genin and he should start acting like it. You might find it amusing to challenge authority, but I don't like it. What I do with my team is not to be questioned or to be challenged. What I do is for his benefit. Kakashi said hotly. Oh, so he's just supposed to follow your lead like a damn robot? He's just supposed to ignore when he is being treated unfairly? Any ninja worth their salt would have called you out on your bullshit and you know it. You've been playing favorites and Naruto told you so. Respect is earned, not given, and you haven't earned any of his or mine. Anko shouted. Your involvement in Naruto's life has turned him as crazy as you. We already have a copy of Guy. We don't need a copy of you. Kakashi spat. Well, a copy of me and Guy are a lot better than a copy of you. What's your copy going to do? Is he going to leave behind his friend's body just to save his ass? Anko shouted. Kakashi was livid and looked ready to attack. 
That's when an oppressive killing intent flooded the room. Both Jonan turned to see the narrowed eyes of the Sandim Hokage. Both adults quickly shut up and stood up straight. Sweat rolled off their heads and waited for their leader to talk. The feeling went away and the old man gave the two a stern look. This discussion about Naruto has gone on long enough. I am tired of hearing the both of argue about the boy. Kakashi, Naruto has always been a free thinker and maybe he has become even more of a free thinker thanks to Enko, but that does not excuse your lack of training of your team. I have kept my eye on your team since that little information about your team's discord was brought to light. Sakura has such potential, but you don't nature it. Naruto is a ninja that is ready for knowledge, but you ignore it. Sir, Kakashi began but he cut off by a stern look. No more excuses Kakashi. You will own up to your mistakes. You have not been the jonin I believe you to be and I am very disappointed in your actions. After the exams are over, a complete review will be held on your performance. We will determine if you are fit to continue on as jonin sensei of your team. Do you understand? Hiruzen said. Yes sir. Kakashi said seriously. Anko, you are dismissed. I will get you that information as soon as I get it. Hiruzen said. Thank you sir. Anko said and made her way out of the office. Hiruzen turned his attention to Kakashi. Now, did you have something to ask me? Hiruzen asked. I would like permission to take Sasuke out of the village to train. He answered. You have it. Now go. Hiruzen said. Kakashi bowed and made his way out of the office. Hiruzen sighed and looked out the window. It always gave him peace of mind. He would need it for the coming storm that would hit the village. Chapter 28 Naruto was walking around and thought. While he was going to mess up Niji, he needed to train for it. Naruto admitted that Niji was really strong. He had sparred with Hinata before and he knew that the Jukin hurt. Sure, his could use his new jutsu that Anko taught him but the Byakugan would help him avoid it. A lot of his tricks would not work against him. So, he had to come up with a plan of attack. He was near the bathhouses when he saw a man on a frog. The man was clearly a pervert as he looked through a peephole. If there was one thing that Naruto did not like, it was perverts. He was a little hypocritical due to his own perverted jutsu but he ignored it due to the fact that he was only interested in one girl. Well, it was time to do what he did best, ruin someone day. Pervert alert. Pervert alert. Pervert around the bathhouse. Pervert around the bathhouse. Run. Flee. Escape. Naruto shouted. The man looked around to see where the voice was coming from but the alert sent the girls running. The man looked back to see them fleeing. He turned to the smiling blonde and was not happy. What the hell kid? Why would you do that? That was some good research material. He shouted. Research material? What, you can't get it up so you spy on young women to get off? Naruto asked. The man looked at Naruto with surprise before looking at him with rage. How dare you? Do you know who I am? He roared. Should I care? Naruto asked. That's when the man did a ridiculous dance with the frog. I am the greatest man among men. I am worshipped all around the world. Women flock to me in droves due to my manliness. I am the great Gama Sanin, Toad Hermit, the gallant Jiraiya. He shouted out. The frog blew out fire to end the routine. Naruto stared at the man before pulling out a big card that said three. Oh, screw you. Anyway, I guess I should report you. I think peeping is wrong and so is doing drugs. Naruto said and turned to leave. He was suddenly grabbed and turned to face the angry man. Hey kid, you just ruined my research and you need to make it up to me now. Jiraiya said. Excuse me? Naruto said with a raised eyebrow. You heard me brat. 
Now, what are you going to do to make it up to me? Jiraiya demanded. Naruto looked at Jiraiya before giving him a huge smile. Jiraiya made his way to the spot that Naruto told him about, a secret spring where only the hottest of females go. It was too good to be true but Jiraiya was a very huge pervert. He made his way there and was not disappointed. They were hot, very hot. Jiraiya could only giggle and pull out his telescope to view the lovelies in the water. He even took out a pad and began to scribble. He was getting a few good ideas until he was hoisted in the air. He then felt the air leave him as someone hit him hard in the gut. When he looked up, he was surrounded by some pretty women in towels. They did not look happy to see him. Hello ladies, how are you all this evening? Jiraiya asked nervously. You know, I thought the last warning we gave you perverts would have taught you something. This is a private spring used by the Kunoichi of this village and we will not be peeped on. Was the woman's growl. Jiraiya was shocked to hear this and knew that he had been had. He didn't have any time to curse as a bunch of fists descended onto him. Hiruzen couldn't keep the mirth off his face. If anyone would tell him that he would find one of his student, tied up, beaten and bare naked with the words pervert painted on him, he would not have believed it. However, this was Jiraiya and he tended to get into situations like that. So, you must have had a fun night yesterday. While I know the civilian women to be a little violent, I know a kunoichi beating when I see it. I've warned our shinobi not to spy on the kunoichi, and now I'm telling you. Hiruzen said with some amusement. Oh ha, ha, very funny sensei. When I get my hands on that little brat, I'll wring his neck. Jiraiya threatened. Hiruzen raised an eyebrow before laughing. So, you fell for one of Naruto's tricks. That boy is always doing something amusing. He choked out between laughs. Jiraiya growled until he recognized the name. Wait, are you talking about Uzumaki Naruto? That was Minato's brat? Jiraiya said. Yes. He has grown up in a very interesting way. I've come to regret it, but the two of them do make each other happy. Hiruzen said. What does that mean? Jiraiya asked. Well, Naruto has taken a surrogate sister. You might know her as Midarashi Anko. Jiraiya looked at Hiruzen like he was kidding. He just sighed at his expression. Yes, that Anko. While Naruto has developed a few of her traits, they do make the other happy. Naruto can be more open, and he does not hide behind that fake smile of his. Anko has become more parental since taking care of him. I believe that they need each other due to their similar lives. Hiruzen said. Is that so? Tell me more about this sensei. Jiraiya said. Hiruzen and his old student would be talking for quite a while. When Hinata awoke from her slumber, she was greeted by Kurinai and her caretaker, Ko, Ko was ordered to watch over her by her father. He would not explain why but he did tell her that her father was pleased with her performance. Hinata was surprised by this, but she was reminded that several of the elders were not too happy with her version of the Jukin. She asked if there would be consequences, but Ko did not believe that there would be. Korinai offered her a place to stay should things get unbearable at home. Hinata asked about the finals, and she was very concerned when she learned that Naruto would be facing Niji. Kurinai had told her about Naruto's attempt to kill her cousin. Naruto knew a lot about her life at the Hyuga compound and he was not happy. She even remembered when Naruto viciously pranked several elders for something that they did to her. To hear that her crush went after her cousin with a kunai worried her greatly. Naruto would do anything to make someone pay for hurting his friends. She wished that she could talk to him. Her wish was granted when the window to her room opened and an entered Naruto. He had that grin on his face and was holding a box of her favorite treat, cinnamon buns. Hey, you are looking a little better. I brought you a treat. Naruto said. Hinata clapped and took the box from Naruto. She opened it and took one of the buns and began to eat it with gusto. Naruto just smirked at her. That's when Hinata realized something. 
Why did you come through the window? Hinata asked. Oh that. Well, that guy that was guarding your door didn't look like the type to let me through due to my reputation. Plus, some of the doctors would have taken the box away from me. Naruto answered. Hinata accepted this before eating another cinnamon bun. After a brief silence, Hinata set the box to the side and looked at Naruto. I heard that you will be facing my cousin in the finals. Hinata said. Yeah, Naruto said a little somberly. He knew what Hinata wanted. Look Hinata, I know what you want but that's not going to happen. This bastard deserves the beating that I'm going to give him. He should not get away with what he did. Even if you know why he is that way? Hinata asked softly. That isn't the point. He tried to kill you. How can you just let that go? I'm sorry if you hate me for it but I'm going to lay waste to Niji. Naruto stated with conviction. He is my family Naruto. If you can't forgive your family, then you are very cold to the world. Haven't you forgiven everyone who has done things to you? Hasn't Enko done the same? Naruto, I am begging you, do not kill my cousin. Hinata begged with sadness. Naruto groaned and looked at Hinata's sad expression. He just couldn't resist her when she was like that. He never liked to see her sad. He groaned and gave her a pout. Okay, I wasn't going to kill him. Mess him up really well but not kill. If it will make you happy, I will not cut him up. I reserve the right to maim him though. Naruto said roughly. Hinata smiled and jumped out of her bed to hug Naruto. Naruto was surprised and took a step back. This proved to be a mistake as Hinata began to fall. Naruto attempted to catch her but he tripped over his feet. The two fell with Hinata landing on top of Naruto. Naruto groaned as he rubbed his head. When he looked up he was staring at two lavender eyes. Hinata was straddling him and the two were blushing really hard. Unfortunately, the noise alerted the two people outside. One was Hinata's caretaker and the other was Hinata's sensei. Both looked at the scene and neither was happy about what they were seeing. Hinata sat up and was very red. Naruto was attempting to get up, but he just couldn't with Hinata on top of him. As sensei, Keiko, this isn't W what it looked like. Hinata quickly said with a stutter. Kurinai and Ko did not let up their glares. They wanted to set Naruto ablaze with the glares. However, a voice stopped them. Well now, you youngsters sure do move fast. Everyone turned to see Jiraiya by the window. The two jonin were surprised by his arrival. Hey, you're that pervert from yesterday. Naruto said. I don't think that you have any room to judge me considering your position. That comment made the two blush. Anyway, I know that you want to kill the boy, I know the feeling. However, I can't allow you to kill the kid that I'll be training during the month. Say what? Naruto asked. Jiraiya did not answer him. He simply picked up Hinata and placed her in bed. He then grabbed Naruto by the scruff of his coat and vanished with him. The jonin were very surprised and were left alone with a blushing Hinata. Naruto was a little dizzy due to the vanishing act that Jiraiya pulled. It took him a while to get his footing back. When he did, he rounded on the old man. What's the big idea? What makes you think that I would train with you of all people? Naruto asked loudly. Well, I am the student of the Hokage and one of the strongest ninja around. Besides, I think that we got off on the wrong foot and I would like to change that. Also, with your chakra pool, I was planning to teach you a very powerful jutsu. Jiraiya stated. Naruto was a bit intrigued by this. Okay perv, you got my attention, but there might be a problem with that. Ever since that guy did something to my gut, my chakra has been acting strange. Naruto explained. Jiraiya was concerned and lifted Naruto's shirt. That's when he saw the seal. So he faced off against Orochimaru. This is his work, 
crude and not professional. If he's going to learn the Kuchio Snow Jutsu, summoning technique, then I will need to deal with this. He thought. As he gathered chakra, he got a wicked smile on his face. Okay kid, get ready for this. Gojio Kayan. Five elements unseal, Jiraiya slammed his palm into Naruto's gut. The blonde felt the air left his body as Jiraiya watched the seal disappear. Naruto got on his knees and took a few breaths. Jiraiya just had his grin on his face. So, how does your chakra feel kid? Jiraiya asked. It feels okay, it feels okay. I can't say the same for you though. Naruto said through breaths. Oh, why's that? He asked. Naruto launched himself at the man. Jiraiya just smirked at him. Jiraiya entered Naruto's apartment and dropped the blonde on his couch. He had to admit that the boy was very skilled. Anko had done a really good job training him. He thought that he would have to teach him how to fight the Hyuga that he was attempting to get revenge on, but that would not be necessary. He would just focus on teaching him the Kuchios and giving him some advice. As he stood straight, he felt the tip of a kunai on his back. You have five seconds to tell me what you did to my Otudo or I'm going to bleed you dry. Anko threatened. Chapter 29, Jiraiya turned his head slightly to get a good look at Anko. He liked what he saw and gave a perverted grin. That's when he felt the kunai dig into his side some more. Hey pervert, I know that I'm hot but you better focus. If I give this kunai a good push, you're going to bleed like a pig. Now, what did you do to my Otudo, little brother? Anko demanded. Calm down Anko. Naruto and I were just training. I helped him out with his chakra problem before he challenged me to a spar. We got a little overzealous. Trust me, he's fine. Jiraiya said. Who are you and what chakra problem? Anko asked. Jiraiya turned around to face her and Anko was surprised to see who it was. Lord Jiraiya? Good to know that I'm still well known. So, I hear that you have taken a shine to the kid? Jiraiya asked. Well, that's a long story. When did you start training Naruto? I was planning to do that. Anko said. Well, after stopping him from playing adult games with the Hyuga heiress, Anko raised an eyebrow at that. Tell you later. Anyway, I dealt with some seal that was placed on him that messed with his chakra. The method was kind of payback for a prank he played on me, and he was not amused. So, he attacked me. I must say that you have done well with him. How come his sensei did not notice a problem with his chakra? I figured that since he won his preliminary match, it would have showed. Jiraiya said. Kakashi wouldn't know anything about Naruto with his head firmly up the Uchiha's ass. Jiraiya raised an eyebrow at that. Tell you later. Anyway, as I said before, I was going to train him and teach him some more hibi, snake, jutsu. Reluctantly, I was going to have him sign the contract. Anko said with a sigh. I'm going to have to stop you there. If you're training him, I don't have an issue. Hell, I think it will be funny if you show him some of the things you were taught, but I won't allow you to let him sign the Hebe contract. Jiraiya stated seriously. And why the hell not? If you think I'm not going to make sure that Naruto has every weapon available to him for these mysterious ninja that are after him, then you are just as stupid as Kakashi. Anko snarled. Jiraiya looked at her with surprise. How the hell did she know about them? He calmed down and gave her a look. How about you tell me how you know about those ninja and I'll give a very good reason as to why he can't sign the Hebe contract. Deal? Jiraiya asked with a smile. Anko relaxed a little and nodded. She grabbed a hidden bottle of sake and two saucers. They sat down at Naruto's table and began to talk. Jiraiya stood with Naruto near a local swimming hole. There were some very fine women in bikinis that had Jiraiya giggling. Naruto just looked at the pervert and sighed. Really Arosenin, I could be doing some real training with Anko and Izan. 
I did not come here to see you perv on young women. Naruto said. I bet if the Hyuga princess was here and in a bikini, you wouldn't judge me now, would you? Jiraiya asked, mostly stating a fact. Naruto blushed before throwing a kunai at him. Jiraiya easily caught it and threw it to the ground. Jiraiya turned to face him and sighed in annoyance. All right, let's get started. Jiraiya did five hand seals before summoning a toad with a scroll in its mouth. What's that? Naruto asked. It's the Gama, Toad, contract. When you sign your name in blood, you will be able to summon toads like this one. Jiraiya explained. Wow, that's cool and all but I was hoping to sign that Hebe contract. Naruto said. Yes, Enko did inform me that she was planning to have you sign that contract. However, I convinced her not to. Jiraiya said. What? Why? Naruto asked. Naruto, your seal is connected to the Gama. Something that is connected to your seal was entrusted to the Gama clan. If you had signed the Hebe contract, there would be some major issues. Both the Gama and the Hebe hate each other's guts. Neither would allow you to be their summoner if you were connected to the other. Naruto looked like he wanted to argue, but Jiraiya did have a valid point. Seeing this, Jiraiya decided to give Naruto a break. Look, maybe you and Anko can find a way for you to be able to summon the Hebe. You think that there is a way? Naruto asked. There might be. Stranger things have happened. Now let's get started on this jutsu. Jiraiya said. Naruto cheered and paid close attention to what Jiraiya was teaching him. You're serious about this? Anko asked Naruto. After learning the jutsu from Jiraiya, Naruto seeked out Anko for training. After being ambushed, Naruto talked about what Jiraiya told him about. Anko didn't think that there was a chance, but she decided to humor him. Why not? I know that the Hebe are aligned with Orochimaru, but they still let you summon them. Maybe there is a way. Naruto said. Well, let's see what we can learn. Anko said. She bit her thumb and smeared some blood across her palm. She did the hand seals for the jutsu. Kuchio Snow Jutsu. From out of the smoke, Kaijin appeared. Mistress Anko, you are as lovely as ever. He hissed. Oh Kaijin, you know how to treat a lady. Anko said with a giggle. Naruto lurched and tried to keep his lunch down. Kaijin turned his attention to Naruto. Ah, the rat. Shall I teach him some manners? Kaijin asked. Not today, sweetie. I have a question for you. Would it be possible for Naruto to sign the contract of the Hebe even if he's attached to another? Anko asked him. It's not unheard of. It also depends on who he is attached to. As you know, we do not respect the Gama or Taka clans. He explained. Well, there you are Naruto. You can't sign their contract as long as you are aligned with the Gama. Anko said. Oh come on, there just has to be a way. Naruto exclaimed. Well, there is one way. Kaijin hissed, gaining their attention. Years ago, around the time of Orochimaru's defection, there was a split among the clan. Manda's sibling, Suki, wished to strict Orochimaru of the contract due to his betrayal. Manda disagreed, mostly out of fear of Orochimaru. They fought and Manda was victorious. He banished Suki and her followers. To set everything right, Suki had a contract created. She awaits anyone who is worthy of it. Do you know where this scroll is? Anko asked. It is hidden in Ishi no Kuni, Land of Stone. There is an underground temple three miles west of the border. Kaijin said. Wait a minute won't you get in trouble for this? I mean, aren't you a part of Manda's group? If Onizan signs that contract, won't he immediately suspect you? Naruto asked with worry. Thank you for the concern rat but I will be just fine. 
As long as my dear Anko has a proper contract, I feel no fear. She deserves to be happy and out of Orochimaru's shadow. Anko smiled at her friend and petted his head. Naruto smirked too until Kaijin wrapped his tail around him and began to shock him. Anko just laughed. Jiraiya looked at Naruto as he danced around after his latest summoning success. Gama just looked at him while he cheered. Jiraiya had to admit that the boy was trained really well. When he first attempted this jutsu, he laughed outright when he summoned an tadpole. Two days later, he managed to summon a small toad named Gamakichi. The two hit it off pretty well. The next day, he summoned Gamakichi's brother, Gamatatsu. The next day, he summoned Kosuka, and now he summoned Gama. While very impressed with Naruto learning rate, he wanted to see Naruto attempt to use the chakra of his prisoner. Talking with Anko, he knew that would not be easy. She explained to him that Naruto was fearful of that chakra because of what happened on his first mission outside of the village. Naruto pushed himself and his training so that he would not have to use its chakra at all. He found it impressive that Naruto would do that but it was going to be a chore to change his mind. The chakra that he had access to would help him in the long run. The group that Orochimaru told her about was not someone that you go against with such little power. He would need the power of the Kyubi whether he liked it or not. Naruto. Jiraiya called out. Naruto stopped dancing and turned toward him. It's time to take your training up to the next level. He then turned to the toads. You guys head back now. Naruto will summon you later. The toads returned while Jiraiya led Naruto away. Anko stood in front of the person who was both surprised and terrified of her request. Anko did not see what the big deal was. The person in front of her helped out Naruto. Why could he help her? Uh, Anko, this is a very strange request. He said. How is it strange? You're a teacher, right? So teach me. Help me with my basics and run me through some drills. I think you're the best one for the job. Anko said with a smile. The man just looked at her again. But, I'm just a chunin. Wouldn't Ebisu be a better choice? He's a better trainer than I, he said. Nah, Ebisu is too boring. Plus, I have a good source that says that he's a closet pervert. Besides, he's helping that pink-haired Kunoichi for the finals. Come on, I can really use your help and I trust you. Please help me, Irika-sensei. Anko begged with puppy dog eyes. While Irika could resist Naruto's, Kanoamaru's and others, Anko was just too cute when she did this. Okay, I can work out some stuff to help you improve. Irika said. He was suddenly engulfed in a hug by Anko. Oh, thank you. This is going to be so much fun. Anko cheered. Irika couldn't get a word in as his face was currently smashed between Anko's breasts. Kanoamaru, Moegi, Udon and several others watched this with some surprise. I don't get it. Narutoyaban, boss, is as nutty as they come and he got Hinata as his girlfriend. Irika sensei is boring as sin and this hottie is smashing his head into her chest. What do they got that I don't? Kanoamaru asked. Nobody had an answer for him. Naruto tried to grab onto anything to save himself. He needed to do so or else he was going to die. It started when Arosenin was telling him about the chakra of the Kyubi. The man wanted him to learn how to harness its power. Naruto flat out refused to, telling him that he did not need its power. That when Jiraiya apologized to him before sending him flying across some land and into a large gorge. Naruto tried to use his chakra to get a grip on the side but it was too slippery. As he looked into the void, he saw his life flash before his eyes. He was going to die. That's when he appeared in a pool of water. Confused, Naruto looked around to find a large gate. A piece of paper looked like it was holding it close. Naruto was wondering where he was until he felt an oppressive chakra behind him. It came from behind the gate. He turned around to see two red eyes and a row of teeth. 
Naruto gulped and his fear seemed to amuse whatever was behind the cage. Welcome Warden, I'm glad to finally meet you.